Come in. Do you read me? No, you don't get it, officer. He's twerking. And he's approaching me. Oh, God, he's twerking so hard. He's getting closer. I don't know what to... Ah! <laughs> This just in. Reports have emerged of a 50-foot man twerking along the New York coast. He's managed to take down half the city, and he can't be stopped. Anyway, hello everybody. How you doing? <laughs> what the fuck did I just do with my life? Good morning, everybody. I hope you're ready for a stream. I am full of energy. Um, I don't know why. I'm in a weird mood. Mm. Didn't do anything weird this morning. But today we're here to play Dream Daddy, the Dad Rectum Cut. And I hope you're ready for full energy futan. Today we're going to be trying to first, romance Robert and see how that goes. And then second, cuck the minister's wife. Steal the minister from the minister's wife. And his creepy horror movie-esque children. It's going to be a great time. And thank you to everybody who donated to the food funds already. Luth here for the cake time. Or the Meow Jow C. Thank you so much for donating the food funds with the huge Haka Super. And Satoshi, thank you for the huge Haka Super. Happy New Year, everybody. Year of the Rabbit, let's go. Hmm. I hope you're ready for another year of pain and suffering as I do stupid shit just like I did earlier. Now. Where were we? <laughs> oh my god, and Nate, thank you for donating the food funds. Is Q off the Elemento PQ? It is. Oh my god. Thank you for the huge Aka Super. Three Aka Supers to begin the day. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy the stream today. Hopefully I don't let it down with how much you guys have just donated. Um oh god, I've got three saves on the epilogue. I guess Dad Book is probably the safest. I don't remember where we were. <laughs> thank you for the gifted membership too. And Camille, thank you for the huge Aka Super. Happy New Year. What the heck? Hello, everybody. Good morning. We're just playing Dream Daddy. It's a normal stream today, but it's lovely to have you all here. I hope you're ready for this. So have I already... <clears throat> Sorry. Let me clear my throat. Ah, oh, so much better. Have I already had a few dates with Damien? Yeah, so we're before the third date. Okay. So, now we're going to go down the Robert route. And then we're going to go down the Minister's route. Let's remember Robert. Let's get into character. We need to know how to romance this man. This bad dad, as he is known. I don't think he even has a child. Which is interesting. So he's not dad. He's daddy. Interesting. Robert Small. Gotta respect a man who keeps the name Small as well. You'd think somebody else as pretentious as this guy would change his name to like Robert Large or Robert Huge or something. He was just like, no, I'm fine being known as small. They'll know different when I drop my pants. When the internet gains sentience and decides to... Right. <clears throat> it was Danny Sexbang doing like a grizzled voice. When the internet gains sentience and decides to destroy us all, you know it will use this information against us, right? On a Friday night, you're most likely to make a deal in alleyway. I would go badly. Who's the cop? Was it Giacomo? I trusted Giacomo. So, he's pretending to be a mobster. I like it. He's Chuny from the get-go. <laughs> if you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? Gun. Same as my answer. I like it. I respect it. What are your turn-ons? Don't talk to me. Face down, ass up. That's the way he likes to. Meet business clients. What did you want to be when you grew up? Grifter. Good job. I think you've done that. I haven't seen you work a day in your life so far. What's your favorite movie genre? Italian neorealism. Fair. I've watched one of those. <laughs> What's your ideal date? Grave robbing. That's just a bad idea. We played the mortuary assistant. Playing with dead bodies is not great. What do you never leave home without? At least four knives. Why? 
He's just trying too hard at this point. So we're gonna need to be incredibly tuny for this guy. One of those people who like pretends to be a badass. I spend a lot of time thinking about. You ever really look into a rabbit animal's eyes? Can't say I do. Don't know if that means he's a hunter or if he's trying to make some big statement about the wildness of animals, the wildness of humanity. Maybe we're all supposed to be wild. I don't know. Let's message him. This is fine. I don't need to like you to fuck you. That's my life statement. Dude who hurt you? Exactly. Who said the guy is dating sim? You're not wrong, but that doesn't mean you're right. <laughs> that kind of hurts my feelings, but you're not wrong. <laughs> Why is this up here? Oh, that's to skip if I want to. <clears throat> Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I tap out a message to him on dad book. Hey, Robert. Good seeing you again in the cookout. Want to grab a drink? I sit there for a couple seconds, hoping he'll message me back. Hey. It says that he read my message. Did I just get left on red? I am totally getting left on red for like a day or two, aren't I? <laughs> I anxiously wait for a response. Cat videos! I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos, and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. Yeah. Don't be sitting there worrying about any other person. You deal with your own happiness. Take your happiness into your own hands. And sh No, no, no. Just take your own happiness into your own hands. We're not going to re continue that sentence. I didn't realize how long I'd been doing this. By the time I watched maybe my 30th cat video, Robert pops back into my head. I jump back over to dad book to see if he's responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. I might as well make the best of my day. Fuck yeah. We don't need him. Look, can we clean this goddamn living room? There are clothes everywhere. Everything. We moved in like three days ago. How have we done this? God, we suck. Phrasing, sir. That's why I didn't continue the sentence. <laughs> you can do whatever you want once you have your happiness in your hands. That's up to you. The world is your oyster. I get up, walk to the living room, and sit down and turn on the TV. Hmm. History Channel has some wild shit on it. I want to watch some ancient aliens. Some ice road... Oh, yeah, he loves the ice road trucker show. That's not what I expected. <laughs> hey! Naked and Afraid. Catching the deadliest ancient aliens is on. I knew they'd have an ancient aliens reference. I'm so cold. Oh, wait. I'm so cold. I'm so scared. At this rate, I don't think we're going to catch these aliens by day 50. I am having trouble following this. Ancient astronaut theorists predict that being naked makes you ten times more likely to find ancient aliens. Some suggest that aliens are fascinated with the human physique, most notably, the butt. Yeah, they do like probing people. You'd think it would be easier for them to take people if they didn't have clothes on. Some of the pants nowadays are really tight and made of leather. Bit of a problem. <laughs> Not the probe. This show actually sounds amazing got everything you could possibly want in a show ancient aliens nudity stupidity <laughs> it's like a reality show mixed with the stupidity of ancient aliens i love it okay i'm back in that smile while he says that makes it so much better <laughs> let's go alan bink i lose several hours to whatever the hell that was sighing i get up and walk around the house my stomach grumbles is there mosaic? No, I don't think so. Not on the History Channel. Remember, it's all just part of being the natural environment. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for old Chef Bink to make a gourmet delicacy. Who volunteers, chat? Who is ready for lunch? Who wants to join me for lunch? I hope my daughter isn't around because I'm getting peckish. I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. <laughs> Make a sandwich with some of that man meat left in the fridge. I guess we could call it a man witch. I make a sandwich in its entirety while standing there. <sighs> Maybe I'll have it with a nice Pinot Noir. Who needs plates? The sandwich. A lost art. 
I admire our work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire thing on the floor. No! Brett! Exactly, Alan! What a waste of meat. I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. Am I going to eat it off the floor? Oh, Alan. Alan, no. This is still good. Five second rule, right? I reassemble my sandwich, peeling pickles off the floor and putting them back where they belong. In my mouth. Wait, I'm a wreck. I finish my snack and walk around the house. Some more bored. So I'll walk around the house some more. Bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that would hang off of a door. It'd really bring up the living it'd really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. Yeah, it could be anywhere in this living room, honestly. Does Alan not have a hobby? Have you not seen this? Every time he's left alone to his own devices, he just worries about his daughter all day. But to be fair, he's been a single father <clears throat> this entire time in his life. He seems to have a job that he can work from home, but that he's taking some time off of. So, I mean, yeah, he's doing nothing with his life right now. <laughs> oh my god, Shimomi. I'll respond to that properly at the end of the stream, but thank you so much. That's so much. Happy New Year, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I spend a couple of minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. I take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. Yeah, okay, he finished it off for me. Oh my god. You don't know that song? You're probably not old enough to be on this channel. Or... You didn't grow up in the West, which is fair. It's the Space Jam song. I pull up from the three-point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway. And I forgot the rest of the words to this song. He really fucking is me. That's the only bit I know. No look behind the back hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something, something, Space Jam! Exactly. That's all you need to know. I managed to just barely defeat myself at horse before Amanda comes home. And we cook dinner together. We're proud of ourselves for not even coming close to burning down the house. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Toddler Torn. <laughs> oh my god. There are a bunch of toddlers creating food now. That's a good way to kill yourself. You're in Dream Daddy for real? Turns out I've always been in Dream Daddy. I just didn't know it. When Niji Sanji created me as an artificially intelligent program, they just took the words out of Dream Daddy and fused them into this cyborg body. That's the true creation process behind Folger Oven. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar Debbie glaze with creme fraiche, of course. This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately burst into tears. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong, though. That's how you describe baby food. That's what it is. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. <laughs> yep. Just then, my computer dings. Huh? What's that? Oh, you probably just got a message. What kind of noise do you think dad book would make as a notification sound? I'd like to think it's like an old man sitting in his chair readjusting his form sound. Or like an old man getting up sound, just like... <clears throat> Something like that. Something like that. Your dad? Be that dad. Build that dad. The grinder noise? I actually don't know what the grinder noise sounds like. <laughs> oh, man. Hot dog? Oh, that'd actually be good. If the notification noise is just like Negan from The Walking Dead just going, Ah, diggity dog. <laughs> You've got dads. Oh, yeah, they literally... Shit. That we've literally heard the notification sound. Moving on. Amanda and I walk over to the computer and check dad book. It's a message from Robert. Oh, this motherfucker. He really wants to clap cheeks at night after he ignored me all day. I'm with my daughter right now, you piece of shit. Why are you on dad book? How dare. You up? What you doing? <laughs> so what does that mean? What you doing? 
What am I doing? You're just chilling. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm existing. It's working on my motorcycle. Uh, I'm watching television with my daughter, dude. You know, people who actually have children on dad book. Can't go out super late at night. Wow, dad, pretty square. Yeah, well, what did he do all day? I bet he works a boring ass office job. And Manda, stop trying to make me feel bad. Breathing is also an activity <laughs> existing. <laughs> I, I, no, that's a pretty good response. If somebody asks you what you're doing, just respond back to them. What am I doing? God, I've lost myself. I used to care about things. I used to have dreams. Now I just exist. I don't live anymore. And just see what they respond. Just leave that for like the next however long it takes for them to respond back to you, Sonda. A couple moments pass by. Another message pops up. Want to grab a drink? Hey, that means he wants to hang out. You're too young to know what that means, Amanda. It doesn't mean he wants to hang out. Means he wants to do something else. I I know what that means, Amanda. I know English, but it's kind of late. Uh. Come on, pops, live a little. I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers. Well, it's your life, but I think you'd have a lot of fun tonight. You're trying to get to know the neighbors better, aren't you? <sighs> Fine. I guess I will be swayed by my daughter to leave the house. This works. I type back a message to Robert asking him for details. He tells me to meet him at Jim and Kim's. Well, don't wait up to me. Daddy's getting some ass tonight. You have fun, honey. I never do. I just shouldn't. I throw on a nice jacket and run out the door. It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. Yeah, I get peer pressured a lot in this game. I like the atmosphere of this place. The music's always pretty good. We rising up? No, we are not rising up. I'm going to torture this man. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to win the dates, but everywhere else I'm going to be the nerdiest, most annoying dad possible, just to see if he sticks around at all. I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of barflies drinking beer and watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave hi as I walk over. Hey man, how's it going? God, I forgot how attractive he was. Hey buddy. Uh. Of course Mary's still here. You'll have your turn next round. Ahoy there, Skipper. Robert and Mary are here? Uh-oh. Unless... Unless... <laughs> I brought Mary along. Figured we needed a drinking buddy. You are so right. This just turned into a fun night. Oh man, I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. I have to deal with this weird married lady making passes at me. Ugh. Well, she does still wear her wedding ring. For some reason, I thought that we'd have seen that she didn't wear it last time. I was just imagining it. <laughs> Don't look so scared, kiddo. We're just having a drink. Yeah. Speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What are you having? Whiskey. Straight up. Huh. A dad after my own heart, huh? That wasn't even... Oh, shit. The eggplants. He likes them drunk. That's... That's not great. Or maybe he likes people who can handle his drink. Either one works. <laughs> Robert orders three shots of whiskey and passes them between us. Well, this wasn't how I expected my night to be going. Hey. It's the bad decisions and relaxed moral values, fellas. Oh, no. Are we actually doing this tonight? We might be doing this tonight. Robert's even got his hand on Mary's back. What have I been roped into? <laughs> I was supposed to cock her, not him. Oh, no. What have I gotten myself into? We all knock back the shots. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat, but we play it off cool? Holy hell, that was a kick. I look over at Robin and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Well, let's get marching. Where are we going? Uh, what? The night's young, Chief. Come on, we're bar hopping. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Alan's just like, sure. Uh, I can be swayed. <laughs> We have not briefed that we are making the Holy Trinity. <laughs> the Archivist, the Legatus, and the Holy Avidia. 
I mean, <laughs> this is fine. Bar man. <laughs> There's no reason we can't enjoy all forms. Ah, oh, man. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So, where are we headed? Hey. Oh, it's a pub name. I wish I were drinking. It's an Irish pub. I don't think an actual Irishman would make that joke. A good pun is the whiskey to my heart. Oh, God. Everything is dad jokes. Yeah, slap him, Mary. Puzz are the lowest form of humor, Alan. Try harder. <laughs> Did she really just hit us with the be better about fucking dad jokes? Okay. Ouch. Am I going to be the butt of the joke all night? Jesus, Mary. Put your fangs away for a second. This has an even better... Oh, yo. The ivy on the wood. I actually fucking love that. That's pretty nice. Okay. This is a good bar. We walk into Irish Ira drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old-timey Irish memorabilia on the wall. Next round. What are you having? Oh, no. Whiskey hasn't failed me yet. Sure. I'm going to pass out by the end of this, aren't I? Let's do it. Robert orders three more glasses of whiskey, and we post up at a garish green booth. Mary slides in and siddles up next to Robert. It makes me breathe a sign of relief. Let's sip this one. What, why don't we? Mm. Yo, he's being a little bitch. He's taking it nice and simple. Fruity? I don't think there's any such thing as a fruity Irish cocktail. Only even stronger cocktails. <laughs> Mary, stay away from our man. Let Mary do this. It's fine. They can continue to flirt with each other and I can just be safe over in the corner. Having a good time and vibing by myself for now. <laughs> Only you guys are fruity? Yeah. It's okay, though. We've got Mary to cut the tension. It's fine for now. <laughs> Suit yourself. Mary immediately downs her shot in one gulp and burps loudly. Ah. That'll put hair on your chest. Wow. You are truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Ah. She gets along with all of the guys, to be fair. Like, she... Everyone just loves her in this town. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Ah. Hey! Alan, be a dear and get us another round, will ya? Hmm. Are they fucking bullying me at this point? They're making me buy the next round? Because Mary already drank her? Um, okay. I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks from the bartender. As I head back, I see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. I don't think I've ever seen the guy smile, let alone laugh. Yeah, I actually like his sprite right now. I like this smile right here. And the eyes being slightly more closed than usual. That's, yeah. I like that. It's cute. I take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. So, Edith's kid snuck some pot brownies under the table at the last bake sale, right? And I spot that little hemp sweatshirt gremlin in the act. So I go up to Edith with the baggie. I'm about to tell her. And all of a sudden, she just freaks out at me. Oh, wait. This is Mary. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's fine. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have been the PTA president. Your roots are bad. Blah, blah, blah. Your roots are bad? Wow. No wonder Mary's so fucking stressed out. Mm -hmm. She has to deal with these kinds of people all day. So what'd you do? I told her to have a brownie and then everything was going to be fine. <laughs> they both erupted laughter. I politely follow along with the story. Hey. She ate three. Ew, oh, God. <laughs> More laughter. Okay, that was actually pretty funny. Did she have an okay mm. trip? That's a lot to take in. <laughs> well, I'm sure she calmed down after that, at least. She gone? Yeah, she gone. She zooted. She is out. She did not annoy Mary for the rest of the night, at least. She called the cops and told them that time had stopped. <laughs> Mary looks directly at me. Do you smoke weed? What? Mm. You know, the devil's lettuce. Who the fuck actually calls it that? I... Huh? <laughs> I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now. Want a blaze? Why is she like this? We've met twice, madam. Uh... You with the feds? I worked hard for what I have, and no two-bit corner boy is going to drop the dime on me. So, 
You take what you're pushing somewhere else, and I'll keep running my business the way I want it run. What? Uh, uh, remember, you're the at the king. You best stop miss. I don't know what kind of reference I'm making right now. <laughs> I thought we were just playing a little joke, but he seems to be quoting a movie or some shit. She feels like an undercover cop. Yeah, she does. He just called you 2D. How dare. <laughs> Jesus, kid. Dial it back. See? Robert gets it. Thank you. Play into the tunie, Mary. God fucking damn it. Have a fun time. Devil's lettuce. I know. How dare she? <laughs> Robert giggles helplessly. I'm just kidding, cowboy. Lay off the kid, Mary. He might not be used to your brand of humor. Fine, fine. Oh, she's starting to like us now. Look at her expression softening we sit around and sip our drinks people watching and cracking jokes after a little bit of time i begin to warm up to mary her jokes become much funnier and much less scary do you think that's maybe because we're getting drunk though <laughs> but it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon i just wanted some alone time with robert i wonder if i can get her to leave somehow do not ask about joseph did you get the next round? Yeah, make her pay. You trying to ditch me, pal? How would that be ditching you? You'll bring the drinks back to the table. I... No. <laughs> I would never. Because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. Oh, shit. She's fine with it. She's like, you know what? You guys want to be alone? Have your alone time. I... Just... No, no, it's fine. Alan wants alone time with his new best buddy, Robert. Read you loud and clear. The wingman breaks formation to pursue their prey. Mm. Now, if you fellas will excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Oh, she's a fucking cougar. <laughs> Go with God. Nice seeing you. Ugh. Deuces, nerds. There is no God where she is going. Only Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm proud of her. Good for her. <laughs> She's still wearing the wedding ring. Take it off at least, man. Deuces and nerds. Oh, God. She's such an 80s kid, too. Okay. Okay. Mary gets up and saunters over to a younger looking guy at the bar. I knew she was a fucking cougar. She goes for the young ones, too. I just got here. You're cucking him? No. No. I'm going to cuck her. But that's the next route. Right now, we're just going to fuck this guy. We're gonna fuck, then we're gonna cuck. That's the order we go in. Fuck, cuck. Maybe some suck in between. We'll find out. I... She grows on you. Does she, though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. <laughs> yeah, she fucking does. It's kind of great. I respect it. She looks after her friends, but everyone else she tortures and makes buy her drinks. So that works, too. <laughs> well, she does. But what about her and Joseph? Mm. What about him? Oh, I keep telling you not to step into that man. Uh, you know, they're married. She definitely tried to get in my pants the other night. And I gestured her across the bar where she's making goo goo eyes at that young guy from before. He looks like he's being held hostage. Oh, that's just a thing she does. She's harmless. All that to the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen war. <laughs> he's got a good laugh, actually. The fact that it's Danny is really... <laughs> the, the fact that he laughs like normal Danny sex bang with just the... <laughs> and then when he speaks, he's like, cool. Okay. <laughs> it's really interesting. <laughs> Robert lets out a hearty laugh. Hey, I got him the laugh. So actually, that's what I like. You can tell that he's putting on the voice as well. He's trying... He's doing the Legatus thing. He's trying to sound badass. He's like, hey, kid, how you doing? I'm a badass. But then when you get him drunk and he actually starts laughing, you're like, oh, you're just a nerd. <laughs> you just wear the leather jacket and the sunglasses and pretend to be cool. Oh. oh, man. You know, I pegged you for one of those straight lace types. Oh, don't worry. I got pretty wild back in my day. Mm. Still got a little wild in you. Wouldn't you like to know? So much wild in me. I have a child I need to care for. What the hell? <laughs> There's so much wild in me. I got so much wild. I've got 
uh, a whole safari in here. It's really wild. All the time. I eat food off of the floor like an animal. Actually, that should be the line. Oh, we fucked up. <laughs> oh, I've never seen that before. Damn, we may fuck up immediately. Uh, uh, Robert orders a couple more rounds of shots. I gulp. What am I getting myself into? I think you can go shot for shot. There's only one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and down it. This is bad. Robert looks impressed. He takes his shot on me and knocks it back. That's one. As long as you're paying, this is going to be a very expensive night. We fumbled, hope we recover. Nah. Being cringe is the only way we do this. It's perfect. So, what do I even talk about? He's so cool. And he probably hates small talk. Sounds like a him problem, honestly. <laughs> so, uh, how are things? I hate small talk, yeah. Okay. Too many people. And this isn't necessarily you. But too many people think that they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of silence. Well, they're afraid of what the other person is going to think of the silence. That's so fucking true. Did he just hit at me? <laughs> no. I like silence when I like silence. There are just times I don't like silence and I fear it. But yeah, there's a lot of times when you're not super close to a person and the conversation just runs dry. You're just like, oh no. What's happening? Do they hate me? Are they thinking about how stupid I am? Are they thinking about how dumb I look? Is it because I farted earlier and tried to hover, cover it up with a cough? Did they smell it? Enjoy the silence just like the song goes? Yeah, true. When you're actually comfortable around people, it's fine just to like let the silence lay there. Have a drink. Think about things. Yeah. But yeah, when you're first getting to know someone and you're not super comfortable, it gets real awkward. You wonder what's going through the other person's mind because you're more thinking about your own insecurities. So true. So true. If you want some unsolicited if you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Oh. Alright. Hey. In one way that's interesting. In another way, that was very much Hey. Shut the fuck up and drink. I just want to get drunk. <laughs> You're boring me. <laughs> Robert and I sit in silence and drink whiskey. I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer. Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending he got a phone call of one of his friends. Huh. Maybe silence is nice sometimes. So, you have a killer, man. <laughs> I choke on my drink. Excuse me? Are you going to tell me a story about how you killed a man? You know, watch the life drain from someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams draining away. Every memory and experience they've ever had, gone. Uh, no, for legal reasons. Great, me neither. Robert knocks back his shot and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. I'm just messing with you, relax. I laugh nervously. Or am I? I laugh nervously again. Does he know my secret? Does he know what I did to my wife? What I was planning on doing to him and Mary? <laughs> no, no, he could never know. Alan Bink has a clean record. I moved away before they could find me. <laughs> Everything's fine. We sip more whiskey and people watch some more. Mary has her sight set on another man after the other one excused herself to the bathroom and I assume crawled out the window. Gosh. This whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. <laughs> he said that one out loud accidentally. This is great. Alan Bink has a clean record. He hasn't been caught, so yeah, he does. <laughs> you betcha. Robert gets up out of the booth, shouldering his jacket. Let's roll. Sorry. Whiskey. Inside voices. Let's roll. <laughs> Wait, what about Mary? Brother, Mary is going to be just fine. I look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. 
He's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. Oh, she's so fucking drunk. Oh my god. Uh, you know what? She's having fun in her own way. Um, I'm happy for her. The intruding thoughts are winning. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're completely dominating by this point. This is fine. We're having a good time. <laughs> we make our way out of the bar and back onto the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble. Man, that sidewalk is just coming right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this is my first time I've ever been drunk. Where to? You'll see. Is this a... Oh, this is an alcohol store. Okay. I follow Robert through street lamp spotlights until we eventually arrive at the rundown strip mall. There's a beauty salon, a sex shop, a computer repair store that looks like it's been closed for 10 years, and finally a liquor store. Wait here. I'll be right back. Which one's he going to, do you think? <laughs> Probably the liquor store, right? But I mean, there's other options. <laughs> After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Are we drinking wine? <sighs> We're drinking wine out of bottles in paper bags? As we walk around, that's such a bad idea. Who does that? We already drank a shit ton of whiskey. Now we're downing bottles of wine? Oh, fuck me. We're going to have the worst hangover. Cheers. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. This is really not where I expected the night to go. I take a sip. White Zinfandel? I don't think I've ever had White Zinfandel. Red Zinfandel is one of my favorite. You can have white Zinfandel? What? Nothing. I just wasn't expecting. It's delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Don't judge me. <laughs> Fair enough. This is fine. Mixing alcohol like this? Yeah. Wine after whiskey? Risky? Yeah. Beer before wine? You're doing fine. Wine after whiskey? It's gonna get risky. You're gonna wake up passed out somewhere. Red Zinfandel is so good. Yeah, it is. I've, I didn't even know there was a white Zinfandel. White wines do tend to be sweeter. Hmm. Interesting. Fruity, huh? Yeah. He's showing his soft side. He's into it. I start to say something. I think it was lecture about valuing silence earlier and stop. I step on my wine and watch cars drive by. Uh. Let's throw rocks at shit. Oh my god. You are such a fucking child. Robert suddenly hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes throughout the empty parking lot. That felt good. He presses a stone into my free hand. Now you try. What if I throw it through one of the shop windows? How much trouble do you think we're going to get into? Uh, I don't know. With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand and look at the stop sign. Back at the rock. Back at the stop sign. I know now what has to be done. I got a problem with authority. I'm going to throw it at a cop car instead. This one's for you, Pappy. <laughs> that line's actually pretty fucking funny. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> he likes the fact that I have daddy issues. Let's fucking go. I have unresolved resentment towards my father and I'm going to express it through property damage. I hurl the rock at the sign. It sails over the stop sign, right into the window of a parked car, leaving a crack. Oh, no. Dude, run. I leap up and dart into the nearest alley, wine in hand. I could hear Robert's footsteps behind me. Oh, wow. This looks... Dirty. <laughs> this is quite an issue. Daddy issues, let's fucking go. Yeah. He was like, oh, daddy issues. That's going to make this easier. <laughs> After I'm sure I'm far enough away from the cracked window, that I'm no longer culpable for this heinous crime, I stop to catch my breath. Maybe we strike rock throwing from the to-do list. Uh, agreed. Suddenly my stomach growls. Oh man, I am starving. Let's get pizza. Can't argue with that. That's good around here. Actually, I don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible and in my mouth in the next five minutes. Mm. Oh, they are so drunk. <laughs> I know just the place. I follow Robert halfway through a male's... 
uh, I follow Robert through a maze of alleys and slide streets, side streets. Why can't I read? Till we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint. The bright red neon sign reads, Pete's Pizza Pizza. Pizza Pizza Pizza! <laughs> Ta-da. I see a few exhausted looking workers behind the counter, tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizzas right out of the stove ovens. My stomach rumbles again. We go to the counter and get ready to order. <laughs> They're really doing this. Why can we never? It's everybody's fucking joke. This game is such a fucking tumbler gasm. I knew immediately that they were gonna be like <laughs> pineapple in some way, whether it was gonna be Ugh, you eat pineapple or man, everyone should like pineapple. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh wait, Alan, you're cool with pineapple on your pizza, right? Yeah, I, I, I have no fucking problem with it. I don't give a shit. I don't chain mark my personality based on what the fuck I eat. <sighs> we wait for a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us each a giant piece on a paper plate, so saturated with grease that I'm worried it'll fall apart. Ew. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. It's too much grease, man. <laughs> Pineapple is okay sometimes. Sir, calm down. No, my problem is everybody tries to bring that into chat all the time for no reason. That and chocolate, choco mint ice cream. Everybody's like, <laughs> what are your thoughts on choco mint ice cream? So, thoughts on pineapple or pizza? Oh my god. I take a bite. It's absolutely delicious. Pineapple is truly the best pizza topping. Mm -hmm. You said it. N no, I, it's okay. It's not the best. The best is pepperoni, and I think the entire world except for vegetarians would agree with that. But man, I feel way better now. Mm -hmm. You and me both. We hear noise coming out of a slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Got any more of that wild in ya? Um, I'm so tired, but I love my daughter and I should go home to make sure that she's all right. Hmm, he didn't like us being wild earlier. It depends on what kind of wild. Um, uh, sure. Good on ya. What are we doing here? What are we? Yeah, was, a door just randomly opened and we were like, okay. Pepperoni is good, but basic, not gonna lie. That's why it's the best topping. Like, I'm not saying, oh, it's so unique. It's so special. It's it's just literally the best. You go anywhere for pizza. What kind of, op what kind of options do they give you? They give you plain. They give you pepperoni. Because they know everyone likes pepperoni. Everyone likes plain. Pepperoni is just, yeah, the basic, like, hey, it's meat, but it's powerful enough meat to cut through the cheese. What color is purple? You know what? <laughs> I think I've read chat enough for, like, the next 20 minutes. <laughs> this is fine. Robert and I slide the door open and peek inside. It's completely dark except for some flickering light. We slowly creep forward, cautious not to be heard or seen. What color is purple? Shh. Oh, it's a movie theater. Don't shush me so loud. Shh. We come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. We'll stop talking the pizza. You guys can keep talking. It was just so weird. Somebody calling pepperoni basic, which was like, yeah, it, it is. That's what I was basically saying. And then somebody just literally asking, what color is purple? <laughs> it was like, where am I right now? What is my chat? What is my mind? <laughs> Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We look into the audience and are surprised to find that it's almost completely empty. Save for a row of a few teenagers in the front. They look annoyed when they notice us. Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater and I follow him. We settle in with our wines and try to make sense of this movie. It's a romantic comedy, I think. A young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find the woman that he's finally realized he's in love with. That is like pretty much every romance movie. <laughs> the end of the movie when somebody suddenly realizes, oh, I loved them the whole time. Now, 
I must run to them and tell them that I loved them the entire time and I was very sorry. <laughs> kiss already! Has nobody kissed yet? Want him to kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah. <laughs> the kids down the way notice us heckling. One of them speaks up. Hey, it's you! Hey man, keep it down. Oh damn, that's Ernest Hemingway. You goes, kid. Ernest, hey Ernest, I know you. It's me, your neighbor. Hi, remember me, your old pal, your old buddy, your old friend? Ernest turns back around, embarrassed. I turn back to Robert. He kissed anyone yet? <laughs> we creeped the fuck out of him immediately. Oh, that was great. He tried to get annoyed at us, but we just embarrassed him. It turns out that yes, he did kiss someone. He made his way out to a tiny island near New York to profess his love to a woman who, for some reason, he knew would be there. He tells him that they hit the jackpot. He said that they had, but I think there was some subtext I'm missing here. Oh, love is dead. Oh my God, he's such a douchebag. <laughs> shut up. It's beautiful. <laughs> no, you shut up. Why are we bullying Ernest? <laughs> he just wants to watch the movie. Wow, we are too drunk for this shit. And our teachers, well, our kids' teachers got to hear about this. Such a dad move. I mean, honestly, that's the best way to get rid of him. <laughs> he was probably going to try and be an annoying kid, but instead we just scared him away and made him realize, oh no, they'll realize things. They'll know I have feelings and emotions. <laughs> Ernest grumbles. The credits start to roll. I stand up. Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this film happen, and you're going to sit here and appreciate them. Okay. Look at that. Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good, uh, the wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film going experience. Is he okay? He, he seems to prefer the credits to the movie. I'm not sure if he's a Robert is passionate. Let's go. <laughs> Stay off to the credits, guys. I mean, uh, uh. and Peter Anders. Catering, fed a bunch of people so that they could have the energy to do their jobs. What a guy. We let the credits roll while Robert individually thanks every member of the crew. Once it's finally over and he makes sure no animals were harmed in the making of this film, we leave the movie theater. You know what? I'm glad he liked something. He didn't like the movie, but he liked that. <laughs> we stumble into the theater parking lot, polishing off the rest of our wine. Hey, assholes. Is this going to be the teenagers? Out of nowhere, a rock flies through the air and hits me on the knee. I'm sorry, they're throwing fucking rocks at us? My knee? The hell? Ernest and his friends stand in the alleyway, blocking our exit. Oh, what do you guys want? Did you go and throw a rock at my knee? This is my good knee. My orthopedist is going to be pissed. <laughs> I'm so old. This is great. <laughs> Throw hands in return. I'm not going to fight a teenager. I know his dad. If anything, I'm just going to be like, Ernest, do you want me to tell your daddy about this? <laughs> Ernest tosses another rocket up, up and down in his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You ruined my theater going experience. Now you have to pay. Oh, well, I don't have any cash on me right now. I'm like, movies got really expensive. Ernest hucks another rock at my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I didn't properly stretch before physical activity. I'm probably going to feel super sore in the morning. We ruined it for you. The movie was pretty crappy in the first place. Hey, you take that back. It was a beautiful love story with really genuine acting. You call that good acting? What classicist mainstream slop have you been served your entire life? Oh, he's a movie snob too. I forgot about that. He likes Russian neorealism. What? <laughs> Have you ever seen any Michael Powell? A Matter of Life and Death, 1946. Easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Uh, listen, man. No, you listen. That popcorn-ass drivel the mass media is shoveling down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for fuck's sake. <clears throat> oh, no. Now you've done it. Ernest rushes Robert, screaming like a banshee. Ah! Wow. They're actually throwing fucking hands. 
what is going on in this? This is a completely different route from my last one. My last one was all rainbows and sunshine. This one, we're in a back alley fighting one of the teenage sons of one of my fucking dad friends. I dive between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid. He lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can in the knee. What is it with this kid in knees? Fuck my knee. <laughs> Why is there no comma there? That isn't fuck my knee. That's fuck my knee. <laughs> excuse me. I know. Excuse me. What did I just say about my knee? <laughs> Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seeing red. Fuck my fucking knee hurts. hurts my friend. All right, buddy. Talk like a punk, get hit like a punk. Robert squares up into a boxer's stance. Queensbury rules. Three minute rounds with one minute rest in between. No low blows, fish hooks, J grabs, or high blows. What? Excuse me? And don't even think about pulling an illegal turn style. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I. Excuse me? You'll have to designate a second if you're unable to fulfill your role as a main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he has enough youthful vivacity to handle it. Hey, man, I don't want to get dragged into this. That movie sucked. Mm. It's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Sorry, I don't make the rules. Talk to Queensbury. We're just gonna go. Did he do the whole, like... Acting overly hostile and scary to scare away people. I hope so. Because if he's actually that ready to kill a child. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just being chewy and over the top to bluff it away and make him scared. That, yeah, it worked. It worked. <laughs> At the same time, my fucking knee. <laughs> Ernest and his friends warily back away. Robert calls after them. The Queensberry Association will hear about this. And consume better content. People can watch crap, dude. Sometimes people just want to watch crap to turn off their brain. It's fine. Once the teens are safely out of earshot, Robert turns to me. Are you about to actually fight that kid? Mm. Are you kidding me? I would never hit a child. That would be despicable. Hey. We throw the rules at them, though. They always bolt. Nobody wants a Queensbury sanctioned throwdown. <laughs> but full disclosure... I made half of that up. Oh, okay. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> I want you to turn off my brain. There you go, tofu. Silly, mindless content. That's what I deliver. <laughs> wow. See, you don't even know the rules. You just make them up. Come on. Let's get out of here. What? Oh, boy. <laughs> the noises this man is making. I don't know what, when this game decided to glitch, but it's been doubling up voice lines for a while. The fact that we just clicked out of him saying, yeah, I'm doing great. And you just hear Danny's voice go, what? Yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Robert and I cooled out as we walk a bit into the neighborhood. I'm so sorry. I get really into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay. I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. Buddy, I got so much to show you. You ever see any Sam Fuller? I don't even know the name. <laughs> he knows how to handle brats effectively. Yeah, it's interesting because in the other timeline, when we were romancing Damien, he was actually like pretty close with Ernest. Him and Ernest were having a good time hanging out and chilling. But yeah, interesting. What if purple is red? What color is yellow? I haven't. Fuller is cash. Thanks for defending my honor. Thanks for the dinner and a movie. Thanks for the adventure. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with adventure. <laughs> adventure is all I got, buddy. Aw. Robert throws an arm around my shoulder and we drunkenly belt out tunes all the way back. We finally get to his doorstep. Oh boy. This was an interesting night. I liked it. A smile forms on his cheeks. A rare sight. Well, let's hang again soon, yeah? Yeah. I linger there for a second, swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. Night, bud. Robert heads back inside, and I stumble my way back home. I think we might have just gotten friends, though. <laughs> we got the night, bud.
Oh, why is that so loud every time? My brain. I may be bad, but you made me glad. You got it. <laughs> I fucking heard him giggle at the end of delivering that line. That was so fucking bad. I may be bad, but you made me glad. <laughs> so fucking funny oh man bad ideas bar crime paranoia gun safety and bowling well that was a fun time at least we got a rank s considering we royally fucked up one of the responses yeah we pulled that out of our asses somehow gun safety i mean yeah we were throwing rocks at signs instead of shooting them so that's pretty good definitely could have been worse Welcome. achievement progress dads. knife dad one out of three hey buddy Hey, buddy. So I have a favor to ask. Robert invited me over for dinner. And I know it's kind of faux pas to invite another bro, but... I've known the guy for years, and I still can't get a good read on him. And I know it's going to be super awkward if I go by myself. Hold up. Let me just save real quick. Just in case this isn't part of the game I want to be in. Um, Will you please come with me? I love food. I especially love food that's free. I don't know why you're so sweaty over cooking, but sure. Yeah, dude, I'm down. Thank you. Really hope that's a sweat of relief. Eat that dinner. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we get a free dinner. And this is technically another Robert date. Bro type so fast. Yeah, he's probably running while he does it as well. Or like doing some sort of leg exercise. He's either like on a treadmill or an exercise bike or something like that. Just texting and on Twitter the entire time. Man, I'm jelly. Wish I was that cool. That doesn't sound too bad. I could definitely go for free food. Why is Craig being so apprehensive? Does he know something about Robert that I don't? I hurry up and reply before my dad brain can work itself into a paranoia spiral. Yeah, dude. I'm down. Thank you. Greg and I decide to meet up before heading over to Robert's place. Oh god, we've got to finally see what the inside of Robert's apartment looks like. Interesting. There is voice to text. Yeah, there is, but I'd imagine he was at the gym rather than just working out randomly. Hmm. Could be either. Greg's waiting on my porch. Bottle of white wine in hand. Hey. Alan, boy, am I glad to see you. Likewise, man. Classy of you to bring wine. Nice. Oh, it's not wine. It's sparkling apple cider. Robert literally has a wine cellar, so I think he's good. Wow. Yeah, actually, wow. That's, <laughs> that's a lot of money to spend just on collecting things. Good for him. Or at least I think he has a wine cellar. I'm genuinely unsure if he was telling the truth or not. I can never tell with him. <laughs> that's fair. Thank God it's not just me. I never know. Hmm. He's so deadpan about everything. I usually just laugh it off, but man, that's an enigma. We start walking over to Robert's house. Does Robert even know how to cook? I have sincere doubts about whether he even knows how to shave properly. Brian his shirts. I feel like you learn to cook after you learn those two first. Hey. <laughs> what everybody even needs to learn how to iron their shirts. Okay, we're starting to ban people now. What the fuck is going on with this chat today? Goodbye. Random. One time I saw him grab a hot dog from a trash can. I mean, he was at the very top of the trash can, like, sitting above it. But still, if he were on trial, I think the jury would define that as in the trash. Ah, I clicked out of it. Whoops. He really said trash panda? Yeah, he did. In his defense, I've definitely considered grabbing food from the top of the trash before. Bro, no. Hmm. Well, yeah, I think we've all considered it. But the difference is that Robert actually did it. No, I have never considered that. You don't know who's touched that. You don't know what else has been on that. Fuck me, dude. <laughs> True. Maybe he's the enlightened one. Maybe we're holding ourselves back. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. We arrive at Robert's house and ring the doorbell. But the doorbell won't chime. Hmm. Must be broken. Craig knocks on the door a few times. Since when does Robert have a dog? Yeah, we saw that in the other timeline. Um, bunch of dates and stuff. <laughs> we ended up finding him with a dog. 
I don't know. That's weird. I can hear Robert just inside. One second. Hmm. This is uncharted territory, Alan. What if he's the one making barking noises and there is no dog? I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? Why did your mind immediately go there, Craig? Dude. Don't say that. We're not even inside yet. It could be far, far worse than that. Oh. And you've just made me very paranoid that he's a furry or a werewolf. We did think we saw a werewolf at one point. <laughs> Considers all personal possibilities. I mean, expect the unexpected, I guess. That's always a possibility. <laughs> Finally, the door opens. Robert looks a little surprised to see me. Alan, didn't know you'd be tagging along. Oh. Did Craig not tell Robert I was coming? Oh, come on, Craig. I can leave if there's not. Nah, it's fine. Come on in. Oh, yeah. We enter Robert's living room, which is surprisingly really nice. Super messy, but still nice. I was going to say, he started with the really nice, and I'm just looking around like, where are we going to sit? Everything's covered in clothes. <laughs> He's a furry? He might be. That's up to him. We don't really mind. As long as he doesn't try to make me a costume, that'd be a problem. I get what he means, though. It's got a nice TV. It looks like a very expensive place. Was he a singer at some point? I don't see why else he would have vinyl records hung up like that. Sit on the clothes? Ah, I'd hate that. <laughs> I would hate that. Make yourselves at home. You can still hear barking from the other room. I didn't know you have a dog, Robert. Oh yeah, that's Betsy. I have to put her up and guess her over. She'll calm down in a bit. Mm -hmm. What kind of dog is she? Mm. Pitbull. Rescued her from a dog fighting ring a few years back. She hates strangers. If I let her out right now, I'd probably have to take you both to the ER. Hmm. Greg and I make eye contact. He raises an eyebrow at me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that I believe him. I don't think he had a dog much before this. It's a pretty random thing. <laughs> wow, we are just being raided today. Mods, feel free to start just absolutely banning people that say stupid shit like that. Good shit. <laughs> Anyways, dinner should be ready in a minute. Hope you guys like Osobuko. Never even heard of it, but I'm sure we will. Maybe you got a dog just for you? Maybe. Maybe he knew I liked dogs, so he's just going for it. Robert leaves the room, presumably to go to the kitchen. Craig leans in and whispers. Hmm. Was the dog fighting thing real, or was he just kidding? Definitely kidding. <laughs> Dude. What's also buko? I, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe that's not... <laughs> Did he make up that word? Until I have also... Buko in front of me. We can only assume so. <laughs> we sit in silence for a second, taking in Robert's living room. At this point, I'm starting to think this is more a date with Craig. That we got this pretty randomly. <laughs> it's me. Oh, so it is a real thing. Okay. I am just uncultured. <laughs> Fair enough. Are we going to get sword? Nah. Usually you wake up in those situations. We voluntarily, voluntarily walked into this one. Robert finally walks into the room, carrying three paper plates of steaming food like a waiter. I don't have a dining table. Well, oh, I don't have a dining table. I don't trust them, so we're eating. <laughs> How can you not trust a dining table? Are you okay, sir? <laughs> also, I don't have real people plates. Hope that's okay. How do you live like that? Literally, you live like this? He made really nice food and then put it on paper plates. And he doesn't trust dining tables. But he has a really nice living room centerpiece table. What the fuck? Robert says plates in front of us on the coffee table. I still can't tell what it is. Looks like meat. Maybe. What's the sauce? I can make out some vegetables. I think that might be rice, but it could also be pasta. This is only one way to find out. I take a bite. Oh my god. I take another bite. The medley of flavors in this dish is amazing. The meat is so tender. And the risotto. I think that's what it is. It's so creamy. Robert, this is really incredible. You cooked this? 
I fished it out of a dumpster behind a restaurant. Or at least I think it was a restaurant. Can you believe people just throw this stuff away? I almost gag. He's kidding. Exactly. Why would you actually believe that? Never believe that shit. Oh my god. I can you not tell whether it's rice or pasta? No clue. I'm just very uncultured. I think it's just buried under meat and sauce, probably. He just has no clue. <laughs> I'm kidding. I look over at Craig, who looks wary, but still has his mouth full. He gives Robert a thumbs up. Glad you like it. Oh. Where'd you learn how to cook like this? Oh. Worked at a restaurant in Spain for a hot sec. Is he messing with us? I decide to play along. <laughs> you lived in Spain? Huh. After I dropped out of college, I went backpacking through Europe. Crashing on couches, sleeping in hostels, wherever. Totally broke. Worked a couple of odd jobs wherever I could scrape together some cash. Oh, one night I'm eating dinner at this little restaurant just outside of Madrid. I go to pay and realize I spent the last of my money on booze the night before. I... I'm in the middle of ditching when the manager catches me and puts me to work in the kitchen. Hmm. Long story short, they ended up liking me so much they offered me a job. Why not, right? Living with some distant relatives on my ma's side. I... Over the course of two years, I worked all my way up from busboy to sous chef. Learned a lot. I... I don't know if any of this is real. But at this point, yeah, you just gotta kinda give up and just accept it. And just be like, oh, cool. I'm glad you had fun. Meanwhile, it's probably just a family recipe that he learned over years. <laughs> also, buko is amazing. It's something that takes hours to make. Oh, shit. Let's fucking go. I like it, though. I like him making up all these fake stories. It makes things more interesting. It's something that fun people do. <laughs> it's fan fiction. Yeah, it's just pure tuny. You never know what's real or not until you actually get to know them. And hopefully... They'll actually start telling us the truth for once. Or ditch us. Either way it works. Maybe he'll put up emotional walls and just be like, you know what? No. No one gets in. <laughs> Craig and I wait for the punchline. What night watchman did he swindle to get back into the States? Who did he con in a game of poker in the back room of a speakeasy for safe passage in the crew quarters of a cargo ship? But it never comes. Anyway, I still love to cook. I don't know what's real anymore. But this food's so good, I don't care. That's amazing. It really is. To be totally honest, I wasn't really expecting gourmet cooking here. Especially not served on paper plates. I don't care about presentation. If the food is good, it should speak for itself. That's so fucking true. That I completely agree with. I hate that whole fine dining shit. Where they line up things on a plate and they do that like... The little splashes... Of sauces and shit on the sides. Ugh. That shit always annoys me. It just looks so silly. Also, Buko is screaming for itself. And paper plates are just as good as regular plates if you double them up. <laughs> then you're using double the plate. Hmm. Hey, is it bad if I ask for seconds? Mm. Help yourself. Save room for dessert. I made lemon berry savarin. Well, that sounds fancy too. Mm. Oh. Aren't you just full of... Craig looks over me. <laughs> Surprises. <laughs> Robert winks. What? What? Why was that there? Why was there such a delay between you're full of and surprises? Was he like trying to make a you're full of shit jokes? Ah. Uh... Or is he just confused? Hmm. You bet I am. Oh. You can come over for dinner anytime. Craig. Um, I'm gonna go get seconds. Me too. Why did he delay the Craig? Um, is it just because things are getting awkward? Or was he saying, like, you could come over for dinner anytime, Craig, and not me? Oh. I'm not sure how I feel about that. After consuming way more Osobuco than my body could handle, and then really ensuring a later food coma with a generous serving of whatever Savarin was, Craig and I decided to head out. Is that not the wrong insuring? Shouldn't it be ensuring with an E? Isn't that... I might be wrong. Oh. Thanks for coming. I am making an attempt to be more social. Oh, it is supposed to be getting super awkward. Okay. Well, we're always happy to stop by if you want company. 
Especially if there's also Buko involved. That was an interesting Welcome. mid story. <laughs> I don't even know what to call that. But you know what? We survived it. Um, okay. Let's continue the Robert route. <laughs> I think it's ensuring as well. I think so. I didn't even know for sure. Let fog a third wheel. It's karma. I didn't do shit. This is on them. I have been nothing but polite and romantic and sweet. <laughs> Robert may be a VTuber. Imagine. That's why he makes up all these stories. They're just different video games he's done. Different characters he's played. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with Robert the last time we hung out. But I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I've tried messaging him a few times, and Dadbook says he hasn't even read them. I haven't even seen him come out of his house, actually. What, are you still sending messages? That's so embarrassing. Bro, he's probably just away for a while and off the internet. <laughs> I decide to send him one last message, figuring that this will produce the same result. Hey, man. I don't know where you've been, but we should grab a drink soon. I walk away from my computer because at this point, I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon. Ouch, we really got ditched. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on work. The house is relatively clean. Maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. Ah, I'll bake her favorite pie. I root through the pantry and pull out the ingredients. This is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. Oh, this is going to go absolutely fucking terrible. <laughs> Somebody ignored my text. I wouldn't add another message. Yeah, I think it's good to like send a second message if you get ignored for like a few days, maybe even a week. Just to be because some people like they'll read a message while they're half asleep. I do this shit all the time. <laughs> I'll get messages like in the middle of the night. I'll open up the phone notification. I'll be like, oh, cool. I'll, I'll respond to <laughs> like fall back asleep. Never know I even read the rest of the read the notification. The rest of the day I've just forgotten about it. <laughs> I start mixing the ingredients together for the crust until I've got a nice dough. I throw some cherries into a saucepan to make the filling. Normally I don't like to multitask in the kitchen, but this cherry pie is a piece of cake. Pie? It's a piece of pie. I'm making a pie. <laughs> oh man. I can never remember what temperature you're supposed to set the oven at. I'm pretty sure it's 375, but I could be wrong. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. My special twist is on my grandma's recipe includes a secret ingredient not even Amanda knows about. It really makes the cherries extra flavorful. God, I can't even remember what the secret ingredient is. More cherries. <laughs> oh, almond with che uh, cherry pie would actually be pretty good. That's like almost amaretto-like. We're going to go with almond extract. Almond extract may be too powerful. Salt doesn't sound like a good idea. More cherries is definitely dumb, but might be the correct answer. <laughs> might be the correct answer because this is a silly game. I'm going to go with almond extract. That sounds nice. Oh, it's almond extract. Oh. Oops. Accidentally poured a little too much in. Fuck. Way too much in. I'm sure it's fine. Baking is an art. Some of the most beautiful art is made from mistakes. Yeah, everything's just a happy little mistake. It's all good. <laughs> I finally get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 50 minutes? Ah, I'll just wing it. Amanda's going to be so excited. That kid loves a good pie. I have a seat at the kitchen table and do word jumbles until Amanda comes home. I can hear the door slam open. Yo, Pops, what smells like pie in here? Probably the pie. <laughs> It's pie, sweetie. Amanda darts over to the oven and looks inside. Yes! Hey, it's not done. Be patient. What's your angle here? <laughs> That's such a teenager thing to do. To get home, to find something nice, and to be like, Oh no. What terrible thing is happening? What's gone wrong? Did I do something bad? Are we in trouble? Did you sell the house? <laughs> What? Hmm. Pies are an objective-based confection. Objective-based confection? <laughs> what are you trying to get out of me? Fine, you caught me. I've been leading a double life. I'm actually a VTuber. I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder and aspiring astronaut and bank robber. The lifestyle is calling me back and I must go. One last job. You know how it is. 
for family. <laughs> We're really in a Fast and the Furious story now. The pie was the only way I knew how to tell you. Well, I appreciated the years we spent together. But a trade-up is a trade-up. Remember me when you're kicking your feet up in Ibiza. <laughs> Thanks for all the pie. <laughs> we share a cordial handshake. I, I do like their jokes sometimes. Sometimes they're really cute. <laughs> I wait for a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on a rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready. Mm. Huh. What? Mm. Does it look kind of... weird to you? Oh. That's just me taking artistic license on what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked this pie incorrectly. And you're currently, right now, trying to pass it off as a good thing. Mm. <laughs> It's art, sweetie. It's called a happy little mistake. Bob Ross taught me about it, and you will not besmirch the good name of Bob Ross. Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> well, it's... Was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gas? Okay, that's actually impressive. That may not be art, but that is a skill. You cannot deny that. Was it art when you just eat the pie? I cut us a few slices and we sit down to eat. The cherry filling oozes out of the sides and the buttery crust glistens. I watch as Amanda takes a bite. Hmm. Ugh. What's wrong? Is it not good? Uh. Amanda winces and fans her mouth. Oh, it's just hot. That's okay. Oh no, I just... Burn the heck out of my roof and my mouth. This pie is amazing. Why does she look like she's lying? She looks like she's in so much pain right now. <laughs> Sorry for doubting you. I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. She's right. The pie is pretty incredible, as it always is. <laughs> just realized I missed a prime moment for a joke of happy little accidents. Happy little accidents, just like you, Amanda. <laughs> you weren't planned at all. And then I ate your mother. Th shit got bad. Anyway, happy you're alive, kiddo. Really proud of you for making a pie without burning the new house down. I've got a few dad tricks up my dad's sleeve. Maybe fathers aren't as bumbling and stupid as the media make us out to be. Maybe we as a society should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. They literally raise children. I'd say, yeah. Was it tasty at least? It sounds like it was tasty. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. Yeah, it's a happy little accident. It's fine. You ate her mother and had Amanda. I see. No, Ying Shijie. Had Amanda first, then ate the mother. Remember, I wanted to eat a mother. Therefore, I made there a mother. Then I ate her. That was the plan. Dad, your sleeve is on fire. Oh shit, that actually happened. I run to the sink and put myself out. Pride will be my undoing. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen and play a little more living room hoops before she retreats to her room to do her homework. I go back to my word jumbles. Hey, this one spells cat. The rest of the evening trickles by. We eat dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications and we both start getting ready for bed. I decide to check dad book one last time before I climb into bed. Still nothing from Robert. Huh. Hope he's okay. I turn out the lights and lie down. <laughs> Every time I'm about to go to bed. Bro, chill. Bro, you're outside? That sounds like a you problem. You've been ignoring me for days. And now you're doing this shit. Booty call? It sounds like a booty call. For sure. Ugh. Ugh. What is that? just on the verge of falling asleep. Climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the dinging. My computer screen illuminates the dark room. Why do I leave my computer on all night like that? I walk over to it, ready to turn it off when I notice what's happening on screen. <laughs> I look out my window and sure enough, there's Robert leaning up against his pickup truck in my driveway. Okay. Apparently, we just decide to go on out. Honk, honk. I know. I fucking hated that line. I will honk. I imagine him standing there in like a full-on, like... 
this clown get up just standing there like i will honk robert come on out don't make me do the honk <laughs> it's just like is he okay what's going through his mind it turns out for the first time we're actually getting picked up in a car that's the nicest thing we've seen so far thought he was gonna throw a rock at my window that was another possible option you never know with robert robert does some pretty wild shit <laughs> I open my door to try and figure out what's going on. Hey. Hey? hey. Wanna hang? I was kind of sleeping. Hmm. That's no fun. Uh -huh. I'm hanging out. I would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have to be anywhere in the morning. Might as well live a little. No, this is a terrible idea. We can't keep letting him have his way. He needs to treat us like a respected individual rather than just swinging by when he feels like swinging by. God damn it. Does Alan have a job? It's starting to feel like no. Maybe my wife was incredibly rich and that's why I married, had a child with, and then ate her. They never expect the cannibal to go the whole nine yards of having a child with a person before they eat them. Therefore, we got off the hook for murder. <laughs> Man, if somebody woke me up by threatening to honk at 2 a.m., I'd go straight to murder. Fair. I doubt it's 2 a.m. It's probably like 11 p.m. or midnight. I feel like Alan Bink, this Alan Bink, isn't the type of person who stays up much past midnight. Oh. Cool. Plan on going out like that? Is he really insulting my dressing right now? Wow. I look down and realize that I am, in fact, not wearing pat. Oh. That's fair. <laughs> you, know, you know what? That's fair. I mean, I don't mind. Right. I am going to go out like this. You know what? Fuck it. I'm proud of myself. I'm good with this. <laughs> I run inside and throw my going on, go and throw on my going out pants, shoes and a jacket. I grab my keys and meet more of it back outside. Mm-hmm. I love the idea of him having one pair of going out pants. <laughs> That's the dream, man. That's the dream. Ready? Ready. Mm. Up in. The fact that... <laughs> the fact that that voice line when he said hop in was just like... Mm. I'm like, hmm. Should I hop in? This feels dangerous. <laughs> I jump into the passenger seat of his old red pickup truck. I have to move a few empty cigarette packets and gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. Robert silently starts the car and we drive out of the cul-de-sac. Hey. You like Tom Waits? Never even heard of the guy. Tom who? Wait, who's to... Before I can answer, Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, all right. He lights a cigarette and cracks the windows. We drive together in silence. Why am I losing points just for not knowing music? This is... Well, why is the music like this right now? Am I being murdered? <laughs> Should have humored him? No, it's stupid. It's stupid. If he asked if I liked like rock music or country music, it's one thing. The fact that I don't know this person does not mean I should get in trouble for it. Anyway, we're about to be murdered. I just noticed all these adorable stickers he has on the inside of his car. This isn't even his car. We've been picked up in somebody else's car and he's going to drive us out to murder us. This is great. So, where are we going? Robert doesn't respond. Robert? Oh, I heard you. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice that Robert's taking us to the highway. I twiddle my thumbs. Well, whatever I've gotten myself into, it looks like I'm in it for the night. I settle into my seat and watch streetlights pass by. I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does. There's something a bit more that, there that I just can't place. Say nothing. <laughs> I turned the man on by saying nothing. I've learned my lesson. This is fine. I remember what Robert said about hating small talk and decide to keep my mouth shut. He notices me staring. Stop looking so nervous. 
I'm not nervous. This is fine. Pull me out at like midnight, drive me along the highway. Car looks like it's owned by a fucking soccer mom. This is fine. I'm a little nervous. Just hang on. We're almost there. Almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think they're moving at a slight incline, but I'm not sure. One way trip to his house. One way trip to a field somewhere. I don't think it's going to be great. We eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car and I sit for a second. Unsure if he wants me to get out too. What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. Oh, we're just out here. Oh, yeah, okay. And now it's changed to romantic music. <laughs> I was going to say, we're just out here to see the city or like the stars or something. Yeah. See, this is the thing. This is probably... <laughs> this is one of those things you do when you're a fucking teenager. Robert has never grown out of being a teenager. That's a problem. I feel like he's the type of person who didn't get to have this kind of thing happen to him at teenage years. And so he's still hanging on to this. I hey, bitch, I need... I want to wake up in the morning... I don't want to be coming out at 3 a.m. to watch the stars. And if I do, I want to plan that shit. I don't want to just be grabbed out of my bed at midnight. Ugh, this is fine. I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking the city skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some trees near us as lights blink in the distance. Off to the side, I see an entrance to a dense forest. Man, it's all so gorgeous. <laughs> okay, you're back in my good books. I fucking like you again. This is where I come to masturbate. What? Huh. I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? Hey. <laughs> this is my little spot where I come to think. <laughs> this is my little spot where I come to think. <laughs> huh. God damn it. That's funny for me too. You can see the whole city from up here. It really gives you some perspective. Robert reaches behind him and pulls something out from under his jacket. It glints in the moonlight, and I suddenly realize what it is. Alcohol or a gun? It's one or the other. Oh shit, it's a knife! Yeah, that works too. Oh. Please don't stab me! Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small piece of wood. Please don't stab me with that either! Robert takes the knife to the piece of wood and starts carving at it. Oh. I breathe a very audible sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. Did you think I was going to stab you just now? <laughs> I thought you were going to carve yourself a shiv and then stab me. Like a fucking vampire with a stake. <laughs> what? No. Hate to break it to you, but I did in fact bring you out here to harvest your organs. Try it, bitch. I know how to carve up a body. <laughs> Play along. Yeah, well, you think we caught me in your trap, but I knew. And I brought you out here to eat you. <laughs> you see, nobody expected you to come to me in the middle of the night, you fool. You set this up perfectly. I knew where we were going, and I've already set a trap. <laughs> for years, I've been putting the most vile junk food in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, friend, and reap what you will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two steps ahead of you at all times. That's how I operate. <laughs> He's into it. Now we get to eat him in a different way. Ah, <sighs> nothing gets past you, huh? Oh. Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a folding knife that he opens and hands to me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna warn you. The last guy I had a knife fight with lost three fingers because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fighting. You're familiar, correct? <laughs> I... I honestly can't tell when you're kidding. Yeah, for real. This is an interesting dude. <laughs> I'm so many levels of irony deep that I've forgotten what humor is. <laughs> yeah, I figured that about you. <laughs> you don't even know when you're being ironic anymore. You, you, you short chat shit about people not drinking proper drinks and then you bring out the fucking white Zinfandel. <laughs> I don't know how he's doing. Robert's sense of humor is funny. It's pretty funny, but it would get, like, tiring after a while. Imagine if you actually knew someone where you never knew if what they were saying was ever real. 
Oh, man. <laughs> he and I laugh. Have you ever widowed before? Considering I'm not a grandpa, no. What do you mean by that? It's a weird thing to pick up, dude. It's cool, but it's, yeah, it's pretty unnatural. <laughs> I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Mm. Alan, I'll have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed by both young and old alike. You're dismissing it before you've even tried it speaks volumes about your character. That is very true. Mm. People who shit on things when they haven't even tried it just because a certain type of people like to do it. Honestly, kind of, kind of shitty. Kind of shitty. However, because I've gotten to know you for some time and have come to think of us as friends, I'm willing to attribute it to ignorance instead of malice. Jesus! Mm. That got really real! What I'm trying to say is, go get that stick. Robert motions to a good-looking stick on the ground. Perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. The most important thing to remember while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the wood is going to splinter. Isn't the most important thing safety? No. Uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's the only answer to that one, honestly. <laughs> Which stick? I'm sure that's why they said it, is just go, go get that stick. It was like, yo, go get that dick. <laughs> Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. I look at his damn hands. They're calloused and covered in little white scars. They are very nice hands. You can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. I'd rather not break a hand egg. Knife that wood. Oh. Knife that wood. Okay. <laughs> Um, I made a pencil. Good luck writing with that. You made a highly dangerous weapon. <laughs> okay. Oh, a lollipop stick. I was like, maybe I have to carve only part of this one. Tell me about this one. Um... It's a popsicle stick. A tongue depressor. I should put that in my first aid kit. Never know when you might need one. Okay. What am I doing right now? <laughs> Why is this a mini game? I made an even smaller one. Um, it's a toothpick. Something to make me look tougher. Hell yeah. It's working. I think you could take me in a fight, probably. Who said fight? No, chat, no, God. None of them have been flat yet. All of them have been sharp adjacent. Let's see what this one is. That's just an egg. Hmm? What's this? Chicken nugget? A Ouija board planchet. <laughs> you know what? I like that. You make your own one, it'll probably be even more... It's just an egg, man. It's just an egg. Now all you need to do is carve up a board and we're set. And also maybe carve a ghost. Okay. I got all kinds of things. To we're still going. What if I just stab myself instead? Okay, that's a rubber ducky. Nice form. What's it supposed to be? Louisiana? It's you. <laughs> Um, um, a self-portrait, an artistic representation of me, spitting image of you. You made a masterpiece. Yeah, it really speaks about my feelings on myself, my depression, my chronic underconfidence. Am I making... Okay, now it's a chopstick. Interesting. What do we have here? Righty, lefty, or ambidextrous? Ambidextrous, baby! It's a stick. <laughs> I carved a stick into a smaller stick. Why are we still going? What is, this is a big old piece of wood. This may take a while. Huh. You keep this up, you'll be a whittling pro in no time. Yeah, it kind of looks like... It actually kind of really looks like an ox's head. 
You've got like the head, the snout, and the horn. Huh. A swan. Oh, yeah, if you turn it sideways, it is a swan. <laughs> a new friend. He's beautiful. I'm happy for you. <laughs> we called it a new friend rather than deciding which type of bird it was. This is fine. Are we going to do this until fucking morning? Jesus. I made, I made a really fucking good horse, actually. Beautiful handiwork. What do you call it? Big old dog? It's got a mane. The spirit of the Mustang. Sir Horsington the Brave. <laughs> Let's go with the spirit of the Mustang. How poetic. Okay. This is a weird mini game. Oh, we're done. Interesting. And now we're back to nighttime somehow. The sun was rising. I saw it. I saw it, damn it. Why is he being so nice? I guess it's because we're actually just doing something he enjoys. So he's like, ah, oh, yes. I'll play along with you. Just so you, you know. Pretend you're having a good time. Keep doing it. Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving our pieces of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. He's carving... A smaller wooden knife? Ah! Well, I'm distracted, the knife slides into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wooden carving. No! Why is that the only option? Um... Robert is lost in carving and doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Uh, Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Robert finally looks over. He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep in there? And he pulls out a red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. I was going to say, number one, yeah, he does seem like the type to carry a first aid kit. And number two, he literally said he had one earlier when he talked about taking the tongue, tongue depressor. <laughs> He's prepared. Yeah, he seems like the type of guy who goes out into the woods a lot. So it makes sense that he would have this. <laughs> Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hand and swipes a bit of antiseptic onto the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching and... and a little sexy? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. This is the first time he's shown some maturity. So at this point, it's like, hmm. He acts like a teenager most of the time, but then he takes care of my wound. Hmm. I like that. I guess I'm a real whittler now. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? Uh, Cryptids. Ton of them out here, you know. Cryptids like Mothman and stuff? I mean, there's all kinds of cryptids, so yeah. Mothman is bullshit. Yeah, this town's a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. You're joking. Mm. Oh, how I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself. Or, at least I thought I was. There are these things in the woods that we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in this city. Aside from the occasional stray, stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. You ever heard of the Dover ghost? Is this why he was offline for like a week? Did this man just go off into the woods to try and hunt cryptids? This is fucking awesome. Don't you dare diss Mothman. Radical Fox got real serious there for a moment. Yeah, no, Mothman's cool. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, let me tell you a story. Oh. I was out in the woods here on a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy. She's a big pup. Pitbull. I do know Betsy. This game lies. <laughs> Hold on a damn minute. I did that mini story. Or Okay. Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. All good stuff. Oh. 
Second day, I get the idea in my head that I can hike deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey. We're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. It gets a little late and we set up camp, but it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels. Nothing. Dead silent. Mm. Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life. Right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. No one's there. Mm. There's this feeling. Not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone, something is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know that I should be too. And then I see it in the distance. Mm. A man, but... If something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it, it just looked wrong. Big. Arms too long for its body. Black eyes. It just stood there and stared at me. Then it disappears. I hear one yelp from Betsy and I turn around to check on her. She's gone. Into thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night. I don't think I've slept right since. Did Betsy ever come back? She's just gone? Did, where what? That's terrible. Wow, Robert. I... I'm so sorry. Hmm. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. The howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about it makes my skin crawl. Huh? Okay, Robert, real funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me. Right? Huh? I was messing with you up until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. I strain my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see the how where the howl originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away, I barely can make out a shape. It looks human, but it's dragging something. Um, do you see that? Uh, we should go. Uh -huh. Are you serious? We saw what looked like a human dragging something off in the woods and we decided to just go? What the fuck? <laughs> I could have just been like a murderer hiding a body. For all we know, we go out there and it's fucking Mary dragging Joseph out. But okay, we're just going to roll with this and... Okay. Robert and I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns off his headlights and we make a slow crawl away back onto the road. I'm too scared to look back. Don't approach them then? I, I, I would creep up on them. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't try to attack them or anything. But, like, if I see something like that in the woods, I'm just, like, hiding nearby and wanting to see shit. What if you're the next dead body? Sounds like a problem for them. Snitches get stitches? No, snitches get paid. You take a picture of somebody burying their dead significant other, then you get money. Then you find out where they live. You send them the picture. You say, you know what to do. $300,000 in a bag in this bin. Drop it there, walk away. I will be watching. Picture gets deleted if you when you, when you do. There you go. What was that? Uh -huh. A Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously. This time he doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on a wildlife preserve? Could be that too. Could be something nice and chill. <laughs> How about you hit them with your truck? Exactly. This is what I mean. There were two of us and one of them. We would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, that's the story we tell ourselves. We sit in silence for a while longer. The fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we get closer to the city. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. Sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. I had to be around somebody doing okay man yeah that got really real suddenly holy shit huh. robert thinks for a second and lights another cigarette huh. oh. been doing a lot of thinking it takes a long drag hmm. 
As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in this sea of regret. I knew it! I was so busy chasing after these things I thought would make me happy. I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. Hey. Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Mm. Or maybe I did it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm as unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all the times in my life when I've been sad. There's a great many of them. There was always a light at the end of the tunnel. Something I held onto that kept me going. I... But there's something so... resigned about the way Robert's talking. Bro, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> it's not like you're 80. You could change whenever the hell you want to, buddy. I'm glad you told me. Maybe we deserve to be eaten by the Dover Ghost. Let's not joke about that. Especially since he seems to actually believe in that thing. But that sucks. Just is so dismissive. So yeah, I I'm glad you told me. Let's, let's work on that. You can get better. Must have taken a lot for you to want to tell somebody this. You're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. He's having a midlife crisis? Yeah, essentially. He's having a midlife crisis, but... Whereas other people get to at least cling on to like a family, children, a career. I don't even know if this dude works. <laughs> I, I don't know if anyone in this town works. Everybody just seems to hang out all day, every day. Barbecues, coffee shops, hanging out with their children. It's pretty fucking wild. Is this just like a town for rich people? Did we all have exes that were like millionaires? Hugo does. Oh yeah, there's one teacher and one coffee shop owner. Everyone else, yeah, they just chill. Oh no, I, yeah, I guess Joseph's a youth minister. I guess it's just me. Me and Robert that don't seem to do anything during the day. Oh yeah, Damien, they all work. They all work. They just choose not to work most of the time. Most of the time I can meet up with them whenever the fuck I feel like is what I mean. It's like a sitcom. It's like Friends or How I Met Your Mother or shit like that. Where work just never happens. It seems like they have all the time, every day, all day. Greg work? On his body. <laughs> no, yeah, he's a business owner. He makes his money. <laughs> you ever wish you were a better father? You have a child? I think about it for a second. All the time. Read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much stuff I regret or wish that I could have done better. I don't have the answers. I don't know if anyone does. Hey. It's funny. I look at you and your relationship with your daughter, and it seems perfect. Come to think of it, there's all these stickers on the car. I guess he probably does have a child. Hmm. It isn't. <sighs> At least you're there for her. Oh, is he like one of those part-time dads? Only gets to see his dad like once a month, two days. Shit. Maybe divorced? Yeah, maybe one of those dads who like got a bad deal when it came to the divorce. Only gets to see his kid essentially when the other partner decides he's allowed to. I stare out the window at the blur of down of passing trees. I just hope I'm a better father than my kid than my dad was to me. What did your dad do? It's more about what he didn't do. He was quiet, stoic. I don't think he ever once told me that he loved me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. Oh. Do you hate him? No. I used to, but after I became a parent, I just kind of feel bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood. When I think about all of the happiest moments in my life, they're all with Amanda and Alex, and he just wasn't there. Damn, we're really twisting that knife right now, Alan. <laughs> I know you're talking about yourself, but you realize what the implications of what Robert said was, right? <laughs> it hurt like hell when I had to leave him to die in that Belarusian prison. Okay, okay, we brought it back. <laughs> whoa, whoa. What? I turn and smile at him. Nah, he's retired in Florida with my mom. We go there every Christmas. <laughs> yeah, okay. I finally got one over on him. Let's fucking go. We both break out into laughter. He pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. 
And I know that was a very cute laugh. That was a very real laugh. He was super into that. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the pass- bleh, bleh, bleh. Sorry. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize that I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. He's gonna let me have it, isn't he? Yeah. You hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks, then pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which one way over from mine. He gets out and waves. <laughs> I forgot how weird it is that we live right next to each other. He might as well just let me out rather than pulling into my driveway. What the fuck? I tiptoe into the house, careful not to wake Amanda up. Whoa, where did you come from? I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. Mm. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, uh, Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting, which is a totally normal thing that people do. You know the Mothman is bullshit, right? <laughs> Apparently he thinks so too. Amanda, Lang, you know what, it's fine. Think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car as Amanda starts walking towards her room. Hey, Amanda? Hmm. She stops. I love you. Hmm? It's weird when you say it outright and sincerely like that, but I love you too. Huh. Night. I chuckle to myself and finally decide to go to bed. This is a strange... Like... <laughs> oh, let me turn this... Oh god, please, 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 let me get to bed. It's like, yes! Okay. This is a strange, like, plot line compared... We only got an A? I only fucked up one answer, but okay, that should be fine. Yeah, like last time it was super emotional about all the fatherly stuff. Whereas this time they're just full on like, ah, uh, everything's good with me and my daughter. She's fine. She's doing great. Only an A. A is good already. I, uh, did we ever get an A on the Damien route? Did we get nothing but S's? Only an A. It's because we didn't drink enough whiskey. That's the problem. There wasn't enough whiskey on this date. See, the whiskey bar's low. Poker buddy. Energy saving crime. Lots of cryptids. And quite a bit of silence. We did okay. We did okay. Damien was all S. Yeah, pretty pathetic on my end this time. That's fine. Knife dad. Two out of three. <laughs> I loved that dad tip. That dad tip was just... Go ask your mother. <laughs> That's such a fucking good one. It's a beautiful night and the air smells so fresh. So I decide to take the long way home. Oh my god. Um, I casually stroll through the neighborhood, taking in the sights and sounds of a suburban city with a low crime rate and wide, walkable sideways at night. As I approach the bar, I can hear patrons inside cheering. Oh, I bet the game's on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. A drop of water hits my head, and now it's lots of drops of water. It's pouring rain. Maybe I should wait this out inside. What if you're like Amanda? Then I guess I don't say, go ask your mother. <laughs> I instead say, go ask the internet. The internet will tell you everything you need to know. Have you ever heard of Cora? Cora knows all. Google knows everything. I know nothing. <laughs> I order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. The bar is unusually crowded, and the feeling of camaraderie over shared love for the game makes me smile. Sports are nice. I look over in the corner and spot none other than Mary, sitting alone and in the corner, nursing a cocktail. Something about her seems different this time. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off with some younger guy, she looks so... sad. She looks up and half-heartedly raises her glass to me before staring off into middle distance. Hmm... Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to cuck you later on. So I'm going to go say hi to you. <gasps> oh no, she is wearing a... Oh. Her wedding ring's on the wrong hand now. It used to be on the left hand where you wear a wedding ring. Now it's on the right hand. What does that mean? Did Joseph die? Hey, hi. I decide to go say hello. I walk over to her booth. And she doesn't look up. The seat taken? 
still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyway, and she finally notices me. Oh. The sprites just mirrored? Well, clearly they shouldn't do that for that reason. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> hey, cowboy. You all right? Never better. She hiccups. Yes, she's a little far gone. Ah. Tears start welling up in her eyes. Uh-oh. This is about to get real real right here, isn't it? <laughs> she buried him in the woods. I knew it. I knew it. I said it was probably her dragging him off into the distance. Oh. oh. I... Will you walk a gal home? Hell yeah. Let's walk her home. Why would I call her a cab after that? No, she clearly wants some company. I slide out of the booth. Seems like Mary's having some trouble getting up. I reach out a hand to help her, but she waves me away. Ah. I got it, I got it. She clearly does not got it. Mm. You know what? Hang out here for a second. I walk over to the bartender and pay Mary's tab. Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I live in Mary's cul-de-sac, and I'm just making sure she gets home safe tonight. I know you. Yeah, it's nothing weird, just... Usually has one of the bar staff walk her home, but I trust you. Shit. She normally has one of the bar staff walk her home? This girl is living one hell of a fucking life. <laughs> You're next, Alan. No, remember, I'm the serial killer. I. she has killed her husband. This is no big deal. She has a taste for blood. I do this shit for a living. I'm just collecting some more meat. You saw me drop that sandwich earlier. I'm almost out of meat. I need some parts. She doesn't like go home with. I don't really want to say it. One of the guys she meets? Nah. Nah? Ain't her thing. So she just likes talking to younger men. She just likes flirting. I guess there's nothing terrible about that. <laughs> She's clearly in an unhappy marriage. My guess is Joseph just isn't into her. Maybe he was never into her. Who knows? We're going to find out. Either way, it's interesting to be doing this before we actually start going down this route. Oh, Mary? Yeah, she's trapped in an unhappy marriage, too. Maybe she's afraid to go home alone? I think it's because she gets so drunk, essentially, yeah. She needs somebody to help her get home. But she doesn't actually take any of the kids home, even though she flirts with them all night. Probably shouldn't have said kids with that line. But they're kids compared to her. <laughs> any of the younger men. <laughs> She just wants attention. Yeah, she just wants people to look at her. She just wants a man to look at her as somebody sexual. She could be going through a midlife crisis of her own right now. We're still going to cuck her, but at least we know the depth of her feelings now. Like, she's got a deep and emotional side to her, too. Now, let's go fuck Joseph. Well, first, we're going to fuck <laughs> Robert. Then we're going to fuck Joseph in front of her. Anyway. Huh. I head back to the booth. Mary stumbles out of the seat and directly into my arms. It's still raining a little bit. I take off my coat and hold it over Mary's head. Such a gentleman. Let's get you home. Mary and I walk in silence up the street towards the cul-de-sac. I have no idea what to say to her. I fear that she might hit on me. Or not. What did the bartender mean by ain't her thing? What if she's not into men? <laughs> Wait a minute. Sorry you have to see me like this. I'm usually not... I know Joseph doesn't like it when I... Just sorry. What's a cul-de-sac? It's like a closed-in area. A cul-de-sac is like the end of a road where... Like three roads come together and like converge into each other. It, it, you could call it a close. It's just a, yeah, a little closed-off area. It's all right. Sorry if I'm ever mean to you. It's all right. Oh. No, it's not. I know it's not. I'm just... I'm having a really... Ah. Forget it. As we get to the cul-de-sac, I can feel Mary starting to slow down. By the time we arrive at the doorstep, she pulls away from me. Wait. Can we just... Hold on. She really doesn't want to go home, huh? Mutual beards gone wrong? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Possibly. Oof. Hey. Hey. 
How about another drink? Old time's sake. Come on, Mary. It's bedtime. Actually, it's dawn. It's been past bedtime. <laughs> Mary looks me up and down, giving me half a smile. Huh? You're right. The way she smiled as well there, where I, like, turned her down. I think that's why she's starting to like me. She knows I'm not into her either. She pulls me in close for a hug, holding on to me for a little longer than feels appropriate. She mumbles into my chest. Mm. You're a good kid. Thanks for the company. Ah. Mary gives me a pat on the back, straightens out her sweater, and walks the rest of the way to the front door herself. I still can't read her. I don't know. <laughs> And yeah, the fact that she called me a good kid, Welcome. as if we're not... You've got dads. I'd imagine the same age. Oh, these two. What's going on? Why would I be in a group chat with these three? <laughs> also, thank you for all the Aka Supers again. Shinnian Kwai La. We'll be doing like a proper um, end of the year kind of thing. We'll do his uh, drinking Zatsudan tomorrow. But thank you all for being here today. I hope you're having a wonderful uh, new year. Shinyan Kyla, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful time. Hey, you up to anything tonight? Hugo and I were planning to go to the art walk downtown. We're wondering if you would care to accompany us. I would normally write a letter longhand, but I've run out of distressed parchment paper. Oh, why can I see Damien and Hugo's chat? My hacker? But I don't even have a hacker alias. The feds are going to bust down my door any minute now. I've got to destroy this computer. <laughs> he doesn't realize they've just added him to a group chat. God, he's old. Uh, Alan, this is a group chat. Oh, thank God. Do either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? <laughs> you can run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive. Once you're done, that it's... Once you've done that, it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. <laughs> um... The Victorians were well versed in information security. I forgot he's a tech guy. <laughs> Damien. Fucking Damien is just like giving away his tech guy thing when we haven't even finished his route in this timeline. Alan, do you want to go see some art or not? That is good. Let's go see some art. Hmm. Chad, do you want to see some art or do you want to finish Robert's route? This is, this is going to turn into like a six hour stream if we finished all of these. I, I can go see some art. I'm happy with that. Yeah? Yeah, art. Okay. Let's go see some art. Damien and Hugo invited me to the monthly art walk in downtown Maple Bay. I've never really been to one of these before, so I'm not quite sure what I'm in for. I think I'm here a bit early. I don't see Damien or Hugo around anywhere, and I feel just a little uncomfortable standing among all these fancy art people. Alan? I turn around. It's Joseph. Oh, God. They really are trying to force me on the Joseph route early. Joseph, what are you doing here? Oh. Joseph scoffs at me. Oh, okay. <laughs> when he scoffed at me, I thought I was about to get into a fist fight. I thought he was going to be like, yeah, I came here to see you. Why were you with my wife last night? <laughs> this is fine. What am I doing here? How could you ask me that? I'm obviously a huge art... Uh, appreciate. Appreciator. Appreciate artist. <laughs> okay, fine. Damien invited me to this art walk thing. I'm guessing he invited you too? Yeah, admittedly a bit out of my depth there. Thank God. Thought I was going to be the only odd one out. Are you allowed to say that? Say what? You know. Thank God. <laughs> really, dude? <laughs> yep. I actually get double points when I say it, since I'm a minister. <laughs> <laughs> but points get you into heaven. That's how it works. I don't think that's how it works, but okay. <laughs> double points, because he's a minister. Yeah, I guess they are allowed to take... Well, that's not taking the Lord's name in vain, anyway. He said, thank God. That's like a blessing more than anything. <laughs> anyway, where are the guys? I look and spot Hugo and Damien, who seem to have just arrived at the gallery. Good Eve. Good Eve. A good Eve. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Damien. <laughs> He's good eving everyone one by one. What about Oh Jesus? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one's taking the Lord's name in vain. It don't matter, though. 
<laughs> I think you'll find most people who say that kind of crap aren't particularly religious. Evening, friends. Oh. Who's ready for some art? You know I am. Art is dead and nothing is real. That'll probably get me Damien points. I have no idea what I'm in for. Yeah, let's not be a dick. Yeah. Uh, same. Mm. I missed Vampire Daddy. Yeah, I know. He's back. We get to hang out with him again. <laughs> All you have to know is that if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, there's generally always a table that has a free wine and cheese. <gasps> I love art. Yeah. Mm. I've got the table in my sights. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go help myself to some tiny wines. <gasps> yeah, I'm going to go get cheesy with Joseph. I'm sorry, guys. You guys are cool. But tiny wine. I think I need to cheese up before I delve into art appreciation. If they actually had free wine and cheese at art... Oh, this is an art gallery. This isn't a museum. I don't know. They may actually do that art galleries. I've never been to an art gallery. I don't have enough money. Museums are free on certain days. <laughs> Good idea. Appreciating art does burn a lot of calories. Gotta carb up on these crackers. Joseph and I slide into the snack table. There's a pretty nice spread of little plastic cups of white wine. And crackers, grapes, and cheese. Oh. This is more my speed. We eat a couple of cheese cubes in silence. These are really good. Hell yeah. Free breakfast, lunch, and dinner if you eat enough. And if you drink enough, you just pass out to the next day. It's time acceleration. <laughs> Some art galleries are free. I've never found one. <laughs> they do that art gallery openings. I guess, yeah. Anything to get people through the door. Plus, sometimes they actually, like, sell the portraits at art galleries, right? Mm. What's your favorite cheese, Fuchan? I have a shot. Cheese is great. <laughs> I don't know enough about cheese. It's the same as asking me my favorite wine. It's like, it's, it's, it's wine. It's sweet. I like, I like plum wine. I've drank Zinfandel and Pinot Noir and Cabernet. They all taste like wine. Cheese wine is good. I like pepper jack. Pepper jack has a nice little spice to it. <laughs> Whichever's on sale. Exactly. Whichever they put in front of me. <laughs> when I order a cheeseburger, if it has cheese on it, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't eat dinner. I think I'd probably just fill up on snacks if I'm not sneaky about it. I already ate dinner, but I will always have room for cheese. <laughs> I'm going in for more crackers. Cover me. I shield Joseph from the small crowd of mild-mannered art people milling around the room. I don't think anyone's paying attention. Well, we should probably get back to Damien and Hugo. Lest? Lest we just drink even more wine and go home? Yeah. I hate it when they ask you what cheese you want on your book. <laughs> True. See, that's the thing. I know that, like, mushrooms apparently pair well with, like, Swiss cheese. Because, like, they always, like, if you order a burger with mushrooms on it, it's always, like, Swiss cheese and mushroom. And then, like, if they give you, like, a spicy burger with, like, jalapenos or something on it, they normally give you, like, yeah, pepper jack. But then they're, like, <sighs> I guess... Those paired well together with each other? I don't know. I don't know. They never ask, what is this? They do it like some pubs and stuff. Like fancy places, they definitely occasionally do. But yeah, just, just cheese. Cheese is cheese. They never ask though. Man. Man. <laughs> right. Let me just fill this cup with cheese first. Or the road. Road cheese? Right the best kind <laughs> road cheese okay we leave the first gallery and walk a few minutes before we reach another one this gallery is a bit more crowded huge paintings of i'm not even sure hang on the walls oh yeah that's just a whole bunch of pink this isn't art these are these are swatch colors these are like ink block tests <laughs> this is okay oh Oh, jeez. What am I looking at here? Ah. Yeah, it's abstract. Get it out of my face. I don't need it. I don't want it. I refuse it. This is abstract art. I think the more important question is, what does this art mean to you? It means that somebody let their dog do their work today. And, you know, good for them. I stare at the painting. 
concentrating as hard as I can on the meaning. It reminds me of my childhood. It represents strife. It's a metaphor for the human condition. It's a bot. The curtains are blue and it is a bot. Hmm. Everyone else stares at the painting. Yeah, that's definitely a bot. Oi. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> While a valid assessment, I feel like the artist was trying to make a different statement. Probably how much he liked butts. Me and Joseph are really getting along. Let's fucking go. Bro, he's a good sport. Yeah, at least he rolled with it. <laughs> like Hugo was just like, hmm. I, hmm, okay. Okay. Tate Modern literally has a canvas painting called Grey. Uh, uh, <laughs> you are a servant of the Lord. We're all God's creatures, even butts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is fucking great, man. Let's go. Comparing this piece to the artist's body of work, I'm pretty sure this represents the sense of isolation he feels, creating traditional abstract artwork in a field that's rapidly moving towards digitalization. Yeah, nowadays there's AI art cutting into everything. I wonder how he feels now. How do you figure that? Oh. That's what it says on the placard. <laughs> well, fucking fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Oh. Let's look at a few more of these. We walk around the gallery, sampling more of the artist's work. I almost hate to say it, but abstract art is kind of growing on me. It's interesting the artist chooses not to let their work be defined by, what's the word? Reality? The word is reality. As we're looking at one of the paintings, a patron scoffs loudly. I could do that. Hmm. Excuse me. What? Hugo, not here. Oh. Oh, they're about to school a dude. Here we fucking go. You think you could paint abstract art, do you? You know, <laughs> here we fucking go. The patron walks away, not noticing Hugo fuming right next ah. to him. You say you could do that, but you didn't. You didn't seem to have the intellectual depth or the artistic skill to execute a piece, even a fraction as impressive as this one. <sighs> art is the truest expression of the self, and it seems like yourself is bad. So your art would be bad. Okay, he's doing his best. <laughs> he's trying. <laughs> Hugo's insult game isn't the best. But there's no denying his passion. Damien is holding him back at this point. <laughs> friend, friend. He's not worth it. Uh... Hugo manages to cool down. He smooths his jacket. <sighs> I'm sorry. I just love art very much. We know, buddy. We know. I pat Hugo on the shoulder. You know what would ease the mood? Is it cheese? No. Hmm? It's wine and cheese. <laughs> Let's go. To be fair, you get drunk. You can deal with anything. Hugo's my kind of dude. Love being pretentious with my fellow art people. <laughs> See, if you can call yourself pretentious about it, it's all fun in games. Because <laughs> that's the thing. It's fun to like dive into the deep artistic meaning of art. But at the same time, when other people shit on it, you've just got to, like, let them do their thing. Like, who cares? Especially when it comes to abstract art. This is uh, People are always going to say, oh, I can just throw art on canvas. I can do that. I make, I take the piss out of it, too. But <laughs> it's because I don't like abstract art. <laughs> ah. Co-signed. Four of us head over to the wine and cheese table, which thankfully is grounded in realism and is actual wine and cheese. Mm. We got the last stop on the tour. You lot feeling up for it? Is it going to be any weirder than this art? Huh. It is absolutely weirder than this art. Let's do it. Hell yeah. Oh. Show me the weird sh And they skipped over the weird shit. Okay. So you go to art school and they destroy everything for you? Ah. Yes. Then they make you able to interpret anything. The curtains are blue. Explain why. Hugo needs friends with similar interests. He's doing pretty well with Damien. Damien gets him at least. So that's, that's fine. <laughs> Furry art. Imagine they're like, oh no, that art's even weirder than this. We go over there and it's just all Sonic OCs. <laughs> Damien, Hugo, Joseph and I walk over to a performance in the street. Several masked performers in leotards undulate wildly on the ground. 
screaming both at each other and us. Norm McDonald. <laughs> Norm McDonald. What? So, quick question. Hmm. Shoot. What is happening? I second this question. Hmm. Performance art. What does it mean? Huh. Again, I pose this very same question to you, Mr. Bink. Okay, people in masks screaming and thriving around on the ground. Probably something about climate change. I'd imagine, yeah, climate change. The very humanity of being hu- But! What do you think they're trying to say? Oh. I believe it's less about what they're saying and more about what they're s why they're saying it. I think there's something special about performance art. With almost every other form of art, music, painting, photography, the artist uses their medium as a conduit for their emotions. Hmm. With performance art, the medium is the artist. It's the purest expression of raw human emotion. It's art as catharsis. Hmm. Did I not click bots? What the fuck just happened? I clicked on bots and it turned into that. Oh. Bots. That's beautiful, Damien. So what you're saying is... What, what, what are these voices? I traded their voices. If I start making really loud fart noises right now, it's art as long as I like... Really mean it? Damien fixes him with a hard stare. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna start making fart noises, but based on the look on your face, that joke isn't gonna play well with this crowd. Hey. I mean, he's <laughs> right, though. He's taking the piss, but... Wise. Oh. We watch the rest of the performance as earnestly as we can and clap politely after the dancers scream their way off stage. <laughs> They screamed that way off stage. Phew. I think I'm all on it out. Yeah. Can we go home? There's not enough wine for this shit. Agreed. We all decide to walk home together. Ah. We make our way back to the cul-de-sac. Tiny wine and tiny cheese slushing around in my stomach. I think what I've learned tonight, and not just what I've learned about art, which was nice and extremely informative, but what I've learned tonight is that when you put a bunch of tiny wine and tiny cheese together... You get a good night. It eventually becomes regular wine and regular cheese, followed by too much wine and too much cheese, dude. <laughs> the tiny cheese lulled me into a false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. Wax wings too close to the sun. They drank too much wine and ate too much cheese. Oh. <laughs> cheese wings? Those would melt in the sun too. I feel like it's more appropriate imagery. Okay, Hugo, don't go grading my metaphors. Oh. I said it'd be delicious. A nice amanthala, possibly. What? Yeah. Amanthala? Is that a type of cheese? God, they really be chesting my knowledge of cheeses today. <laughs> hey, if you guys were painters, what would you paint? Hmm. Grading? Okay, grading is actually really good. <laughs> grading your meta. No! I said grading, but grading would have been... Grating would have been funny. God, I didn't realize how the British accent really kills the Ds and Ts. Grading, grading, grading. That could really be either way, huh? <laughs> I actually dabble in oils. I mostly paint landscapes. I'm not very good, but it's a nice way to pass the time. Oh. I think I would focus on personal portraits of people in unique professions. Like, for example, luchadors. Yeah. I think I'd paint... Boats, seascapes, maybe some lighthouses, mostly boats. Joseph really likes boats. Oh. He used to be in the Navy, right? Yeah, yeah, he has the tattoo. Yeah, I'm surprised you're choosing boats in favor of a long history of religious imagery and artwork. <laughs> Everyone really just thinks all he is is religious. Damn. I thought you said breeding. That's a stretch and a half. Are you sure? <laughs> what? Boats are cool. Hmm. What about you, Alan? Oh, I'm going to go with bots. Damn it! Tasteful nudes of the artist. So essentially a dick pic, but old school. Um, sure, I don't really like it. Landscapes sound nice, I guess. Hmm? I think I could examine a lot of beautiful imagery and recapture it on canvas, and I'm just kidding. It's going to be bots. <laughs> I didn't even... I wanted to choose bots this time. But okay. Okay, Alan Bank, you get me. Oh. Joseph gives me a high five. 
we finally get to the cul-de-sac. All right, boys. Good art. Good art. Oh. Agreed. Mm. See you guys around? Nah, I think we're good, Hugo. We don't need to hang out anymore. <laughs> Whether you want to or not, we're all neighbors after all. I had inside to deal with my inevitable cheese over. Yeah, I drank a lot of wine and ate a lot of cheese. Welcome. That's going to be a bad night. You got dads. And a bad toilet trip. Robert! Oh, shit, this is going to be our finale with Robert. Let's go. Um, save and continue. Ah. Yeah, save and continue. It makes a separate save. It's fine. That delivered so well. <laughs> it really did. Considering I ch I chose butts the wrong t the white uh, I chose butts the first time, and it just did something completely different. And then I chose landscapes, and it was like, you know what? I'll answer properly. And I was just like, nah, I'm just kidding. It's butts. <laughs> it was actually done really well. I haven't spoken to Robert since that night we drove out to his thinking spot. He seemed usually unusually somber then. Like, more so than the usual amount of somber that Robert is, which is already a lot. I've been thinking about him, and I hope he's doing okay. But I've been a little reluctant to reach out to him. Oh, uh, I, I guess we're going out tonight. I just get summoned by him when he feels like it. <laughs> I take a look at my dad book messages. There are a flurry of them from Robert. Wait, what? <laughs> hey, Alan. Alan. Hey, Alan. Guess who's getting their drink on tonight? Guess. It's you. Also me. But mostly you. Um. Why? I've never touched the stuff in my life. <laughs> Lips that touch liquor shall not touch mine. You don't need to worry about that. We're going there to pray. All right, I'm in. See you there. <laughs> okay. Well... He rolled with that pretty well. <laughs> Not that I'm an appreciative, but I think this is the first time that Robert's given me more than an hour's warning before hanging out. <gasps> He's taking shit seriously now. Is Robert Navi from Legend of Zelda? Pretty much, yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> Amanda. Amanda pops her head into the hallway. Who's a guy I don't recognize blaring from a room? Huh? What's that? I'm hanging out with Robert later tonight. Okay, cool. Robert, who is my friend. I have friends. I I'm happy for you, Dad. People enjoy my company, Amanda. <sighs> Dad, I'm so happy for your continued development as a human being. What are you listening to? Sad shit. Um. Why is that an option? I kind of want to press it just because it's so fucked up. And we have kind of been ignoring Amanda this whole wrong. This whole run, even. Um. Sure. Amanda, Lang. You know what? You're an adult now. I gave it an earnest effort for all 18 years of your life. Go forth and swear. Oh, that's what we don't give a fuck about. No, that's fine. I thought he was just gonna... I thought it was like, Amanda, what are you listening to? And she was like, sad shit. And he was gonna be like... You know what? I don't give a fuck anymore. You do you, Amanda. You're 18. Go out into the world by yourself. I got a boyfriend. I don't care about my daughter anymore. The phrasing is much harder than it actually is. Yeah. I thought it was just him saying, I don't give a fuck about her anymore. <laughs> fuck yeah. I really don't hope... I really hope I don't regret this later. I got an achievement unlocked. Let Amanda say... Fair enough. So I've uncensored Amanda. Good. Amanda goes back into her room and turns up the volume to her sad shit. She's having fun. I put on my going out coat and walk over to Jim and Kim's. I spot Robert leaning against the brick wall, smoking a cigarette. As I get closer, I just realize that he looks a little different. Cleaner, I guess. He doesn't, but okay. It actually seems like he combed his hair and his clothes are less wrinkled than usual. Hey. You've been getting your shit together? It seems like it. Hey. Take a shower just for me? I'm working on my relationship with existence. Oh. We both stand there for a second and don't say anything. Robert finishes his cigarette and abruptly goes inside. I follow him. Who wrote that before Fuchan said it? I mean... 
technically there's a delay, so I still win. <laughs> By the time I get inside, Robert's already at the bar ordering two whiskeys. I spot a booth in the back and claim it for us. Robert slides in and hands me a glass. To toast? To you. To us. There is no us yet. There might not be any us. Um, to toast. Really, dude? That was funny. Fuck you. I ain't toasting to you, and I certainly ain't toasting to us. A toast. To toast. Love you, warm bread. We clink whiskeys, and I watch him simp his... Rather than his traditional approach of slamming the whiskey back as quickly as possible. So what's the plan for tonight? It's some other bars, maybe grab some pizza. I think that'll kill some time before we go burn down that old abandoned house in the woods. It's definitely not as fun if it's abandoned. Hey. Mary pops over to the back of the booth, a glass of wine in her hand. She punches Robert in the shoulder. Where was my phone call? Sorry. Figured you were busy sinking your teeth into some poor sap. I am. He's right here. I look around the booth to see a guy sitting across from her. He waves meekly. <laughs> that poor child. Oh, God. Uh, you get wrecked, eh, Fuchan? Yeah, I'm not very good at, like, saying things with this dude. I feel like saying to us would have been, like, a really bad step. So I guess I was supposed to say to him. That, that sucks. Fuck this guy. Replacing me with a new kid? Mary, I could never replace you, whether I wanted to or not. Mary leaves her booth and slides in next to Robert. The guy she was sitting with, sitting with looks mildly relieved. She eyes Robert's clean pressed clothes up and down suspiciously. What, you got a court date coming up? He looks handsome. Y you know what? Yeah. I think he cleans up nicely. What the fuck, dude? you i'd be joking you fuck you get fucking angry i i say you're looking good you get angry pump the brakes kid i blush a little seriously though what's up with you robert stares down at his drink suddenly looking serious it's happy doctors say it's cirrhosis of the liver i told that old bug a bo bag of bones to quit it with the sauce but it's all he's ever known especially since Ma gone. That's why I invited you out tonight. Just didn't want to be alone. Oh, come on. Damn. I got fucking deep all of a sudden. Hmm. Alan, don't be an asshole. You know the one thing Robert doesn't joke around about is his pappy. Whoops. I, I, I didn't think he was joking. Fuck, dude. <laughs> By giving him two months, I gotta help him straighten out his affairs. Robert, I'm so sorry. Maybe just whatever I answer with, I would get a bad response from him. Maybe this is like, I don't know. It's like, we didn't really get close throughout this whole route. We went out and we whittled some wood and we saw like a cryptozoological creature. We got drunk and fought off some teenagers. Hmm. Maybe remain silent. That's not an option. I mean... <laughs> Robert takes a long look at his whiskey, eyeing it in the dim glow of the bar's lights. I look at his life, then I look at mine, and I know history is just doomed to repeat itself. So break the cycle, dude. Put the whiskey... You invited me to a bar! Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's retired. <sighs> I'm so fucking angry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's retired with his new girlfriend in Acapulco. They watch the sunset every night. Probably screw like donkeys. I, wait, aren't rabbits the ones that screw a lot? Oh, sorry. Didn't you realize you were an expert on which animals screw a lot? <sighs> he stops saying the word screw. It makes her jealous because she hasn't been screwed in a very long time. <laughs> Robert finishes his drink and slides it away from him. He gets up out of the booth. Me and Alan are going to hit the bricks. You coming with? Mary casts one long glance at the sad sap she's been hunting and downs the rest of her wine in one gulp. Uh. This place is dead anyways. Uh. Okay, apparently Mary's actually coming with us. <laughs> Did not expect that. Don't understand this man? Yeah, I'm not really into the dude. He has his moments, but yeah, he genuinely seems like he needs to get his shit together. 
He acts like a teenager, which, you know, they're fun for moments of flans, uh, for flights of fancy, for like little moments, but not someone I'd want to spend a long amount of time with. We exit the bar and find the typically empty street filled with a small crowd of people. At the front is a guy with a really deliberate attitude and a bad posture. He carries a lantern that he shines up at his face for dramatic effect. What's going on? It's like it's one of those walking ghost tours. They do that in this part of the town all the time. I've always wanted to do one of those. Ah. You know all of those stories are fake, right? Pretty much all of my stories are fake. This is research. Mm. <laughs> At least he admitted it for once. <laughs> Robert makes a beeline towards the back of the group. He turns around when he notices that I'm not following him. Come on. We can't just crash it, can we? It's our neighborhood. What are they going to do? Tell us to go away? We just say we're loitering. It's fine. <laughs> I can fix him. No, we can't. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he wants to be fixed. And that's fine. He can live his life his own way. <laughs> don't be such a square, Alan. Just act like you belong. Robert said it was up to the tour group. I reluctantly fall into step behind him. Well, here goes nothing. Hey, hey. It was in this place in 1694 that the most infamous witch trials were held. To date, we do not know the people burning the stake are actually witches, but it's widely reported that their ghosts still haunt this happens dive bar to the very day. Mary's a ghost. I fucking knew it. I knew it. She was too old timey. <laughs> it was actually 1692. Hey! What? And the site was over by the coffee shop down the road. I'm sorry. Who are you? Daniel McSturgis, ghost historian. And this is my colleague, Dr. Ages reference, 90s reference. 80s reference. Mm. Contemporary? No, 80s. Yeah! I figured that was his time. Dr. Loomis, paranormal investigator extraordinaire. We're touring America's most haunted locations on research for our new book. You may have seen our ghost cameo on Paranormal House Hunters Extreme Edition. Wow, he immediately went from pretending to blend in to just being a dick. This is great. <laughs> this is fucking great. <laughs> a couple of people in the group start nodding. Man, Robert's good at this. I, like hurt. I... Are you guys part of the group? I remember seeing you at the first stop. We like to keep a low profile. Easier to catch ghosts that way. Hey. I've definitely been here. Been standing next to them the whole time. I didn't realize Mary joined us as well. Thank you, random lady who I do not know. <laughs> this is terrible. This is such a bad lie. <laughs> As I was saying, the epicenter of paranormal activity can be found at the coffee spoon over there. The man who runs it has been plagued by haunting since he signed the lease. Damn near driven him mad. Whatever you want to say is cool, I guess. It's your tour. Man, didn't know that about Matt. It's not true, you idiot. Wait, Robert's making this up. <laughs> Oh my god, he needs to get with the flow. The rest of the tour group listens intently to Robert's every word. I think the tour guide can tell that he's losing the group. He seems to be getting flustered. All right. That is Ninja Brian. God damn. Thank you for pointing that out. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your contribution and knowledge, Mr. McSturgis. Let's move up to the next haunted location. Robert, Mary, and I follow the group down the street. A tour guide's shirt is cool. No, 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 no. We're wearing a terrible enough shirt. We don't need another terrible shirt. <laughs> yeah, everyone in the group gets one if we make it to the final location. I turn to Robert and grab him by the shoulders. I need that t-shirt. Mm. Well, guess we're in this for the long haul then. Let's follow my lead. Don't arouse too much suspicion, and we'll have cool ghost shirts in no time. Damn it. Ugh. Oh, this is Damien's house. <laughs> They're going to say it's like haunted by a vampire or some shit. Oh, this is fucking great. Our group arrives at an old, decrepit, colonial style house. A quick pause in the tour. My name is Quinn, but most people on the ghost tour circuit call me Tour Master Quinn. I'm a DJ, trivia master. And part-time act. <laughs> oh, is he going to hand out fucking headshots? I swear to God. All right. 
I do private ghost hunting events, birthday parties, MC bar mitzvahs, and perform traditional vaudevillian mime work. Vaudevillian mime work. God damn. <laughs> Tourmaster Quinn gives out headshots. Oh my god! Fucking! Yep, yep. We're in California. <laughs> His resume is on the back. Hmm. Stage combat experience. Anyway, here's a little bit of history for you all. This was the home of known and American author Dorothy Pembridge, whose prose was wildly popular in the late 19th century. Oh, this isn't his house. It's different. <laughs> I was in this attic of the very home where she wrote such classics as The Diaries of a Victorian Mistress, Lady Fitzwilliam's Courtship, and The Ghost of Sea Captain Reginald Barclay. She unfortunately died of consumption shortly after the turn of the century. Several people have reported that on some nights, you can see a light from the attic where the ghost of Mrs. Pembridge continues working on her latest bestseller. I guess you could say that she was consumed by her work. <laughs> I am so sad. <laughs> His fucking voice is great. I am so sad. <laughs> no reaction from the crowd. This guy needs to work on his dad jokes. Actually, consumption is the popular cover-up. The known fact is that it was a murder-suicide. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure she died of consumption. Sure, sure. We definitely didn't hire Stanley Kubrick to elaborately fake the moon landing. That's the watered-down censored version they teach you in school. But if you can't handle the real story, I understand. It's not for the faint of heart. Can we? Ah. <laughs> My feelings heard. <laughs> wow. I think everyone would much rather hear what this world-renowned ghost historian has to say. Right, everybody? Hey. The group murmurs in agreement. This is so mean. We have destroyed this dude's career today. I am so sad. He hit us with the I am so sad again. He's just trying to do his job and we're destroying shit. I love Mary. Man, that was so mean. <sighs> It was funny, but it was so mean. <laughs> this is a topic we cover extensively in our book. Dr. Loomis, would you care to tell the story? Uh? That's the good stuff. Or if something highbrow, go with something I know. Rely on amazing improv comedy. See, I have none of those. We're going to go with something I know. Just change the story a little bit. Let's go with that. In the 19th century, Dorothy Pembridge was credited for protecting New York City from potentially world-ending paranormal forces. Despite her success, her ragtag group of ghost hunters were disbanded by government officials. That's the fucking... <laughs> That's was, was, was the Ghostbusters. I didn't expect you to go for that. I expected you to go for like a different murder-suicide story. But okay. However, after learning that the ghost of Vigo the Capethian has taken an interest in her son and her ghost-busting friends, launched a mission to defeat the ghost and once again save New York City. Hey. <laughs> Hey, isn't that the plot to... Nope, it's not. Okay, he liked it. This is the dumbest shit I have ever done with my life. I regret being here. <laughs> but it's working out somehow. We're saving this date. The tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take back the group and addresses us with some razzle-dazzle. <laughs> what an interesting story. Come on. Now, I just want everyone to know that the next location is extremely terrifying. If anyone thinks they can't handle it, feel free to excuse yourself. And we fade to black. <laughs> All right, I'm bored. Mary turns to a young guy looking at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Hey, kid. Fancy buying a gal a drink? The guy looks up at her and smiles. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. I think I could exercise your demons. If that's what you're looking for. She actually has that voice line. Okay, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> don't write checks your dick can't cash, kid. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'll be exercising her demons. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone can. <laughs> His eyes go wide. Mary salutes me and Robert. He suddenly pulls me into a hug and murmurs into my ear. When you've known Rob for as long as I have, you know when something's wrong. Keep an eye on him for me tonight, right? Sure, Mary. 
Good man. I'm gonna go get some dick. Later. <laughs> I love how she's like, there's something really, really wrong with my close friend, but I finally found a guy who actually wants to take me home. So later, I'm gonna go have some fun. <laughs> Mary pats me on the back and pulls away. She takes the guy's hand and leads him down the street. <laughs> Jesus. Hey. Take it sleazy, fellas. Oh my God. I love her, but I'm also worried about her. <laughs> she seems like she would be fun to hang out with, but... Oh, God. How is she a mother to, like, three children? <laughs> is she okay? God help that poor soul. Mary or the kid? Oh. Both. <laughs> oh. Our last stop, the burial ground, is such a hotbed of, hor of horrifying paranormal activity. I'm not even sure where to begin. There's the wailing ghost of the Wharfman, the vampire Maple Bay, the children of the Moonlight. What about the Dover ghost? By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated with us. <laughs> what about it? Oh, nothing. I just think it would be a crime to come all the way over to this cemetery. The actual origin of one of New England's most notorious paranormal entities, and not even mention the infamous Dover ghost. That's not a real thing. That is absolutely not a real thing. You know it's bad when the paranormal dude is just like, nah, that shit's fake. You're just lying. <laughs> what is with him and the Dover ghost? I don't know. Maybe he told the story. Maybe that's just like one story he told someday that actually got like popular. And so he's just like, but the Dover ghost, man. You know the Dover ghost, right? Everyone knows the Dover ghost. I think someone needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons about paranormal history. I know every ghost in this area. Oh. I can guarantee there's one you don't know. Robert looks over at me and smiles. Mm. Would you care, folks care to hear the tale of how Loomis and I met? Damn. No. <laughs> the entire group shushes the tour guide. <laughs> this poor guy, man. <laughs> Okay, fine, fine. Th tell the story. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. I wasn't always a paranormal investigator. Way back when, I was just a... Carnival barker. I like that. Traveling Grift is good, too. That's what he wanted to be when he grew up. Let's go with... Oh, but Bible salesman. Hmm... If we go with Bible salesman, it'll probably connect to like a poltergeist style event. Let's go with Bible salesman. Traveling around the state, not only spreading the good word, becoming the closer to the man upstairs myself. I humbled upon the quiet town of Maple Bay quite by accident. But little did I know that this city has a dark side. Hmm. Now, about the same time, I was just starting out as an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter. who was an old family friend of mine. I carried the equipment. Operated the EVP machine, all of that. Wait. Huh. Yes. Ooh. Was the famous ghost hunter. Oh. Well, I don't like to name drop, but Georgia Mathers. The tour group gasps. Hey. Georgia Mathers? She's a legend. You know her? Knew her. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Miss you, Georgie. Hey. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he's so good at lying. Holy fuck, he just never slips. We were in Maple Bay investigating some reports of strange lights and sounds coming from the cemetery late at night. Now, we had been warned by the old crypt keeper that this place was highly dangerous, but Georgia was never one to shy away from an adventure. We camped out in the center of the cemetery for three nights straight, being Georgia's so-called Wailing Watchman. Wailing Ghost of the Morphman. Mm. Whatever. Your stupid vampire was just a teenager in a mask. But the Dover ghost, man. Tell him, Loomis. I... So there I was, just walking back to my hotel after a long day of... Selling Bibles. <laughs> saving souls and selling Bibles. Also saving a couple of Bibles, <laughs> but never selling any souls. Except my own. But that's another story. I sold my soul? That's a problem. Oh my god, it's great. This story is great. I lean over to tour Master Quinn. Won it back in a fiddle competition. That's the story of Faust! 
I found myself walking past this very cemetery. I was never a very superstitious man, but something seemed off. I could hear some sort of commotion happening deep within the graveyard. I felt compelled to investigate. <sighs> Thank God you did. Georgia and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. At first, things were pretty normal. After about an hour, everything went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we were about... We were able to hear a single word. Huh? Run. Oh. The air suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just knew we weren't alone. We started to hear this faint, distant scraping sound, like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder and louder until it was deafening. Some kind of demented howl. And then I felt it. Someone. Something. Grabbing my ankle. Robert has the whole crowd, hook, line, and sinker. You could hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. The other was then when that thing started dragging me. I wasn't sure it was taking me. I knew it was no place I wanted to go. I was sure I was going to die. The moment I crossed the gate into the cemetery, I heard this god-awful screeching. I ran into the mausoleum just in time to see a man being pulled across the floor by. God, to this day, the mere thought of it ties my stomach into knots. It looked like a man, but like... I glance at Robert. Like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like tried to put one together. The arms were too long. Its eyes glowed red. It was like a walking shadow. Its eyes were supposed to be pitch black. You forgot that, Alan. But yes, we did steal his story. That's pretty cute. <laughs> what did I do? What any good person would do. I lunged for... Shoot. What was his fake name again? Oh, fuck. Daniel McSturgis? Damn it, I remembered the McSturgis. I can't remember. I think it's Daniel. Uh, go for it. Daniel. Oh, sweet. Okay, good shit, good shit. I grabbed his hand and entered into a tug of war with the unholiest of forces. I thought I was going to be torn in half. But I had God on my side. The pocket Bible I always kept on me fell out of my shirt pocket. And to this day, I can remember which passage it opened up to. Ah, oh, fuck me. Austin 36? Is that a real thing? I know these two are real things. This one, Revelations doesn't have anything that I think would deal with exercising demons. Ecclesia, it is 12-7. You want me to go for 12-7, Meow? I can go for 12-7. <laughs> Austin 316. Oh, someone called Steve Austin? No fucking way. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not Christian. Okay. Well, somebody said 12-7. I would have gone for Leviticus 2-5, but okay. Oh, that's a good line. And shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. I have no idea where Robert pulled that verse from. But it worked out somehow. <laughs> it worked out somehow. With a horrifying growl, the entity finally relented. Daniel and I collapsed onto the ground, exhausted. We were both covered in blood. Right, Daniel. <laughs> that damn creature clawed into my chest. Got me real good. Had to get 16 stitches. Robert pulled down the collar of his shirt to reveal a long, wicked scar across his pecs. And that's how I got this scar. I... Wow, he even has the scar. Let's go. That's the literal Bible phrase? Okay, so someone in chat did know which one to go for. Let's go. I followed Georgia Matthew Mathers to the end of the earth. He faced exorcisms, demons, guys that threw our equipment across the room. But I'd never seen Georgia so scared. She was never the same after that. And neither was I. Watching what happened to Daniel and Georgia shook my faith. But I came out of that experience a better man and a better friend. And we've been brothers ever since. <laughs> the tour group gives us a round of applause as Daniel, uh, Robert, and I share an emotional hug. As he embraces me, I can smell the cologne on his neck. Wow, hope it does clear up, clean up good. I myself lingering a little too long on the hug. Yes, brothers, of course. <laughs> the tour guide seems to have bought it. Even he's wiping a tear from his eyes. Thank you, thank you. It's been an honor to share our story. Be sure to watch out for our book. 
Paranormal excursions of the supernatural ice road truckers. I saw a demon. The shocking true story of seeing a demon. The bro's guide to the hottest ghosts. Um, these are all pretty fucking stupid. This is a literal TV show. Um, a bro's guide, I guess, because it has brothers in it and it's stupid. Fuck it. <laughs> he found it funny. Yeah, okay. Robert has to suppress a laugh at that one. All right. Well... I think you both definitely earned your t-shirts. The tour guide hands us the coveted t-shirts. Then slips us both his business card and leans in close. Hey. If you guys are ever in need of a professional actor, balloon animal, artist, Elvis impersonator, or nude model. <laughs> Dude's on the hustle. Let's fucking go. Please don't hesitate to contact me. You got it, buddy. After a couple of tourists take selfies with us, we split away from the group and walk home. Wow, we got the t-shirt for some reason. It wasn't even a nice t-shirt. It didn't look like it had anything to do with the paranormal fucking business he was doing. It was just like a Hawaiian shirt. But okay. Okay. That was incredible. I really can't believe they bought all of that. I don't know you had it in you. Alan, excuse me. Dr. One. A bit about the pocket Bible was aces. Well, giving the Dover ghost glowing red eyes was a little cliche. And the Kubrick conspiracy theory bit wasn't. Hey. All a part of the character. Well, we got the shirts out of it. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Mm. Want to have a drink? Nah, I'm good. Fuck you, but nah, let's go. Robert, how long have you known me for? Really think I would turn down the opportunity to share a fine alcoholic beverage with my trevish friend and accomplish uh, an accomplice, Mr. Robert Bobbert Small. <laughs> if you ever call me Bobbert again, I'll kick you right in the shins. Both of them. Oh. And you can expect an angry phone call from my orthopedist in the morning. I was going to say, why does everybody hate my knees now? <laughs> Free merch. Can't say no to that. He probably just got like a fucking box of them at some time. Found a box of those shirts and was like, I'll give these out at the end of my tour. It'll work perfectly. <laughs> Robert. Robert just laughs and starts unlocking his door. My shins live to die another day. Robert leads me inside. I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. Robert did seem a little bit off, but that completely disappeared when we were joking around with the ghost tour. I don't know. He's hard to read. What I'm thinking, I hear claws slithering across the floor. Oh god, it's his pit bull. I'm about to be torn to shreds. I shut my eyes tight and brace for impact. Let's see, hey, be nice. I don't feel anything but tiny paws scratching at my shoes. I open my eyes. Is it a cat? No. Okay, good. It was the adorable little dog. <laughs> Let's see. Mm. Oh my god. Now that's a cute fucking dog. There are so many dogs in this game. That one's adorable. <laughs> Ugly dog? How dare? Look at him. Look at his giant eyes. This is cute. Robert's dog jumps away from me, running around in circles and sniffing Robert's legs. He pats her on the head. Hey, it's not a pit bull. This is the cutest, dumbest Boston Terrier I've ever seen. That's a your... Not a pit bull? And you weren't taken by the Dover ghost. Betsy's made of tougher stuff than that, ain't you, girl? Betsy rolls over for some well-deserved belly rubs. I just keep a lot a picture of a large pit bull in my wallet in case of emergencies. Comedic emergencies. <laughs> okay, dude, you are a strange person, but whatever. <laughs> this is fine. We make our way to Robert's living room. For a quiet man with arguably the oldest pickup truck that could be legally driven... This place is amazing. There are sleek modern appliances throughout the room with a big flat screen TV mounted on the wall. He has shelves upon shelves of DVDs. Guess he wasn't lying about being really into cinema. He pours us both glasses of whiskey from a well-stocked bar in the corner while Betsy curls up on a pile of cushions. So, how did you really get that score? <laughs> Don't tell me you got it fishing for Alaskan king crabs in the Bering Sea or something. You trained me too well. <laughs> Robert laughs and takes a sip of his drink. Oh, he does have a daughter. Holy shit. Okay, we're actually finding out some real shit about him. 
<laughs> just answer my question. He's not very good at answering questions. He just does his own thing. Hides in the corner and chills it his own way. We will never truly know. Ever. <laughs> my daughter and I were riding our bikes. I hit a rock, flew over the handlebars, and then we went to the hospital. And that's it. Oh. Not a very interesting story. Never heard you talk about your daughter. Well, I have one. Huh. That's her. He points to the picture on the wall of a very serious looking girl with dark eyes. Yeah, that's definitely Robert's daughter. How old is she? Uh, 25? 26. Not too sure. Does she live around here? Whoa, whoa. No, Val lives back home in Brooklyn. Works at some new media online magazine thing. Takes buckets, though. I don't know. He suddenly seems really serious. I probably shouldn't press him about it. You like Santana? Yes. Ah. Great. Rob, I don't know what Santana is. I was like, okay. Uh, yeah, I totally like Santana. Whatever. He puts on Santana, then takes a seat on the couch next to me. He suddenly downs his drink in one gulp. I see you humored him. Yeah, I've learned to just say, yeah, I like the thing that it sounds like you like. Possibly. <laughs> Genuinely don't know what it was, but this is fine. Oh, he's a guitarist. Okay. This isn't bad. This sounds okay. You don't know Santana? Santana D's. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> hey, are you all right? Robert leans in and kisses me. Taste of whiskey burning my lips. I'm surprised at first, but slowly relax into his arms. He pulls away slightly, his lips barely brushing against my mouth. I am now. Holy shit. Wow, he just went for that. I can't say anything. At best, managing a sigh. Robert leans again, kissing me harder. He pulls my bottom lip between his teeth and bites slightly, sliding a hand under my shirt. My heart pounds in my chest as he lies us both down on the couch. He kisses the trail down my neck, his teeth grazing my skin. Ooh, shit. This is getting pretty fucking intense. I... I just... Wait. It's not that. Robert bites down and I have to stifle a moan. Stop. Robert stiffens up and pulls away. No biting? No, no. I'm more than okay with that. Hey, let's go, Alan. Alan's like, oh, no, no, no. The biting is fine. It's just this was a pretty fucking sudden. Something's up. Oh, the music immediately cut off. That's... Yeah. He tried to run away with sex again. None of that. We need to talk about feelings, I guess. Robert runs a hand through his hair and looks away. I'm fine. Just been kind of stressed out. Tired. Not a big deal. I feel like I should push it based on... But this will probably make him hate us. But fuck it. We have a save before this. We can, we can, we can skip it. Listen, I want this as badly as you do. But I know something's wrong. I need to make sure you're okay. Robert stares at the ground. Mm. You don't know me that well. Alan, I'm not... a good person. He takes a deep breath. Oh. I spend my whole life only talking and taking... Oh, taking. Only taking and taking and taking. And now here I am. An old broken man sitting on top of a pile of everything I've ever taken. Alone. But I want to know you. You don't have to keep hiding behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. Uh. It's... He sighs heavily. Hmm. It's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She... Wants to patch things up. That's good, right? <laughs> Are you... Uh... I'm sorry, but... Is this a bit? I mean... No. Yeah, dude, you probably shouldn't guess everything sad about him is a bit. When was the last time you saw her? 
three, four, I think. When she was three or four? Months? I don't know. Years. Okay, that's not so bad. <laughs> when he said three or four, I think, I didn't realize, I, I thought we were going to be like three or four years ago. And then he was going to be like, no, when she was three or four. Okay, three or four years, that's not so bad. You, you're doing fine. I sit up straight. Jesus, Robert. What happened between you two? Mm. I don't want to talk about it. Robert and I sit in silence. Neither of us wanting to look at each other. Both of us unsure about what to do next. Huh. Fine. Mm. Things were already bad between us. I cared about her. I always did. Things just got in the way. And before I knew it, she was leaving for college, wanting nothing to do with me. Marilyn and I moved here to settle down. We thought it would help to get away from all the distractions, all the money, the drinking. But temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, but I just couldn't. And then, the accident changed everything. I think every day about how she must have died hating me. I never became the better man that she wanted me to be. The one she always saw in me. She was the last thread Val and I had connecting us together. I didn't know that when I lost my wife. I was going to lose my daughter too. Robert. I spent so much time chasing after things I thought were going to make me happy that I ruined my only real chance at happiness. Now my wife is dead and my daughter hates me. And then I convinced myself that this... He gestures vaguely in my direction. Was going to make me happy. Why do I even try anymore? Yeah, dude, nothing's going to make you happy until you deal with your own shit. You need to work on yourself and stop trying to find your happiness in other people and other things. Because those are fleeting. I'm so sorry. I know how hard it is to... No, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves you. You're a good person. Hey, I fucking lost my partner too, you dick. I was a terrible husband. And I'm an even worse father. I have no idea why she's even bothering to contact me now. I know I'm just gonna fuck it up like I always do. I'm broken. I shouldn't even go. Robert puts his head in his hands. Also, before we move on, Ampio, thank you so much for the huge rainbow super plus the fucking 20 gifted membership. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Just have a wonderful time. This is a really deep story. Like, the fact that they moved here to try and get away from all the excess. They tried to be better. And then I'm guessing there was some sort of accident that killed his wife from the way he worded it. And because of that, he never got to be better and so he always blames himself for that for making his wife unhappy even until the bitter end and now it's awkward between him and his daughter because his daughter knows that she was unhappy and so they've never patched it up over these four years but at least they're trying to now I got her. yeah tell him what he needs to hear fuck it we're not gonna baby him what, what, what do you want to hear like oh there isn't even anything that he wants to hear right now He's just saying, like, oh, I'm always going to be unhappy. Woe is me. What he needs to hear is, like, dude, quit the fucking pity party. Your daughter wants to actually meet up with you again. How about if you care so much, you actually do something good? Clean your fucking apartment, get rid of the fucking alcohol, and welcome her when she shows up. Walking away is also an option, but I, I, what he needs to hear, yeah. Nothing is going to change until you do. Robert pauses. He looks at me. There are a lot of things in my life that I regret. That I wish I could take back or do over. And it hurts so much to know that I can't. What I can do and what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow morning is to wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. Things aren't going to fix themselves tomorrow or the next day. And patching things up with Val isn't going to solve all your problems either. But nothing is going to change if you don't. And if you can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself... And you're right. I don't know you that well. But you have the same capacity for good that we all have. And I know you can find it. That was giving you a chance. Don't waste it. But, Robert, listen to me. 
It's gonna be okay. But... I lean over and embrace Robert, pulling him in as tightly as I can. He buries his head into my shoulder, hugging me back. It's gonna be okay. I place a hand on the back of his head and stroke his hair. He shudders and sobs, and I realize that he's crying. Yeah, this dude needs to actually go for therapy. This dude is full of so fucking much regret. Thank you. We stay there for a while, holding each other. We both eventually drift off to sleep. Oh shit, we slept together. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Take a oh god, volume. Out. There we go. Taped sports baby boomer. Whiskey crime. A little bit of real talk. And Mary. Mary makes it all better. We got another A rank. Okay, that's not bad. Not an S rank, but an A rank. Give him a business card for Dr. Ovid. I could make him worse. That would be fun. <laughs> that would not make him better. So that's, that's his route, huh? We just made him snap out of his little baby bitch arc. <laughs> Ew. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay. Gotta act natural. Be cool, Alan. Be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Hmm. Something fishy? Rats. What? No. You asked too many questions. So this is the same thing as last time. This is the barbecue with everyone. This is her back from college. Which is weird, because this entire route, I ignored my daughter. We didn't even have, like, the whole deep thing about her not being able to go to college, almost. And about her friends backstabbing her. Holy fuck. It's the feds. That's what we did last time, though. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm going to say this time, you asked too many questions. Who do you think you are? My daughter? For literally my entire life, yes. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're bad at lying. <laughs> Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get a cable in the dorm. I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. Yeah, okay. We're going to skip through this. We've seen all of this. These are things we've already seen. Oh, God, there's all the dads. That was too many voices at once. This is all going to be the same until we get to our actual ending. Wait, this might be new. Hey. Oh, oh, oh crap. We missed a bit there. Look, I know you're not old enough to drink, right? And I know you're smart enough not to drink until you're of a legal age. Uh-huh. Oh. Hypothetically, if you were to drink, it'd behoove you to drink a glass of water between rounds. Got oh. it. Hypothetically. Mm. And if you wake up with a headache, all you gotta mm. do is take a jar of pickles and drink the pickle juice. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> She's teaching her how to deal with a hangover? Okay, Barry. That's kind of sweet. What's going on here? Girl talk. Mary turns back to Amanda. And let me how to tell you how to deal with a bad roommate. First thing to know, you get straight A's if they die during the semester. Holy shit! Mary, do not suggest murder of a roommate. Relax, it's a myth. Supposedly. <laughs> Against my better judgment, I leave them be. Hmm. I don't think I recognize that girl by the snack table. I should go say hello. Robert's daughter? You do not look 26. You look like 30, but okay. Damn. God damn. <laughs> hmm. I don't think I reckon... <laughs> I should probably not be eyeing Robert's daughter in that way, considering we're on the Robert rope. But okay. I don't think I recognize that girl by the snack table. I should go say hello. Hi. I don't think we've met. Oh, we've met years ago. I'm here for my revenge. Oh, she's just like fucking Robert. You're Robert's kid, aren't you? <laughs> Spot on. I guess that makes you Alan, huh? 
Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I'm glad Robert brought you along. Yeah, that's a good... God, she's fucking just like him. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, this is pretty fucking awesome. Good for her. Good for Robert. It seems like they're actually getting along if he brought her to the fucking barbecue. Val root for me? Chat is down bad, man. <laughs> he promised there would be free food. So that's kind of hard to pass up. And... Look, I don't know you, but can I get real with you for a sec? That old man's a real closed book, you know. Me and him, we got a long way to go. You don't erase, erase decades of neglect in a week. But you sure can get tired of staying angry about it. The kind of bitterness, it poisons you, I think. I'm too young for that. Anyway, lately he's been better. A lot better. And between him shaving for once and how much he talks about you, I get the feeling you have something to do with it. So, thanks. Okay, number one, I still love her design, but also... Did they give her the dead anime mom hair because of Robert's tragic wife story? She's got the braid in remembrance of her mom? Um, either way, she's fine as fuck. Robert means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Just keep an eye on him while I'm not around, okay? Or else... What? I'm kidding. Or am I? I don't know why I'm like this. <laughs> I know why you're like this. I spent like three days with him. I understand why you're like this if you were raised by him. <laughs> I think it runs in the family. <laughs> Amanda trots up to the conversation. Huh? Hey, I like your necklace. And your hair. Huh? And just, jeez, your whole vibe is cool. Yeah, she is. Thanks. I like your jacket. My girlfriend collects pins too. Oh, this is my daughter, Amanda. Amanda, this is Robert, daughter Val. Nice meeting you. I heard you're a photographer. Oh. Aspiring photographer. I'm going to school for it. You take pictures? Yes. Then you're a photographer. Welcome to the biz. Oh my god, she's a photographer too? God damn. These two are going to get along too well. This is not good for my sanity. <laughs> Val hands Amanda a business card. If you're ever looking for internships, shoot me an email. Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who's dual wielding wine glasses. Catch you later. <laughs> oh, she knows a good time when she sees one. Yo, hello, Fantomos. Hello, Reimu. How you doing, Moo Moo? Did you have a good stream today? It's rare that you raid me and not the other way around. Damn. You finished early. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, we're just wrapping up the first route. We did the bad dad. This is bad dad's daughter. Looking hella fine. Um, and after this, we're going to cock a minister's wife. We are going to steal a minister from his wife. It's going to be a good time. Hope you have fun too, Futan. I will. Thank you, Mumu. I hope you have a good evening. Take care and have a good day. Dual wielding wine glasses is a good phrase. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Val walks away. She's so cool. She gave me a business card. She touched my hand. <laughs> Calm down, Amanda. She has a girlfriend. <laughs> Chill. Only one of us gets to cuck someone today. <laughs> Congrats. You just networked for the first time. I'm a regular business lady now. Quarterly projections, stock market, synergy. <laughs> While you're making a fortune as a businesswoman, I gotta keep this party going. That's your round, pops. Ellen. Oh, and we can skip these. We saw these last time. I'm going to see what Damien says, though, because Damien, we got him to rank two this time. Oh. No one else we've actually interacted anymore with. So it should just be the same as last time when we finished the Damien route. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh. give me to Damien. We have to see all the other dads, and then we'll get the dad we actually talked to. Ah. Ah. God damn it. Hey. She has a GF. Damn, I need a glass of wine. I know, right? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. Oh, wow. They say, like, two words. Damien's hurt, man. <laughs> Damien's just like, Oh, hey. We had two marvelous dates, and then you never spoke to me again. Okay. Bye. <laughs> As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting, and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Oh, I have read this bit too. 
Oh god, this is fine. Going to college. My baby's leaving me. She gives me a framed picture. Everything's great. Let me go see my boyfriend. I take a seat next to Robert as the last guests make their way out of the party. Hey. Hey. Ah, we're enjoying the silence. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. So... I had a chance to talk with Val. Mm. She physically threatened you? Yeah, she did. She's just like you. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. She said you've been doing better. Mm. Trying to work on the vices. I also showered today. She said you shaved too, but it doesn't look like you shaved. <laughs> we sit in silence for a moment. Mm. You know... Every day for me is a battle against my own self-destructive habits. But lately, it's gotten a little easier. Mm. Thanks for talking some sense into me. It's hard to get things through my thick skull sometimes, but what you said that night has actually helped. I'm glad. Mm. I like you, Alan. I like you a lot. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. I lean in and kiss him for a moment before he pulls away. He takes my hand in his. Oh. You're special to me. Huh. But I have some stuff I need to work on, uh, emotionally, before I can get into anything romantic with you. You deserve better than who I am right now. Fuck, that's so real. And I am so fucking proud of you for it. Yeah. You you do you, buddy. Diving into another relationship is not a good idea for you right now. You need to sort out your own shit. It's a good choice for your mental health. I need to be on my own for a bit. Figure some things out. Of course. I was planning on eating you anyway. You're fine. <laughs> as soon as my daughter left for college and the house was free and nobody would be around to hear the screams. Ha <laughs> ha. This is going to turn into a fun evening. But seriously, that's that's actually really good character development for you. I think what you need right now is a friend. I'm very happy to be that for you. Mm. Thank you. It means a lot to me. And if you're ever ready for more than that, you know where to find me. Let's have ghosts sometime. I would love that. I put my head on his shoulder and we watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon together. That was a good ending. Holy shit. That was really good character development. Good for them. Good for them. They're so sweet. Yeah. Is that the actual ending? <laughs> or did I fuck it up? I think that might be the actual ending for that. I always kind of got the feeling when we ran into Robert that we weren't going to have like a proper emotional ending for him. Yeah, that's the good ending. There's a postcard. Yeah, don't worry. I'm waiting for the postcard to come up. That's, that's good. That's... Good emotional development. Good story pacing. He needs to work on himself. He can't be dating anyone right now. Because if he did, he'd just fall back into destructive things again. He'd be like, I'm happy now. You know what? I'm going to have a drink. If he has a bad day, he'd like, yeah, it wouldn't be good for him. Val is played by Susie. <laughs> that makes so much sense. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I love that they got so many of the game grumps in on this. A very real relationship. Yeah, it's very adult of him as well to just be like, yo, I care about you. Like, seriously care about you. So I don't want to fuck this up. Instead, yeah. We'll work on things for a while and then we'll see what happens. Time for cult vibes? Hell yeah. We're going into our bar men arc. Unfortunately, I don't have that outfit on here. Yeah, no. I don't have any of the religious attire on this scene. That's okay. It's such a good song, too. Oh, you can speed through it. I'm an idiot. I just want to see the thing at the end. Oh, there's the picture we got. And... Oh. Just him and Betsy. And he's whittling Betsy. That's so fucking cute. 
his face is so funny. <laughs> well, Alan Bank. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look the best. This is a nice image, though. Good. He's just got to relax in the woods, work on himself. He's still got alcohol, but you know what? I'm, I'm sure he's like, he's limited it now. He doesn't rely on it anymore. So it's fine. <laughs> Maybe they shouldn't have left that. In. <laughs> anyway, he's working on himself. That's what matters. <laughs> the whiskey's still there is ouch. You can have been an alcoholic in the past and still drink occasionally. You just have to not let the drink actually lead you. You have to be able to drink when you choose to. That's not how being an addict works. <laughs> As uh, we've done the epilogue. Wait. Yeah, dad book. There we go. God, it auto saves me so much. Drinking from the bottle, though? No, he had a glass there. As long as you can be restrained. Exactly. Character gets color when you finish their route. Oh, I didn't even notice that in the beginning. That's pretty cool. Okay, now we go down the Joseph route. <laughs> now we cuck the minister's wife. <laughs> Let's find out what's going on. Voted Maple Bay as number one youth minister for five years running. Living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and our four amazing kids. I thought he had three. There's four of them? Oh, fuck. If I'm not in church, you can catch me out on the open water, setting sail on the seas of adventure. I love playing guitar and crushing my kids at Candyland. On a Friday night, you're most likely to lead the community in a fun mixer. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? My sixth string. What are your turns on? My loving wife, who doesn't love me and is often out at the bar with much, much younger men. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? A ship captain. What's your favorite movie genre? Feel good movies. What's your ideal date? Lovely night on the town with my wife. <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> What do you never leave home without? The good book. Where do you keep it, sir? You, you, you go, you're lying. You're just lying. All of this is a sham. <laughs> I spend a lot of time thinking about how I could be a better man, husband, and father. I can make him worse. Amen, motherfuckers. Let's dive in. Bible, BD, Bible PDF. True, you don't need to carry around a Bible nowadays. You just download one. Hmm. His family's a little weird, but Joseph seems cool. I should take him up on his offer to hang out. Wait. How do I hang out with a priest? I don't go to church. Should I be Jesus y? I imagine Joseph's family staring at me as I fumble around through some sort of prayer attempt. Maybe not too Jesus y. A light smattering of Jesus. Do you want me to pray? Is he going to pray at me? Do I have to pray at him? Sometimes you just got to get down on your hands and knees, man. Sometimes what you have to do. <laughs> Talking to Joseph, huh? Yeah. Amanda, how many times have I told you not to sneak up on me like that? I selectively ignore it every time you do, pops. Amanda looks over my shoulder at the screen. Joseph can't read your mind, you know. If you want to talk, just message him. But I've never been friends with a priest before. What do I talk about? My favorite Bible passages? Ice cream socials? Khakis? <laughs> First of all, he's a youth minister with a tattoo. Not a priest. I was going to say, he keeps calling him a priest. I'm pretty sure he just said he was a minister. <laughs> There's a difference? Aww. You're overthinking it, Dad. Listen, just put it like this. Ugh. Hello, neighbor. Thanks again for the invite to the barbecue. I'd love to hang out soon if you're not too busy. Isn't that a little too business casual? Mm. Fine, fine. Give me the keyboard. I got this. Okay. Amanda focuses on the keys. Hi, Joseph. It was great meeting you and your family. I'm still new around here, so if you'd like, I'd love to hang out and get to know you. See ya. A smiley is a nice touch. No, it's not. I, I hate that smiley. That is the plainest smiley in the world. I refuse. Almost immediately, I receive a response. What'd he say? Oh, that's a decent response. He signed it at the bottom. See? You see everyone in chat spamming that smiley? This. This is why I have issues. This is why I have problems. This is why I can't sleep at night. 
Huh, that wasn't so bad. Hi, Alan. If you're not doing anything a bit, the kids and I are baking treats for the church bake sale today. We'd love to have you over. It'll be a blast, so let me know. Joseph. He uses a lot of exclamation points. He really does. It's like he's always just pretending to be happy. Hmm. I'm more concerned about him signing his name with a tilde. I like the tilde. That's not bad. That I'm fine with. It's kind of casual. If you just signed it with a normal hyphen, it's boring. The tilde? Yeah, makes me happy. I'm willing to let it slide this time. I respond back. Sounds like fun. Alan. Great, come on by the house as soon as you're ready. We'll be here. Oh, I guess I'm doing this. Huh? I'm going to be recruited into a cult, aren't I? <laughs> like, I was asking him out on a date, but he's immediately got me to agree to help him with a church bake sale. This is a problem. It should be fine. It should be fine. Save a brownie for me. I promise you won't sneak up on me anymore. Amanda stares at me, unblinking. I don't make promises I can't keep. Real to a fault, Pops. Ugh. And Dad, please don't be weird about the religion thing. <laughs> Seriously, you've been so weird about it already. <laughs> you already run a cult, Fu? I mean, I don't run a cult. There just happens to be a cult that happened somewhere else. It's fine. <laughs> Me? Weird. Never. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Oh, God. I make the short walk over to Joseph's place. Don't be weird, Alan. Don't be weird. What if they hang up a bunch of crosses? Collect those little porcelain babies. What if they're all praying? Do they pray before dinner? During dinner? Over the porcelain babies? The door begins to creak open. A shadowy figure obscured on the other side. Who's there? Uh, Alan? Oh god. It's the non-twin baby. The door <laughs> opens the rest of the way. It's Joseph's eldest. What's his name? Hey. Hey. Uh. Chris. Hi again. It's... I'm Alan. Oh, his name is Chris. Okay. I thought Christian was a bit on the nose. I was like, that can't be right. <laughs> I know what your name is. Oh, yeah, we met at the barbecue. How's the, uh... uh... Please don't say it. Jesus! Chris brings slowly. Maybe he didn't hear that. You're weird. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am not good at being a normal human being. <laughs> this is okay. Is your dad... Before I finish, Chris walks into an adjacent room, leaving me in front of the open doorway. Home? This was a great first impression. For a moment, I wonder if I should just go in. Further, subjuga further, further subjecting Joseph's family to my winning attitude and artful charisma. Mercifully, Joseph peeks his head around the corner. <laughs> that fucking voice line, man. He just sees me out the open door and he's just like, Ooh. <laughs> I feel like something glitched in my gameplay of this. And so the voice lines are always off. But it's fucking funny, so I'm not going to try and fix it. <laughs> sometimes there's double voice lines. Sometimes there's moaning when it should just be people saying, Hi, I don't get it. Alan, you made it. Joseph approaches with his arms wide. Ooh, I'm so glad you could come by. Are you ready to bake? I am not. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. That'll do. That's the kind of semi-confidence I like to see in a baking assistant. Come on in. Joseph leads me into a bright, spacious home full of nautical knickknacks. This isn't what I imagined at all. It's actually pretty charming. Oh. I believe you've met Chris, who left you outside. For good reason. I was being weird with him. The Steve Rogers looking dude. He is very Steve Rogers looking. That's fucking great. <laughs> you don't just moan in casual conversations, Foo. 
only when I'm doing my specific mating call. Then, obviously, yes, I start every conversation with a moan. But I'm not always doing my mating call. Yeah. Not every day calls for it. Chris. Hmm? Mm. Are you going to apologize? Oh, right. Sorry. I try to make eye contact with Chris. But he keeps looking away. He must be really shy. It's all right. Next time, just be a little more inviting to our guests, okay? Sure. <laughs> Chris just doesn't want to be here. <laughs> Chris seems to relish the chance to escape the conversation and quickly vanishes into his room. Joseph turns to me apologetically. Don't take it personally. Chris likes to keep to himself. I mean, we didn't start off on the best foot in the world. As being the eldest in a big family can't be easy. Oh. We try to cut him a little slack where we can. Ah, oh, and here are the twins. Christy, say hello to Alan. Oh God, <laughs> no. They're doing it at the same time again. Okay. Hello, father. Hello, Alan. Hello, Hello father. father. Hello, Hello Alan. Alan. There you go. Hmm. Kids, come on. Dial it back on the creepy twin stick. Creepy twin stick? Egg them on. Please egg them on. Can you two say, Come play with us, Danny? Yeah. Oh, no. The twins stare up in unblinking unison. Come play with us, Danny. Come, Come play, play with, with us, Danny. Danny. <laughs> okay, he's having a good time. He's fine that I'm making his children even more terrifying. This is great. <laughs> Joseph covers his mouth and looks away, but he's clearly holding back a big laugh. This is it. This is my dad world series. <laughs> okay, now say, Please help us, Mothra. <laughs> Please help us, Mothra. Please, Please help, help us, Mothra. Mothra. No. I can't take it. Joseph is trying his best not to break in front of his kids. The twins seem to be catching on and look eager to bust their dad. But can we keep it up? Go with something creepy or something obscure? Let's go with obscure. Let's see how into weird shit he is. Why are we making us say things? We're making the kids say things because they're creepy twins and they enjoy being creepy twins. They look happy. Yeah, they're smiling. They want to make their dad laugh. Their dad pretends he doesn't like it, but he's actually having a fucking joke. <laughs> now say, he who walks behind the rose. I don't get that one. Yeah, that one. Mm -mm. The twins tilt their heads in confusion. Uh-oh. He who... He... He who he, he walks he who behind some rose. <laughs> okay, we broke him at least. Is that children of the corn? Man, I have not seen that since I was a fucking kid myself. Oh damn. Well, at least it's a creepy kid reference. That's good. <laughs> The room is silent, besides Joseph absolutely losing his mind. That last flop really sealed it. Oh. Children of the corn? Really? Is that not mainstream? I'm off my game something fierce today. Yeah, that's pretty... <laughs> that's a horror movie not many people have actually seen. Why do you remind me of that movie? I don't know. Why do I remind you of that movie? Tell me. <laughs> Maybe it's the white hair that might help. <laughs> You're scary. I was also very scared. Joseph can't take it anymore. Despite his quiet protestations, he's laughing pretty hard into his hands, and the kids giggle with him. The twins, obviously pleased with a new arsenal of spooky weapons, leave the room to terrorize the rest of the community. My work here is done. Yes. I'm going to be hearing those lines for weeks. Next time we hang out, I'll try to teach them some lines from The Thing. Oh. Are there creepy twins in The Thing? Man, I really need to rewatch The Thing. It's like the original Among Us, man. Good shit. The Shining. Yeah, I think everybody knows The Shining one. Like, come play with us, Danny. <laughs> like, that's pretty simple. There aren't twins in The Shining. 
Uh, and there aren't there, 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 there aren't twins in the thing. I wonder why he's going to take them those lines then. I was like, wait a minute. I don't think there were twins in that. All right. So it looks like we've got a bit of a troublemaker in our hands. I think you can out trouble a career pro. I don't know about the. I'm suddenly interrupted by a loud crash from the kitchen. What now? That doesn't sound good. Christy. No one responds. Joseph furrows his brow and motions for me to stay where I am. Wait here a moment. Joseph rushes into the kitchen. I remember this with Amanda. Half of fatherhood is trying to keep your kids from finding creative ways to kill themselves. And he's got four. Talk about worry. I take a seat on this surprisingly pristine couch and twiddle my thumbs. Not to mention, he's kind of, you know doing this by himself it doesn't seem like mary helps much mary doesn't seem to be much of a mother <laughs> f cruiser doesn't know either yeah no no don't worry about it the shining's a pretty damn old movie it's a classic it's a well-known one but it, it has been like not around for a long time it is very classic it's a good good horror movie coffee table floor head in the kitchen i think i'll examine the bookshelf what kind of books you got it's a pretty sturdy wooden bookshelf. It looks handmade. Did Joseph build this? Of course he's a carpenter. His name is Joseph. His wife is Mary. <laughs> His children are Chris, Christian, Christie. <laughs> oh my God. There's a big stack of what look like travel magazines. Hyenas of the Serengeti. The underwater mysteries of the Antarctic and so on. Seems like Joseph really loves a good adventure. Unless this is a Mary thing. Who knows? Next to them are a couple of different Bibles. Looks like he's covering all the Bible bases. King James, New American Standard, the Bible for teens. He is a cool youth minister after all. On a higher shelf, there are a bunch of old romance novels. Judging by the wine stains, these must be Mary's. The newest one looks like Hot Body Johnson Sex Detective. The eighth installment in... Wait, this is a series? That's pretty fucking awesome, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, man. Thanks for reminding me of the fact that I still haven't watched The Shining. The only time I started hearing about The Shining again, because it definitely goes in a lot of people's like best movies of all time lists. But I didn't hear about it for a long while until Among Us came out and then everyone was basically like, yeah, it's just The Shining. Yeah, you know, creature running around pretending to be human. It's just The Shining. Uh, let's see the coffee table. There's a couple cool knickknacks on the coffee table in front of me. Hey, a cross another cross this one looks a little different and a third cross unified design aesthetic smart choices there's also a brass thing here it looks like something a sailor would use to navigate with i think they're called sextants yeah sex <laughs> god damn it okay okay you mean the thing i do mean the thing I said The Shining, didn't I? That was a brain slip. The Shining, yeah, don't worry. The Shining is the one with the hotel with Jack Nicholson. I was thinking of the thing most of that time. God, my brain. Um, look. <laughs> with three and a half hours in after a nine hour day yesterday, I slipped between two different movies. <laughs> the Shining <laughs> is the Jack Nicholson one with the whole like red rum, red rum over there. All work and no play make Jack a dull boy. It was just a Stephen King one. Don't worry about it. Well, you have this many kids and things are bound to end up on the floor. No matter how hard you try to keep it clean. I spot a terrifying cloth doll that appears to have had both arms pulled off several times. It's been stitched back together a lot. The tag says, C and C. Of course. <sighs> Celica and Saline. C and C. Oh no. They were raised here. <laughs> I set that down and spot a house plant. Hey, little guy. Being you, tiny house plant. I spot one last thing on the floor next to the house plant. It's a silver necklace. Wow, this looks expensive for something casually tossed on the floor. If there's a story here, it's none of my business. It's been a while. I guess I should go in the kitchen and see what's up. <laughs> I wondered when we were actually going to do that. <laughs> wondered why the thing was coming up. Yeah, we had a few different questions there. It's okay. 
the OPC2? Yeah, but now it's Christian Creepy Kids, which is C2 plus a K. <laughs> I walk into the kitchen to find Joseph holding Christy in one arm. She seems a lot calmer than she was a minute ago. I raise an eyebrow at Joseph. The twins are a lot more manageable when they're separated. <laughs> Where's Christian? He ran off. Christy dips a spoon into the brownie batter and gives it a taste. Dad, it's too sweet. You're too sweet. Aww. Why not? You're so sweet, we might even have to water you down. With spiders. Oh, not spiders. What the fuck? Is he okay? <laughs> that started off cute, and then it got really weird. <laughs> Joseph begins tickling Christy with his free hand. Between the laughing and squirming, I don't know how he's got a hold of her. But that girl is locked in place. The man is a professional child wrangler. Christy fixes me with her best puppy dog eyes. Save me from the spiders! Um... Spoon door with the spider king? Renegade option. Oh, you know I'm going renegade. We don't do paragon. Sorry, Christy. But I've been working with the spiders the whole time. No! They bought my allegiance with promises of flies. Oh, hell, our new spider overlords. <laughs> Joseph grins and continues his tickle torture. No one escapes the wrath of the spiders. After a few seconds, he relents and puts Christy down. She immediately retreats behind his leg, where she watches me quietly. This is fucking adorable. Oh, my God. Why is this so domestic immediately? Christy, don't you want to bake with Alan? Christy vigorously shakes her head. It must be an alliance with House Tickle Spider. Hmm. Are you sure? You'll get first dibs on the biggest piece of brownie. Christy hesitates, then shakes her head no again. Sparkle Pony. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Ouch. Joseph covered up his disappointment quick, but that looked like it hurt. You don't want to bake with Dad now? You want to play with Sparkle Pony? Yes. Uh. Okay. Go. Both of them are Chris? Technically, at least three of them are Chris. I don't think we've met the fourth child yet. No. They put the fourth child to sleep during the barbecue. They definitely said its name, but I don't remember it. But there's Chris, there's Christian, and there's Chrissy. They're all just Christ. And the parents' names are Mary and Joseph. Oh, the baby's name is Chris. Oh my god. Yeah, so they're all Chris. They're all Christ, essentially. Oh my god, Krish, that's terrible. <laughs> Before Joseph could even finish his sentence, Chris is out the door and down the hall. Ahead. Joseph sighs deeply as he stares into the chocolate batter. He tastes it again, face twisting. And that is still way too sweet. Did I ever... Oh, I never turned the volume back up. That's why it's been so quiet. So what made that crash? Egg beaters on linoleum floor. It's my new techno single. Still haven't thought of a B-side. Now we're both looking into the batter. It's got a sickly sheen of sugar and chocolate candies throughout. I have a feeling Christy had something to do with it. She put candy into the brown... Oh my god. No wonder Mary's depressed. Uh, that is a lot of children. <laughs> More than anything. Also, you're cucking them as a blasphemy? I never said we were going to have a religious playthrough of this game. <laughs> it is my calling. It is what I do. We need a fresh start. Oh, I, yeah. Like I said, I'm not really a baker, but... Don't even sweat it. The bag came with instructions that have mysteriously vanished along with my daughter. So we'll probably be fine. Probably. Hey. Yeah, probably. He certainly looks confident. All right, Alan. You baked a cake from a box before. Once. How hard could this be? Now grab a spoon and get ready to rock. Mario Batelli, save me. Joseph and I set to work, cracking the eggs and mixing the things, and then pouring the things according to how we assume the back of the box would tell us to do. Things go according to plan, and soon enough we have a solid batch of brownies. Hmm? Oh, they actually just did that without a recipe. I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> I didn't say cucking was my calling. It's what I do. I said this is my calling. <laughs> this is different. Phew. Wait. 
Joseph has a little dot of batter on his nose. Wow, Alan, way to use those dad skills. I bet you baked a few box mixes in your time. His nose. Joseph. Hmm. All we have to do is bring these to the bake sale and voila. Duty done. Ahem. Oh. Now help me find Christy. Keep your eye out for a pony that sparkles. <laughs> Just tell him for the love of God. Uh, Joseph, hold still. Uh. What? I'm in position. And... Got it. Mm. Joseph's eyes go wide as I gently wipe the chocolate off his nose. Is he... Blushing. Yeah, dude, that was a weird thing to do. You could have just told... Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, th thanks? No problem. In less than a second, I've licked the batter off my finger. It's really good batter. Yeah. Am I the tempter in this route? I'm an incubus. <laughs> oh... Lead them, yes, into temptation, my child, and let them fall before my glory. <laughs> we, uh, we should find Christy. Mm. Yes, yes, we should do that. Alan, Joseph quickly composes himself. Mm. All right, she can't be far. You take the Delta position and I'll watch your six. Do you even know what that means? Yeah. Alpha Tango Sparkle. Roger, roger. He's fucking cute. <laughs> He's trapped there with you? Yeah, this is my game now. I get to decide how it goes down. <laughs> Joseph starts making his way down the hall and calls back to me. Take the brownies and the rest of the stuff I baked earlier today while I get Christy. We'll meet you by the car. Right. Joseph, Christy, and I arrive at the church parking lot to find fold-out tables and pop-up tents already set up. It's like the bake sale is already in full swing. <laughs> wow, this place is packed. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Alan the Incubus? Hell yes. It's time for us to claim our next victim. Is this packed? There are a few people milling around. Must be a value pack. <laughs> if you can count a city's population on your fingers and toes, this counts as packed. Point. I was going to say, we live in a cul-de-sac with like six dads and that's it. Christy rockets out of the car and into the lot. Is she running on jet fuel? I want to sell brownies. Okay, okay. Let's get set up. I want to see mom. She's down by the other row of tables helping out with another group. I want to go over there and tell her I said hi. Mom! Christy zips off immediately. Joseph seems unconcerned. Does she always run that fast? Nice. Yeah. I can only catch her half the time. These knees aren't what they used to be. That was an interesting moment as well right now with him being like, tell her I said hi. Like, he doesn't even go over to see Mary. He's just like, yeah, tell her I say hi. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. This is going to be interesting. I remember when Amanda was her age. I couldn't get her to sit still for like five seconds. Hmm. Yep, great age to deal with. It doesn't sound like a great age to deal with. <laughs> While Christy's gone, Joseph and I arrange all kinds of baked goods on the table and settle in. So, are we allowed to eat any of our own goods? <laughs> Look, if I don't see nothing, I don't say nothing. Man upstairs has strong feelings about snitches. <laughs> of course he does. Mm. Joseph shrugs. He eats a brownie. It looks like some of the other stores are selling drinks. Little handmade crafts and other sweets. Oh, someone brought a soft serve ice cream machine. I gesture to it. How are we supposed to keep Kyla compete with that? Mm. Please, this isn't my first time to the rodeo, the bake sale radio. <laughs> Why did he have to correct himself on that? Was he very seriously trying to make it known that he's been to a normal rodeo too? Oh man, J Man is judging. No, he's not. We're not doing anything wrong. We're eating the br the brownies that literally we made for ourselves. This is fine. There's actually no rodeo here. It's just a bake sale. Oh, he's just a silly one. I think you and I can put together, can make one pretty convincing argument for these brownies, don't you? Um, 
sneak another brownie to ease your fear of public interaction? Oh, yeah. We high five. If you bake it, they will come. It's not long before we have our first customers. Hey. Joseph's so awkward. Yeah, Joseph had a moment there. <laughs> hey, dude. Hiya. Matt, Carmen Sita. Great to see you guys out here. Happy to support a good cause. As you know, as the owner and proprietor of the Coffee Spoon, an establishment that specializes in baked goods, I have to scope out the competition. Joseph leans close to me. This guy knows his stuff. Stay on your toes. So, what recipe did you use through these brownies? Don't say you used the box recipe. Don't say you used the box recipe. This is just how Nonna used to make. Let me tell you a story, Matt. The way they made brownies in the old country? Yeah. That was all thanks to Grandma Bink. Oh. You may have also known her as referred to her other name, Sweeney Todd. Travelers from far and wide would make the pilgrimage to her sleepy little town simply to be amazed by her masterful use of chocolate. All that knowledge, all that experience, it was passed on to me. Hey. <laughs> sure. He doesn't believe me whatsoever. This is fine. <sighs> we got to go for Matt at some point too. Nah, this is going to be our final day playing this game. We're just going to finish the Joseph route after this and then we're done. Not Sweetie Todd. Yes, Sweetie Todd. That's the only kind of bakery I want to open. <laughs> Joseph leans over again to me. Oh, oh, fuck. He's actually religious. I thought it was just a... I thought it was just, you know, a, a thing he did for a job. Lying is literally one of the ten things we try not to do. All right, all right. We'll take two. So I have to try and sell these brownies without lying? Fuck you, Joseph. They're terrible. We made them with a box recipe. With box ingredients. It's shit. Oh, man. He's actually religious. I know, right? Restart, I guess. Nah, we'll probably still get an A. We'll be fine. Actually, we'll take three. I ring them up and high-five Joseph as our hosti happy customers walk away. See? Not so hard. Not so hard when I lie about it, bitch. They were only going to buy two until I lied. How dare. He's shaming me for being myself. Yeah, I'm not half off the good feelings from the last sale. Who's next? We sell brownies to a bunch of people I don't recognize, but who clearly know Joseph. Eventually, another familiar face pops up. Alan. It's Brian. <laughs> oh, you're close enough. <laughs> Did he not get my name right? I didn't even realize that at first. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's called being funny. Get with the program. Exactly. Thank you. He just needs to understand this is how we do things. Don't tell me he's celibate too. But his children all look just like him. So oh, that's impressive. Can we interest you two in any of our fine sweets and treats? Oh. You sure can. I bet I could eat 10 brownies. Must. Resist. Urge to be competitive. I bet I could eat 11 brownies. No, let the man buy his brownies. So we'll put you down for 10? <laughs> <laughs> Better make it just two. One for me and one for Daisy. Hmm. Shit. I said I could eat 11. I bet he would have bought 11. Or 12. Fuck. Coming right up. You excited for youth group movie night, Daisy? Yeah. What's the movie? It's a surprise. Joseph leans over to me. It's the Fast and the Furious. Wait, really? For the kids? If you think about it, there's some heavy religious undertones. I mean, it is all about family. Dom do always be wearing a giant cross. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Okay. Joseph hands a baggie to Daisy. I made sure to give you guys the edges. Clearly the superior part of the brownie topography. Thanks, Joseph. Our two customers walk off with their purchases. Joseph and I survey our stock. Do you guys like the edges of brownies? Baked goods in general? I feel that those get, like, baked the worst. I feel like those take most of the heat. Yeah, exactly. Fight me center brownies better. I prefer the center... I prefer them when they're more, like, moist. I know moist isn't a word that people like much, but still. 
I prefer the ones that are less cooked and more like evenly baked. That's my prefer. I like the crunch. Yeah, I guess that's it. People who like the crunch prefer the edges. Who like it a bit like better done, a bit drier, a bit more crunchy. They get crunchy though. See, I don't like crunchy things too much. There are some things that I like crunchy, but yeah, in general, I prefer like a... Like I prefer soft cookies as well. I don't like crunchy cookies. I prefer the cookies where you... Yeah, you just bite into them and they're just soft. I love that shit. These are selling pretty hot. At this rate, we'll have enough money to pay for a new paint job on the church pews in no time. And what happened to the pews? <laughs> and it spray painted his wrapper alias onto them. Young Steinbeck. <laughs> Young Steinbeck. That's fucking great, man. I would have gone for Young Man in the Sea, but I can respect that's actually a good reference too. Speaking in ministerial terms, Ernest is hard to reach. Speaking in colloquial terms. Okay, yeah. In father terms. Ernest is kind of a turd. I was going to make a joke, but he went there for me. Let's go. Being a cool youth minister seems like a lot of work. It is, but, but it's worth it. Although, sometimes I wish. Never mind. Oh, what do you wish? It's kind of silly, but... You ever wish you could just drop everything and go a lounge round on a beach somewhere in the tropics? Drink fruity blended beverages? Fall asleep on a havoc? You know, basically live out a Jimmy Buffett song. <laughs> of course he likes Jimmy Buffett. Joseph, I think about this every single day of my life. My dream is to live in Margaritaville. Oh. One day, my friend. One day we'll be on island time. <laughs> Who doesn't wish that? Who doesn't wish they could just drop? That's literally called a holiday. That's what people do when they actually have the time to do it, man. Uh, he read you loud and clear. Yeah, he gets it. <laughs> Guess he doesn't like the stickiness of the mochi. I hate mochi, yeah. It's too chewy. It takes forever. Um, yeah. Mochi, meh. We make a couple more sales to some more church patrons. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Off in the distance, I spot my old buddy Craig. Oh. Craig! Hey. He's gonna be a hard sell. Craig's a fitness man. I think he comes to these bake sales to test himself. See if he has the resolve to refuse processed sugar. What if I lie to him again and tell him that they don't have any sugar in them? <laughs> I get that, a texture thing. Yeah, like I don't like taffy either. But she is good, but in small quality. <laughs> the person who said like, wait, wait, wait. This does hurt me personally, Fuchan. Why? It means the world has more mochi. I do not eat the mochi. Everybody else could eat the mochi. That's good. It means you guys get all the mochi. <laughs> This is a good thing. Are you sure you're ready for this? We go way back. I got this. Craig jogs up to join our table with Briar and Hazel in tow. We're each finishing an ice cream cone, so it's unlikely we're going to sell them on brownies, too. Probably won't be able to sell one to the baby. She's impossible to read. It all comes down to Craig. I could sell one to the baby. You, look at me. Gaga. Goo goo. Brownie good. See? She's smiling. She likes it. Give it to the baby, Craig. You fucking almost shook her up by jogging with her on your chest the other day. <laughs> Craig is cute. Everybody likes Craig. Everybody else did the Craig. <laughs> hey, bros. Hi, Uncle Joseph. I'm Amanda's dad. Oh. God, they're so cute. Would you be interested in one of our delicious homemade brownies? Hmm. I don't know. Can't spell diet without die. <laughs> Tempt him? That's another one of the seven deadly sins. Let's let us let us use our history. Let's use nostalgia. Maybe not in front of his kids. This may be a college story that we don't want to... Uh, let's go with it anyway. Hey, Craig. When we were freshmen, remember how our next door neighbors pranked us by switching out our laundry detergent with dish soap? How the washing machine exploded with suds? Oh my god. Then we decided to get back at them by baking brownies for them, but sprinkling high intensity. Why is this your story to try and get him to eat brownies? Oh my god. Oh. Ah, I felt bad, but we had to clean up the laundry room ourselves. Anyway, these brownies are like that, but without the hot sauce. Maybe you should get one more for old time's sake. Oh. Craig thinks for a second. Well, the girls just want a game. You know what? 
We'll take one for each of us. <gasps> that's three brownies. Even River? Mm. I'll eat hers. Oh, that's four of them. Oh, yo, we're so good. Yo, we made him horny because we sold brownies. <gasps> that's how we get him. He is tempted by money. The possessions. I will tempt him with physical goods and then the side pussy. This is how we win. You got yourself a deal. The day winds down and we're pretty much out of items to sell. Everyone starts packing up. Christy eventually comes back and immediately falls asleep in Joseph's folding chair. Oh, she's one of those kids. Full energy and then immediately down and out. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, Apple Spider. You get it. You start with the brownies and then you move on to the cake. It's the only way we do this. This has got to be Mary, right? Coming along to ruin the day. <laughs> Here we go. Box to mix, huh? Yeah. Mary saunters up to us. It looks like she'd rather be anywhere else than here. Hmm. Oh, hi, honey. Yep, they're selling like hotcakes, which is... Actually, they're just brownies. Cute. Oh. And boring. And safe. Um, hey, Mary. The passive aggressiveness... Holy shit. Mary's eyes dart over to me. What's the rookie doing here? I was just hoping to introduce Alan to the rest of the community. Uh-huh. Get a load of this freak show? Fuck, dude, she's so harsh. She's way different in this route. The sad thing is we've already done two parts of this route. Of her route. Of, well, yeah. Of, like, we've done so many things with her. We've hung out with her and Damien. We've hung out with her and what's his face? Um, yeah, yeah, Richard. Yeah, Richard. Why is she like Robert even? But why is she like this? Huh? Weird folk is all holier than thou types. Mm. Don't you think, Alan? <laughs> Mary. Uh. Let the kid answer the question. Ah. Uh, they seem nice. Shove a brownie in your mouth so you can't talk. <laughs> you know what? No! Why? Why does everything I do not work? That's fine. <laughs> I grab the closest brownie and shove it in my mouth and then quick point to my mouth as a universal sign for can't talk, mouth is full. Quick thinking, Alan. This one's a keeper, huh? Mary, can we talk about this later? Am I embarrassing you in front of your new friend? Joseph doesn't respond, trying his hardest to keep his cool. Hmm. Can we please talk about this later? Oh. I might actually have to rewind this one. <laughs> this might be like a C rank. Sure thing, honey bear. Ah. Mary turns her attention to me. Hand over the cash. Uh? Hmm. Jesus, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm in charge of the funds here. Hand over the cash we made. Feels like a hefty wad, if I may say so myself. Mm. Thanks. Mm. Now give me your wallet. <laughs> what? Hey. Give me your wallet. You think this church is gonna fix itself? Uh. Mary. <laughs> uh. God damn. She was really just gonna be like, yo, donation time, bitch. She's funny. Yeah, no, that was actually pretty good. Considering we started with the whole like, are you robbing me? Kind of feeling. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sorry, I'll work on the whole pretending to be happy thing. Jesus, dude. Mary leans in and whispers to me. Mm. He's really good at it. Oh my god, she's so fucked up. Mary walks off without saying goodbye. Yeesh. Yeesh indeed. Um, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, are you okay? She really likes pushing your buttons, huh? Yeah. Joseph shrugs. Uh. No marriage is perfect. Mm. You ready to head out? Joseph and I load the folding tables back into my car. Christy nods off the moment Joseph straps her into the car seat. Oh. I drop Joseph in front of his house. A small yawn sneaks out of me. Looks like I tuck... Oop. Looks like I tuckered you out, huh? I'm a sleepy dad. I think I might finally be crashing from all the sugar. Ooh. Hmm. I will keep you up then. Yeah. Thanks for helping out today. Happy to do it. 
Who's so happy to eat brownies? Well, next time I promise we'll do something a bit more exciting. A bit less free labor, and... I'm very sorry about the whole thing with Mary. You shouldn't have had to see that. It's fine, really. I know, but hang out... But first hang out domestic problems aren't a good look. You barely know me. Let me make it up to you next time. It won't be Margaritaville, but we'll do something fun. I promise. I smile. Yeah, it'd be better than the whole, like, Mary tormenting us thing. That's fine, though. Are they divorced? I don't know yet. Be interested to find out where they're going with this. Her whole, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'll get better at the pretending to be happy thing. He's really good at it. God damn. I'd like that. Oh, and one last thing. Joseph tosses a cling wrapped brownie through the window. It hits me in the face, but I'm able to catch it. It's the last one. You earned it. Joseph, please don't leave me alone with this brownie. Nope, too late. I'm already walking away. But, <laughs> bye. I already ate like six of them. I shoved one in my mouth just to run away from your wife. And it made you angry. That shit sucked. Joseph walks up to his home. He waves at me before carrying Christy inside. Well, looks like it's just you and me, Brownie. Save the Brownie for later. I pocket the Brownie. This might come in handy down the road. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I figured we're going to give it to Amanda immediately. <laughs> I step inside to find Amanda doing homework on the couch. Huh? Hey, father unit. I child that I'm required by law to care for. <laughs> How's homework? It's really fun and educational. Really? How long have you known me for? Right. How was the bake sale? Good. I think I really could have made a good life for myself as a brownie salesman. But he doesn't like me lying, so... I don't think I'd be a good salesman. We could stuff it in our mouth later in another awkward moment. That'd actually be really funny. Oh my god. Glad to hear it. So... So what? Mm -hmm. Were there any extra brownies? Or did you maybe sneak one? Or... I think for a moment, I realized that I still have the brownie that Joseph gave me. This would probably do better in someone else's stomach than mine. Heads up! Hey. Wait. I hurl the brownie towards Amanda. It hits the wall behind her and falls on the ground. Nice throw. Oh, what a waste of a brownie and she's going for it. I love that this family is all about eating off of the floor. <laughs> that just... She scoops it up and smiles at me. Thanks, pops. Yeah. Hey, if you're not going to bed any time soon, would you be game for some real shark hunters of Orange County? <laughs> they, I love how many shows they just uh, can blind into this. I thought the last hunter got eaten by a shark. Uh -huh. He did. I sit down next to her and cozy up with a blanket. Awesome. <laughs> So they're just immediately going into a different shark hunter, I guess. What is this? Rank C? Wow, real baby boomer hours. Food channel, youth, dad joke, Mary baking. We still got a rank A? Eh? This game is too nice. So we don't have to reload. We, we, we literally only got one thing good. Two things bad. That's a failing grade. What the fuck? Does it only do A ranks and S ranks? I'm good with it. <laughs> this this works for me. I don't have to reload. Welcome. You've got dads. I've got dads, but do I have a oh yeah, we've got another one. God, you get a lot of submissions. Hey dude, I've got the runs. Oh, I've got just the thing. I head to the store and grab you a real chunky milkshake, cherry licorice, a bunch of word jumbles that I find helpful in strenuous <laughs> strenuous times such as these. Well that yeah, he means he's going for a run, bro. <laughs> Wouldn't that make it worse? Oh, it's not for the diarrhea. Milkshakes are just comforting. Wait, why are we talking about this? By I've got the runs, I meant that I feel like running. Want to come with me to the gym? Why do I feel less excited about that than getting you your home remedies for diarrhea? Come on, man. It'll be fun. You know what? Sure. Why? When are we doing this? There's 30 more minutes left in this meat hell marathon. I'm outside right now. I'm warming up. Okay, okay. Please let me see if Betty gets away from the wolves in time to get the Suprasata wrapped cheesecake out of the oven. What are these shows? They sound amazing. Also, I'm not going to the gym with Craig. 
We have ignored Craig multiple times when he tries to make us exercise. We skip this. We see what is the next submission. <laughs> I don't care about Craig's roots. We continue with Joseph. How dare. I will not be dragged to the gym. Kicking and screaming ever. It's been a long day of clipping coupons. It's like there's a sale on box brownie mix. Hmm. That reminds me. I wonder what Joseph's up to. I should see if he wants to hang out. Or if he wants to go to the school with me and use these coupons. Looks like he's online. But he's your college bro. Sometimes you grow away from bros. It just happens. It's part of life. That's why his knees are so weak. Yeah, I've been skipping leg day for 10 years now. <laughs> hey, Joseph. Want to hang? Takes a moment for Joseph to respond. Alan. Hope you finally recovered from your brownie-induced coma. I know I promised you a fun hang, but tonight I'm actually chaperoning a youth group mixer. Amanda's invited, of course. If you're not doing anything, you should come. 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 Oh, that sounds nice. And be a chaperone with me, because I need the help. Less nice. I think for a moment. I'm a little bummed out. I suppose I just wanted some me and Joseph time. Maybe to get to know him a little better. Oh, what the heck. My friend needs my help. I type back. Buddy, if you need me, you got me. Just tell me where I need to be tonight. Joseph, let me know the details. It starts pretty soon. I should get ready. <laughs> you caught home wreck in front of your child? Just watch me. And yeah, I thought that was a pretty funny... Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. Are we anti-Craig? Yes, we are anti-Craig. Craig is bro. I refuse to give him the daddy treatment. He is bro. <laughs> I knock on Amanda's door and peek in. Hey, Amanda. I'm about to head out. Where are you off to? You gonna go extreme couponing? Mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna go chaperone this youth mixer dance thing that's happening at Joseph's church. He says you're invited, but if you don't want to come, I'll cover for you. Hmm. You know what? I'm down. Maybe I can make some new friends. That's a good attitude. Especially since Emma R and Emma P saw. I'll have you know that I'm mostly doing this for the potential of free food. That's my girl. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. You get four daughter points today. <laughs> Let's go. Huh? I trade them for a daughter lava lamp. You've got a lava lamp. I literally see it. Sorry. You only have enough for a daughter spider ring. Some of those daughter plastic jumpy frogs. I like those things. I like those things too. God, I haven't seen one of those for forever. Those things where they look like a frog, but they have the little line down the middle of them. You press it and it makes them hop forward. That shit's great. God. This is hitting me with nostalgia. <laughs> and try their hardest. It's inspirational. Hmm. True. We arrive at the church to find that nobody's there. There are decorations and balloons and banners and everything, but no youths. Hmm. No. What the fuck? Wait, Jesus is coming? <laughs> oh no. Did they do this to bully Joseph? Did they pretend that they were going to like do a uh, youth minister thingy thing and then just nobody showed up they left that sign there and just left that's fucked up mm. i've been to a couple dances in my life and not that i want to paint myself as some sort of dance expert but generally dances require people <laughs> unless people need to be dancing all of a sudden joseph jogs up to us he looks frazzled yeah. you're here i need your help Joseph gestures to the hand-painted banner hanging above the church door. It reads, Jesus is coming. <laughs> Yikes. Ah. Well, that's certainly a thing. <laughs> God made all things, Amanda. <laughs> Except for the banner. Ernest made that. Why is it always Ernest? Someone needs a problem. I, I genuinely can't tell if he meant that maliciously or if he just can't spell good. <laughs> You know what God also does? Forgives. <laughs> he forgives teenagers, and he never, ever breaks their box mods. Mm. Are you going to break Ernest's box mod? Huh. No, Amanda. That would be a sin. Oh. 
I think it's the one right after Sloth. Alan, I need your help getting this down before anyone sees it. And then I need your help breaking a box mod. Because I can't do it. <laughs> but I can damn well teach you to. Wrath? Yeah, that's definitely Wrath. <laughs> I can swing that. Amanda, can you help? Physical labor, huh? Hmm. Amanda begins rapidly scanning the mostly empty room, looking for an escape route of her own. I have to go set up the food. The food's already set up. I'm going to do a final inspection pass on the food. To make sure it's up to code. <laughs> Fair. Good for you, kid. I'm going to eat your food. Amanda's able to bolt away before myself or Joseph can get another word in. At least she was honest in the end. <laughs> Did he just tell Amanda to break it, though? Don't worry about it. Maybe. <laughs> if it gets broken, something happens. Don't worry about it. Phew. Phew. She can really book it when she wants to. Her father was a giant pair of legs. <laughs> I dated some giant arms once, but it turned out they were all right. <laughs> no, no, that's a terrible dad joke. I hate you. How many arms was it? Wait. At first, I thought there was two arms, but they were all right. That's that's multiple, multiple arms. That's a, it's basically a tentacle monster. You must have been devastated. Oh. It was Armageddon. <laughs> okay, that's even better. No, it's, I, I get it. I'll workshop it. There's a gem in there somewhere. Hey. I liked Armageddon. Armageddon was great. Man, how are they going to be hating on the good dad jokes? <laughs> I'm really glad you're here, Alan. You enjoying my company or did you just lure me out here for my strong arms and height advantage? A little of both. It's always something with you, Joseph. Nice. Something handsome and pious. Yo, the wink. You know that pious. Oh, <gasps> Alan with the flirting too. Damn. Yeah. Debatable. You just alluded to Blake breaking a child's vape pen. That's what a box mod was. I had no fucking clue. <laughs> For some reason, I was imagining like a... I don't know. Whatever those stupid like waveboard things were where you stood on them and you had to like tilt your feet forward to go forward. I don't know. I would have lost the debate. You ready to do this? Let's make some magic happen. <laughs> magic isn't real, Alan. God said that. God was also a bush one time. <laughs> Yo, did I just argue about the existence of God with a minister? Let's fucking go. Hoverboards? Sure. I thought it was like an Xbox. I thought it was a game console. See, at least we're all on like a similar page of being like, I don't know, something. <laughs> True. Joseph and I grab a stepladder and walk over to Ernest's ladder. A turd Ernest had one final trick up his sleeve. It's like this nightmare is stapled and taped six ways from Sunday. Any ideas? Oh, Kurt Douglas. Why does he say random names when he screams? Oh, Kurt Douglas. <laughs> it's fucking great, man. What happened to your strong arms and height advantage? All right. I forgot about those. But I realized my oversized dad fingers are far too large to get leverage on the tiny staples. You got a hammer I can use to pry these off? <laughs> Alan, this is a church. We get a little nervous around hammers and nails. Oh, that took me a moment. I was like, why? Jesus was a carpenter. Oh, the crucifixion thing. <laughs> he got yaoi hands? You know he should. Yeah. I'm kidding. We just don't have a hammer. Yeah. But we have to hurry. The use will be here any moment, and I'll never hear the end of it if we don't fix this. He nailed that joke. <laughs> See, Tasty Medley's is getting into it. For them fingers to work, man. I just ain't got the skills, man. I'm all about the size. I don't have the motion of the ocean. I only have the size of the boat. Wait. I have an idea. I run to grab the marker that Ernest used to draw this thing and jump back on the ladder. We can't get it down, but we can send a different messages. Jesus is coming. Jesus is car. Kerming. Alming. Coming. Just change the U into an O. And it's fine. Yeah. I only got one shot here. Let's do this right. Jesus is cumin. Jesus isn't coming. <laughs> Jesus is calming. Oh. 
Why wouldn't we just go with coming? C O M I N G. Okay. Um. I like Jesus isn't coming is fucking hilarious to be fair, but I'd rather not lose more points. We already got one A rank that was super low. Jesus is calming. That looks horrible. <laughs> I'm able to turn the U into an A and an L somehow. It's a little tight, but it works. There we go. We made him horny. We made him horny for the calming Jesus. <sighs> I'm not sure if I'm okay with this route yet. We'll see. <laughs> well, that's true, I guess. Bask in his calming presence, Joseph. Relax. Crisis averted. Let's just hope the youths don't notice. Joseph checks his watch. Hmm. The DJ should be here by now. Just then. No, not you again! The doors swing open and a man struts on with his DJing equipment. Wait, you're not the usual guy. What happened to Evan? Evan knew exactly when to play the Cupid Shuffle. Hey! Hey! I'm not Evan. Evan sold all of his DJ equipment to backpack through Europe. So I'm filling in for him. I do envy him, though. What I wouldn't give to drop everything and start over. Ah! <laughs> Are you... All right? Sad Master Quinn. <laughs> Sad Master Quinn. That's so fucking funny. You know, he's Spin Master Quinn. Oh, my God. This dude is doing an interesting life. Why can't we date him? I'd be interested to know his life story, honestly. All right. I'm better than all right. I'm DJ Spin Master Quinn. He sighs heavily. <laughs> I usually do trivia nights, but I moonlight on the ones and twos to give myself a sense of purpose in life. Oh my fucking God. Is he okay? Well, you'll have to do. You have a playlist of fun songs that youth will like that won't inspire impure thoughts attempting the dark side, right? <laughs> Bam bang. The DJ thinks for a moment. Believe me. Uh, believe me, buddy. I got what you need. Hey. Okay, great. I'll let you get set up. The DJ leaves. <laughs> he almost threw up right there. <laughs> Let's keep an eye on this one. He sounded like he was just going to play Creep by Radiohead on a print. <laughs> nah, surely. He'd play WAP. He'd play WAP for all the kids to enjoy. That's... That's gonna be great. After some time, kids from the community start filing into the dance hall. Some of them seem to notice our sign hack, but they don't seem to care. Most of the kids group off into tiny clusters, standing in circles and casting sideways glances at the other groups of king. Teens, good god. Man, I do not miss being a teenager at social functions. Hey, hey, party people! Everyone in the room turns their attention to the DJ. DJ Spin, DJ Spin Master Quinn coming at you with that sound that people want. We're off to a good start, I guess. That's the good stuff. This next tune goes out to all the ladies in the audience. Ladies, let me hear you say, yeah, bro. They are literally fucking children. Wap, worship and pray. Wap, we are pious. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You guys are right. <laughs> a few half-hearted, yes, echo through the crowd. All right. He sighs again. I, um, man, it's been a heavy couple of days. This next one's actually just for my wife, Sandra. I hope we can think, work things out. My little honeysuckle vine. Now, who wants to listen to Radiohead's Creep? <laughs> Played creep by Radiohead. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> the DJ's having a crisis. Yeah, he is. The DJ is not having a good time. He's trauma dumping the fucking kids at his job. This is probably one of the few jobs he's gotten recently. Oh my god. The DJ begins playing creep by Radiohead. Uh, Amanda said it was up to me. Pizza in one hand and punch in the other. Creeper, no choice for a youth group. Let's see where he goes with this. <laughs> After the song finishes, he plays creep again. <laughs> Is the DJ crying? <laughs> if you watch the kids really closely, you can catch them cringe every time Thom York swears. <laughs> oh, 
There they go. Maybe we should do something about this. Yeah, maybe we should be the DJ. <laughs> Joseph runs up to us. He's killing the vibe. They're listening to swears. Sad swears. We have to do something. You guys should try to give him a pep talk. Maybe work him up to everybody hurts by Rem. Or at least no rain by Blind Melon. You want to help us cheer him up? Uh, actually, I just saw my friend, um... Fred! Frederick! Frederico! Frederico? He's from Latin. <laughs> I didn't know you were taking a Latin gloss. I'm not. So, he's from the country Latin. Dad. Yes, it exists. Don't Google it. <laughs> uh, that's the joke I thought she was making at first. I thought she was going to be like, He's from Latin! Not America. Latin, um, I don't. France? Latin France. <laughs> and she's gone. Joseph and I make our way to the DJ booth where Spinmaster Quinn is having a quiet cry. <laughs> hey, bud. Hey. hey, my dudes. How's the party jamming? It's, uh, not. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry, fellas. It's taking a moment to find my groove. Gotta play the sad tunes to properly appreciate the bangers, am I right? Shut up and play the hits. Play the booty bumpers. It's what Jesus would have wanted. Um, just play. Oh, God. I don't know what to do with this dude. He hates, like, he'd hate this so much. This might be a bit mean and aggressive for him. So I guess we just tell him how to do his job. We mansplain. Now stop me if I'm out of line here since I've never been a DJ and don't have any current plans to become one. But I don't think that's how it works. Kids came out here to have a good time. You got to cool it on the sadness. Okay. Okay. Being respectful and polite and caring about kids is what made him horny. We got the eggplants. I'm a little bit concerned about that. But apparently, the, my only option to get this dude into bed is to pretend to be a good person. This is fine. I... I can do this. I can do this. Hey, buddy. If it's problems you're having with... Joseph leans in close to me. What was his wife's name again? Sandra? Hey, I remember things. If you're having problems with Sandra, I can help you too. I do counseling. It's my job here, and I'm very good at it. Hey. Oh, I don't know. Huh? I can tell that you're hurting. Nobody voluntarily listens to that much radio head on repeat. <laughs> Unless they're going through really tough times. Trust me, I know. Lords of Arabia. Joseph places a hand on Spin Master Quinn's shoulder, who immediately collapses into Joseph's embrace, crying quietly. Oh, oh fuck, he's good at his job. There, there, bud. It's going to be okay. Why do I feel like this root is physically hurting you? My hurt. I'm surviving it. Don't worry about it. As the DJ said, my feelings hurt. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, put on some dance hall anthems. Mm. You're the best, Spin Master Quinn. With yet another crisis averted, Joseph and I return to the dance floor where Amanda's waiting with an ice cream cone. <laughs> they have ice cream here. Good work, Amanda. How's it looking out there? Well, for a dance, there's not a whole lot of dancing. It's like people are starting to bail, though. Well, this is a disaster. Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself. This ice cream, top notch. Mm. I'm sorry for dragging you into this island. You and Amanda should just go home. I'm not going to make you stay here for the train wreck. It's not a disaster. We can still fix this. We can... I suddenly realize what we have to do. Amanda, get out of here. I don't think you're gonna to wanna to be here for this. Or be seen with me after this. Whoa. Oh God, you're not going to. I throw my car keys to Amanda. I'll get a ride back with Joseph. Just remember me as I am right now. Not what I'm about to become. Am I gonna dance or am I gonna sing? Cause either way, yeah, get out of there child. Mm. Amanda nods. <gasps> nice knowing you, Pops. She runs out the door. Lord's Joseph, I'm going to turn it up on the dance floor. 
Good luck we can get these Jews into it as well. That's not going to work. That's going to scare every child away. <laughs> Are you in or out? Yeah. I'm going to dance with Joseph? Oh, okay. Joseph stares at me. He knows what has to be done as much as I do. See you on the other side. See you on the other side. Joseph and I walk onto the dance floor in the middle of the room. The yous all stare at us, unsure of what we're doing. You know it's going to be bad because I'm calling the children youths. <laughs> the youths, they're watching me. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. Time to get our groove on. Let's start them off easy and work our way up to the more technical stuff. Somebody literally said they're going to do the lawnmower. Roll the dice. Is that even a dance move? The lawnmower is a dance move. It's stupid, but it's a thing. The worm is not simple. That's not simple. I guess we'll start with the fucking lawnmower. Oh my god. All right. Let's rip start this baby. I start lawn mowing the dance floor. Huh. Joseph seems to respond to that and decides to mow another patch of grass on the dance floor. Oh. Well, that's the stuff. I look around. Well, it looks like we've got everyone's attention. All right, Alan, let's turn up the heat. Um, From the lawn mower to the sprinkler. I actually like the, ru the running man isn't too bad. That's like a 90s dance. I don't know what the shopping cart is. That sounds more like a sexual position. But yeah, I think we're going to do ones that are all based on dad ship. We're going to do lawnmower and then sprinkler. And then I don't know what the final dad one is, but this is going to be great. To the running man. <laughs> the things you do for the D. <laughs> hey, man, there's a thing called the wheelbarrow. <laughs> sprinkler. I pull out the classic. Hand behind head. Point a finger out. I point out and make direct eye contact with several of the youths in the room. Oh, this is actually physically painful. I am taking psychic damage from how cringe this shit is. Oh my god. I think that makes them feel uncomfortable. But I push past it. Oh. Joseph understands. We must water the lawn. We just came off of the end of an imaginary drought and the grass is dying. Don't worry. Imaginary grass. We've got you. I look around to the youths. They're getting into it. <laughs> nice work. We better pick it up or they'll lose interest quick. Cabbage patch, the windmill, hammer slide. I don't know any of these. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I guess hammer slide? Chat, what should I do? Chat, save me. I don't know any of these. <laughs> that hurt my soul, as it should. Hammer slide sounds good. Hammer slide does sound pretty badass. Not the cabbage patch, windmill? Windmill is just waving around your arms. Ah. Oh. Harvest oh, the cabbages, the cabbage patch. Okay, I'm seeing more cabbage patch than hammer slide. Okay. <laughs> you can never go wrong with a cabbage patch. Joseph follows my lead. We both take our arms and move them around in a circle, as I assume you would do in a cabbage patch. I look around to the ewes. I think they like agriculture. They're not looking too lively yet, but we can still turn it around. Moonwalk, butter churn, attempt... <laughs> Everyone in chat is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Moonwalk would probably get them in. Fuck it! Twerking is still a thing kids do, right? I gyrate my butt. Oh, this feels bad. This is really rough on my lower back. Several of their kids have their heads in their hands. One kid is filming me with his phone. My career in politics is over. All right. Maybe twerking wasn't the best choice. <laughs> he didn't even tell me off for it. I just twerked in front of a bunch of kids. <laughs> All right. Time for the big finish. Attempt an unrehearsed backflip. Lift jump. <gasps> death drop? Yo. Everybody loves death drops. That's like Uki and Enna's favorite thing. They literally share death drop videos with each other. <laughs> this one's fucking funny, though. Is death drop? Yeah, I'll go with death drops. I, I feel like Uki and Edda are hip with the kids, unlike me. <laughs> this will be fine. <laughs> this is going to really hurt my back. 
I've seen enough internet videos of this move where I really think I could nail it. <laughs> You're not going to nail it. On the beat drop, I kick my leg up and dramatically fall to the floor, my back landing on the ground with a shablam. All of the kids immediately start screaming, they know what's up, but at what cost? I will feel this for weeks to come. My chiropractor is going to be pissed. What was that? The future of dance. <laughs> There's nothing in the text box. I look around the room to see if we convinced any of the youths to come dance. No. Nothing. Just a bunch of kids staring at us. I guess we didn't capture their hearts with the magic of dance. One of the kids yawns. Damn it, man. It was the twerking. Everything else was good. They liked the death drop. They liked everything before that. The twerking, fairly enough, scared them away. That's okay. That's okay. Well, we gave it our best shot. Yeah. I'm going to have to organize some sort of game so they don't start making out with each other. Thanks for coming, Alan, but I should take it from here. Did I actually fail this day? Is he kicking me out? He kicked me out! Holy fuck! We have never failed that hard before. 384 dad points? That's not even in the... I think we're gonna have to reload that one. I think we're gonna reload that one. <laughs> this is fine. How do I... Yeah, oh, that's just... Drop back to about here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Speed run! It'll stop when we get to a question, right? I mean, it kind of has to. Oh, there we go. Um, Jesus is calming. You guys want to see what happens if we do Jesus isn't coming? I mean, I kind of want to know. <laughs> While we're here, Jesus isn't coming. I quickly scribble my addition to the banner with some creative uses of space. Ta-da! Now he isn't coming. That doesn't really take care of the sexy connotation. Mm, I guess I should have thought this out more. You really could have just turned that U into an O. That wasn't an option, Joseph. Believe me, I thought the same thing, Joseph. The Jesus isn't coming? That's so much worse. I take the marker and fill in the U. Is that better? <laughs> Jesus isn't coming? <laughs> um, you guys didn't see shit. <laughs> you guys didn't see shit. <laughs> Let's do this right. Jesus is calming. There you go. He liked it. He eggplanted it. It was a great time for all. Oh my god, these voices are scary. That's not how DJing works. There we go. Eggplants, Sandra. Eggplants. So many eggplants! Let's go! Okay. This is where we save. Okay. Okay. Start with the lawnmower. They liked it when we started with dad stuff. We did the sprinkler. They liked it. They got some people interested. And we did the cabbage patch. They were fine with that. Um, let's try moonwalk. I start sliding my feet backwards. Can't tell if this looks good or not. I think these kids have seen enough people doing moonwalks that they understand the general concept. Joseph makes a moonwalk attempt as well. Surprisingly, dude pulls it off flawlessly. I look around to the youths. They're cheering. Twerking really did ruin everything. <laughs> All right, time for the big finish. I'm going to be honest. I think we're doing this more for Joseph than for anyone else. So I think we just have to do classic shit. Death drop, it, it helps the kids. But what we need is dirty dancing. Let's fucking go. I approach Joseph and motion that I'm about to lift him up. Are, are you strong enough to do that? I don't know. Without regard for human safety, I summon all of my might and lift Joseph above my head. It isn't quite dirty dancing, but Joseph is a good sport and spreads his arms while I spin him in a circle. I look at the crowd. They seem to love it. The 
kids swarm the dance floor. They're all laughing and dancing to the music. Looks like our job here is done. Somewhat obligingly, the kids take their dance floor and start to move around. All along, they're starting to laugh and enjoy themselves. It was dicey. But we've done our jobs. <laughs> yeah. Come on. The rest of the chaperones will take it from here. What? Oh. I have something to show you. <gasps> we did get the fucking eggplants. Let's go. Am I going to join the cult now? This feels like a cult moment. Joseph leaves me out of the main room and down various darkened corridors of the church. I can barely see anything and find myself tripping over my own feet. Joseph? I think I lost you. His hand finds mine in the darkness. I'm right here. I'm glad he can't see me blush. We keep walking. Oh shit, isn't this actually pretty fucking cute? Where are we? This church is huge. We're almost there. I actually have to admit, I was a little dishonest with you. I didn't just invite you out here to help me chaperone. What happened to lying being one of the ten things you're not supposed to do? Yeah, you got me in trouble for this. I think there's an exception for when you're trying to surprise a friend. Joseph closes a door behind us. I guess we're in a random room in the depths of the church now. What could he possibly have planned? Human sacrifice? So, last time we talked about escaping to an island where we could live out an easy tropical lifestyle where our only worry is trying to find that lost shaker of salt. Since we can't actually do that, I figured I could bring a little bit of the tropics to Maple Bay. It's not quite Margaritaville, but something like it. Joseph throws on the lights. He made us a man cave. Aww. This is cute. Margarita zone. Yo. Welcome to the Margarita zone. I look around as my eyes adjust to the light. It's his office, but... There are twinkle lights thrown across the walls. Little garlands of fake flowers. And two beach chairs set up in front of the desk. There's a blender and two glasses sitting on the table. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Joseph, this is... This is amazing. Yeah. There are no pop tops to step on here, buddy. You did this for me? Joseph takes a seat and gestures for me to do the same. I did this for us. I think we both earned it. Holy shit, man. He's super into it. <laughs> I settle in while Joseph pours us both margaritas. You really went all out. I have a flair for the dramatic, and you can't lead the community if you don't know how to make a good margarita. That's a worrying statement. <laughs> I take a sip of mine. This is a killer margarita. I would follow this man. Yeah, I was going to say. It's brainwashing margarita. <laughs> Do you think the dance is going to go okay without our sick dance moves? No. Not here. You're missing the point of Margarita Zone. Margarita Zone is a place of rest and relaxation. It's a place where you can kick your feet up and forget about your worries for a while. Watch out for blown out flip soaps. Let's get tattoos of Mexican cuties. It's heaven on earth with an onion slice. Why an onion slice? None of these feel like a good idea. Um, sure. None of them were good options. Fuck you, game. I think that's cheeseburger in paradise. Oh, right. I'm just now realizing that I only know two Jimmy Buffett songs. I don't know any. I'm going to have to revoke your dad card for that one. Joseph gestures to the makeshift island bar he's made. You know, it's funny. This reminds me of so much when I was younger. I've been meaning to ask, what did you do before you started preaching? Sailor? <laughs> I feel like this time, the first time you played the date, he clearly had his planned out, but you, yeah. Danced so badly, he couldn't go through with it. Yeah, he gave up on me. He just said, get out. He wanted all the margaritas to himself for that night. He was just done with that shit. <laughs> it's uninteresting. I left home and got into a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? Trouble meant I got to go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I hitchhiked around the country, went on adventures, 
and all kinds of people. Did some stuff uh, I'm not too proud of. <laughs> God damn it. Everybody's saying no. <laughs> but I was young and in love, and I didn't have to answer to anybody. And now, I host fundraiser car washes and take the kids to soccer practice on the weekends. Oh. Sorry. I don't mean to get heavy here. It's okay. Yeah, he said lo young and in love. Does that mean he was following somewhere else? Hmm. Seems like you spend a lot of your time taking care of others. Not enough time taking care of yourself. You need to talk about it. I'm here for you. Joseph stares deeply into the blender filled with ice and margarita mix. It's just... I think about Margaritaville a lot. Or I guess the concept of it. A place where I could strum on my sixth string while I wait for the shrimp to boil, drink margaritas all the time, forget my worries. It's an easy life. I had Margaritaville once, but I think the closest I'm ever going to get back to it is Margarita Zone. A short and occasional reprieve from daily life. Damn, that's deep. So he's having the proper midlife crisis. He's stuck in a marriage he doesn't enjoy. He's got four kids to take care of. Everybody sees him as this perfect Christian dude. So he just has to kind of keep going. He wants to be a sailor. Not even so much a sailor. I think he just wants a boat and he just wants to head out. On the seas. Having a good time. Which he chose to have, by the way. Yay! Um, uh, maybe. I mean, he said young and in love. So maybe Mary was with him while they were like fucking around. Maybe they were together all around the world traveling together and then maybe she just got pregnant maybe it was an accident why so many kids i don't know man four well i mean the twins happened <laughs> six string is a guitar yeah you can't have three accidents but you can have a first accident that's normally when you get tied down and start getting serious but who knows we don't know his full story yet you may never know his full story the important thing is he feels trapped now but yeah, it's basically something he just has to deal with. You got to take care of your kids, man. I think he just also needs to get rid of Mary. <laughs> Him and Mary need to divorce so they can be good people separately. Rather than what they're doing right now, which is being bad together. Is that such a bad thing? This is pretty nice. Uh, yeah. It doesn't last forever. That's the rub. When you're in Margarita Zone, it's not like your problems have really gone away. You're just choosing to ignore them. And then you have more to deal with when you come back. Maybe you're looking at it the wrong way. Maybe Margarita Zone is actually better than Margaritaville, because Margaritaville itself is an impossible ideal. Remember what Spin Master Quinn said? Sometimes you have to play the sad students to appreciate the bangers. If stepping on a pop top is your biggest concern, how could you possibly appreciate the boiling shrimp? Hmm. Yo, we got him with that one. That's a good line, too. He's right. Can't all be Margaritaville. You'd get bored as shit if you were in Margaritaville all the time. Nothing to do there. And Margarita Zone isn't landlocked to this office. I think it's about finding the little pieces of Margarita Zone throughout your day and taking joy in those moments. <laughs> now he's being too optimistic. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. That's awfully optimistic of you. Doesn't have to be anything big. For me, I think it's being able to quietly do word jumbles and drink some strong coffee in the morning. See my daughter smile, or I smile at Joseph. I spend some quality time with a good friend. Ah, yeah, yeah. I can feel myself leaning closer to jo is Joseph. Is it just me, or is he leaning closer too? Joseph tenses up. He downs the rest of his margarita and hops up out of his chair. <sighs> Oh, we had a moment there, and that scared him. <laughs> it's getting late. We should head back. Sure. Joseph and I make sure the dance wraps up without incident before he takes me back to the cul-de-sac. I hop out of Joseph's car before he pulls his own down drive... Pulls into his own down driveway. What? Pulls into his own driveway. Thanks again for the help. Thanks again for Margarita's own. Hmm. Maybe we'll go back there one day. If we do, I'll be my, it'll be my own damn fault. <laughs> Joseph chuckles and drives away. Uh. Starting to feel like I need to learn Jimmy Buffett songs for some of these jokes to land. <laughs> they seem like good friends, the best of friends. Two good roommates, yeah. 
History will say so. We will know better. I walk into my living room to find Amanda curled up under a blanket and groaning, groaning on the couch. Hey, Panda, you feeling okay? Oh. Dad. You have a tummy ache. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Eat too much youth group food? Oh. I drank too deeply from the well of life and now I pay the price. Oh. By well of life, I mean that big lukewarm punch bowl of seltzer juice and sherbet. <laughs> Amanda slides to the floor with an elongated groan. God damn it. Need anything, kiddo? A time machine that goes back approximately two hours in the past so that I can warn myself of the folly of excess. Yeah, you'll learn that more as you get older, kiddo. I'm gonna pour you a glass, a glass of water. Love you, pops. How'd the dance go? Oh, I crushed it. Are the kids on the dance floor at the expense of my dignity. And I didn't twerk. If anybody says I did, they're a liar. <laughs> Fair trade. Also, everything hurts. I'll see you in the morning, kiddo. Night, Dad. I'm surprised I managed to actually hold Joseph up in the air. That's impressive. Yeah, hit me with a huge volume. Thank you so Wait. Much. I, I missed one question. I'm shocked that only got me an A. I thought that would have gotten me an S, man. The dancing was painful. But okay. It still only says dad points 384. <sighs> Whatever. I did my best. The cool stat, though? There was nothing cool about what we did this day. <laughs> Redo for an S? Hell no. A is fine. I would have even been fine with a B. No, I wouldn't be fine. B was literally what I restarted. <laughs> You're not cool? No, I'm not cool. I'm a dad. <laughs> Another dreary night. Another listless stroll through Maple Bay. I've really been bonding with the community at Jim and Kim's lately, so my strolls have been leading me there more and more often. Peter, the man from the bank. Heath from down the street. Evelyn, who I saw at the deli that one time. And guy whose name that I think is Carl are basically members of the family at this point. <laughs> In fact, I heard Neil, the surly bartender, mention that tonight is Keith from down the street's birthday. That he'd have to get that little baby a little cake for a special little day. What an insult. God damn. I think he was probably just being a dick. But I head into the bar anyway. The mere possibility of cake is a strong enough lord and up uh, strong enough to lure me in. I step inside just in time to see Neil washing a cake tray with like a crime yeah? Washing a cake tray with a crime scene outline of pink icing on it. Huh. I guess it really was Keith from down the street's birthday. And I missed it. Hi, Hungry, I'm Dad. Are you serious right now? There were multiple people said that. Mm. Better A than an L. True. We got a proper L last time. We didn't even like get to do the date. He just sent us home. I sit down and order a beer. As I sit down at the bar, I notice Mary from next door sitting at the corner of the room, drinking alone again. She must be having a rough day. She seems so weary and so sad. I've been doing this more and more often lately. A pang of guilt shoots through me. <laughs> Does she know? Is this because of me? Am I a homewrecker? Um, do I say hi? I mean, this is basically the same storyline as last time. Yeah, let's go. So let me save the game. This may actually be a very important moment. I'm going to go say hi, though. I decide to go say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. Is seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyway, and she finally notices me. Uh. You. Okay. This was maybe not the best idea. Hey. hey. Having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's great. I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you two. Mary, I'm not. Huh? I never accuse you of anything uncouth, Alan. I was having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. A supportive friendship. Ugh. You're a good friend, aren't you? I'm there when he needs me, Mary. Which is more than I can say about you, bitch. Oh, fuck! He actually went there! Oh, no. <laughs> 
Unlike some other people in his life. Uh. So you're an expert on my marriage now. Does a ticket expert see to a miserable? Not trying to be an expert on your marriage? Just trying to be there for my friend, okay? Oh, you're there for him. I see how you look at him. I bet you're there for him a lot. He takes a long sip of a drink. This was a mistake. You know, you're really not his type. I'm surprised. Mary pays her tab and strides right out of Jim and Kim's without looking back. Does that mean he has a type? Welcome. Does he do this You've got dads. more often? How often does he do this? And did I just fuck up the route? <laughs> uh, I might have just fucked up the route. <laughs> hey, dude, I've got... Oh, no, we've already dealt with that one. Hey, Alan, what are your feelings about poker? Beyond hardly knowing her. Oh, my God, no. Shoo, Yamino, what are you doing here? Poker? I hardly... Yeah. There it is. Well, good talk. Wait, I actually like poker. I just saw the joke and I had to take the shot. Please, man, I'm a dad. I'm contractually obligated. Oh, no, I get that. Anyway, we've been playing weekly poker games, and I figured I should send an invite your way. Nah, I'm good. I'm going to finish this route. This has been a long stream as it has been. <laughs> Let's finish the Joseph route, which may already be fucked up since we went over to see Mary. He may be like, you talked to my wife? How dare you? <laughs> sure, save and continue. This is fine. This is fine. I really want to see Joseph again. And after that weird encounter with Mary? I don't know. It's my friend, right? I should be able to hang out with him and it not be weird, right? Right? The computer pings as a message flies into my inbox. It's Joseph. Hi, Alan. We should hang out. I can actually hang out. No manual labor. No impromptu therapy sessions with sad DJs. No kids. Just you, me, and the open ocean. Are we actually going to run away together? Because that might be a mistake. <laughs> I want to play poker. I love poker. Too bad, chat. You can buy the game right now on Steam.com. It's also available on some consoles. <laughs> We're going to sail away, buddy. Or possibly be murdered. I don't know. This may be from Mary herself. She may be leading me into an ambush. <laughs> Wait, how are we going to get there on the open ocean? <laughs> Fair enough. How are we going to get on the open ocean, you might ask? Good question. Oh, prescient. If you're interested, I'll meet you down by the marina, and you can check out the goods. If you know what I mean. I mean my yacht. Let me know. Of course he means the yacht. Mm-hmm. Joseph owns a yacht? I'm as surprised as you are. Well, so why were you reading over my shoulder? <laughs> oh. You've been holding out on me, your only daughter who you love. Huh? You think that having me as a father would somehow afford you the fringe benefit of getting to go on a yacht? Mm. What else did it get me? Pizza, ice cream, a brownie, a bunch of stuff. Healthy upbringing and supportive environment. I'm literally paying for your college. How about that one? <laughs> How much does college cost? You guessed it, the exact price of a yacht. Hey. Give up all of my hopes and dreams to live on a yacht. Sail the seven seas, grow a really long gnarly beard, marry the ocean. She really said gnarly. <laughs> of course he owns a yacht. I, I don't think he owns a yacht though, that's the thing. Maybe he just bought a yacht. Maybe he's gone full midlife crisis now. Maybe he's thinking about running away from his family and that's not... Great. We'll find out, though. We will find out. Maybe he is actually just rich and we didn't know about it. His house wasn't that great. Maybe he killed Mary and collected the insurance. <laughs> Sold his kids? Oh, my God. Amanda stares off into the middle distance, thinking about her future as a boat hermit, I guess. Relax, kiddo. Joseph's inviting me onto his yacht. It's going to be a yacht of fun. I'm glad you're excited, but that doesn't mean you get to start throwing out puns. Why yacht, Amanda? <laughs> mm. Well, I gotta go get ready. To go on my friend's yacht. I start to walk away, but Amanda stops me. Mm. Hey, in all seriousness, I hope you have fun. Yeah. But make good choices, okay? 
But dad... <laughs> Don't stay out too late, or you can't go to Jennifer Longfall's birthday party this weekend. She promised me she would propose to me, but ended up going out with Logan Crutchfield. Not going anywhere near that party. Good bit, Dad. Good bit. These two never talk properly. <laughs> oh my god. I respond back to Joseph, letting him know I'll be there. A, qu a quaint marina, complete with local mom and pop shops at a small diner framed the bay. I've gone for a few walks by the bayside to stare enviously at all the nice boats before. Joseph should be around here somewhere. Gosh, this is fancy. I feel a little bit out of place. That's a nice boat. Alan? That doesn't sound like Joseph. I turn around to find... Mary? The music got all creepy and dark. Let me turn this up a bit. Ah, oh, Robert. Hey. You're not here to kill me because you're Mary's friend, are you? Robert, hey. What's he doing here? So, how's Joseph? He's good. How are you doing? Robert comes off cold immediately. I get the feeling he's not happy I'm here. What's with that look? He seems very angry. Very, very angry. He's going through some stuff. Mm. Mm. Robert blasts through a cigarette. What? So I guess he's your friend now, huh? Your pal? Oh, he's... Robert, you're my friend too. Oh. Wait. Is this because I did multiple people to level two? Was I not supposed to do that? <laughs> um, and I suppose two friends just spend the night out on a private yacht together, being bards, chatting about friendship. Is that what two friends do? His voice is getting louder. What has gotten into him? Robert, come on, you know I'm not like that. Uh. Alan, you might be an idiot, but I'm not. What's your problem with Joseph anyway? Oh. I don't like Joseph. I don't trust Joseph. Joseph is a bad guy, and I don't want him around you. Robert, you committed petty larceny last week, and think you've been haunted by the Dover ghost. Uh. It was the goddamn Dover ghost. Mm. Robert pauses to calm himself down. Mm -hmm. Joseph's not who you think he is. What? Mm. Ask him about it sometime. Bring it up, and watch your back when you do. Because a guy like that will put a knife right through it. Robert flicks his cigarette into the front seat of a recently cleaned schooner before turning around to leave. He takes a step, hesitates, then turns back to face me. Oh? You're both awful. You deserve each other. I'll tell Mary you said hi. With that, Robert storms off down the pier. Well, okay. God damn! <laughs> They really hit me with the whole, like, you realize he's married, right? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I wander deeper into the marina. All these boats are really, really nice. I wonder which one is Joseph's. Hey, Alan. Joseph. Where are you? Up here. I look up. Joseph waves to me from atop a huge yacht. I've been on a yacht before. You never forget your first. I glance at the name on the side of the boat. The St. Peter, huh? Inherited this thing from my pops. Real fire and brimstone type. Loved yachts. Because Robert has two hearts on him, not necessarily because of the Mary thing. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. The secret ending Easter egg thing. It happens when you did Robert date two before Joseph final date. Damn. We managed to do this in a very painful way. <laughs> I didn't even... Wow, that's awesome. So we found a secret thing. That was actually kind of painful, man. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I thought this game was very simple. I thought it was just literally, you can two, two heart everyone and it's fine. Ugh. So what's the plan, Captain? I figured since last time went a bit sideways, we could cast our lot on the open sea. Wrestle with Neptune. Set sail on the seas of adventure. 
kind of a goofball when you're not rang me your kids, you know that? I know, right? Joseph smiles and winks from his perch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joseph hops down and extends a hand to me, helping me up onto the yacht. I'm thrown off by how soft his hands are. Is he moisturized or what? Alan, stop thinking about his hands! Pure thoughts. I'm gonna be on a boat, alone, with Joseph, on the open ocean. It's a yacht. He's married. You're fine. This is fine. <laughs> man, this route is fucked up, man. <laughs> Jeez. After undoing the mooring and climbing into his captain's seat, Joseph slowly takes the boat out, ringing the big steel bell with extra emphasis, even though nobody else seems to be around. Shoving off. Boat launching. Man and boat launching is one. The St. Peter, na Peter navigates out of the marina and into the open water, with Joseph doing the occasional steering flourish as the boot bob boot? boat bobs along with the waves. Oh. He seems a lot more relaxed out here. Joseph is definitely in his element. Oh. This is the part where we wrestle Neptune, so please remove your shirt and roll in some talcum powder. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait a damn minute. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I didn't bring any talcum powder. Luckily, I brought my Neptuning fork. Oh, God. I, I kind of want to do it. Yeah, I've got to do it. Okay, he, he liked it. Joseph stifles a laugh. I'll let you get a level dad joking there, Alan. For a while, we watch as the trees and waves pass us by. Where are we going? A little further out. It's a lot quieter once we get out on open water. Plus, we could see whales. Whales are cool. <laughs> Compared to the wholesome Damien route, this one is so stressing. Yeah, so was the Robert one. And none of these, like, we abandoned our daughter completely in both of these. It's wild. I don't trust whales. Nothing should be that big. Yeah. Noted. Whales are just doing whale things. Leave them alone. They don't fuck with anyone. Except for killer whales. Yeah, whales are cool. Joseph maneuvers the boat past some boys. He oh. sighs. Wish I could get out more often, but, you know. Family, wife, saving souls. <laughs> so many souls. I can barely hold them all. I watch Joseph work the boat. Despite his age, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all. And from here, I can see how well-toned his muscles are. Impure thoughts! Oh. I stare out at the ocean. Joseph's right. It's a lot quieter out here, but something about that conversation with Robert still bothers me. So, I ran into Robert. Uh-oh. Was he... He wasn't waiting for you at the deck, was he? Yeah, and smoking like a chimney. And threatening me. And warning me. <laughs> about that. <laughs> well, that's Robert, all right. Everything okay between you two? He seemed angry. Mm. It's. Mm, how do I put this? Mm. Did Robert ever proposition you for, um, escapades? Did you fuck Robert? Actually, he did. Uh, yeah. And did you take him up on that? No? <laughs> oh, well. Oh. That is where we differ. Oh, shit! You cheated on Mary! And then he became friends with Mary! Is that why she goes out to flirt with guys? She doesn't actually do it, but she just kind of like... I don't know. Likes to feel the power, the kind of thing that you did to her? Oh my god! What? I know, I know. Father of four, family man, married for Christ's sake. I should never have even... But I was in a bad place, and with Mary constantly out, I... Yeah. Joseph settles himself before continuing. This definitely gets under his skin. Hey. I made a hasty decision. One which Robert does not exactly... Uh... He has a weird thing about casual... Um... But he asked you. <laughs> You'd have to ask Robert about the weird Robert politics of that. He's been weird about it ever since. What? What does that mean? Wait, so Robert slept with him? 
But then, oh, did he not know he was married? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Did he feel tricked by the fact that Joseph was married or? Huh. But it's over, right? Hmm. Oh, yes, absolutely. That began and ended on the same day. Oh. Okay, then. <laughs> so you're not upset? I'm not, apparently. <laughs> Things happen, Joseph. I think you of all people deserve a little forgiveness. Hmm. Thank you, Alan. That means more than you'll ever know. Joseph and I boat in silence as the bay gets smaller and smaller behind us. I decide to take a peek over the edge of the ship. The wake this thing kicks off is intense. I wonder if Joseph would ever let me water ski off of his yacht. Hey. Dolphins! Joseph, there are dolphins! Oh. So you're scared of whales, but not dolphins? I know, right? They're so similar. <laughs> Bro, be upset by all means? I know, right? He's just like, ah, you cheated on your wife. With Robert. Her friend. Okay. Anyway, dolphins! I feel like there's an unspoken truce between man and dolphin. I'd be more than comfortable riding a dolphin into battle. <laughs> dolphins are way more dangerous. They sometimes drown their babies for fun, you know. Thank you, Joseph. They are really fucked up. They also steal baby porpoises and use them as bulls. They beat out of the water one by one. They play with them. It's fucked up. And I trust nothing on the open ocean? Hmm. I like to think that I'm pretty cool. I, I don't trust you at all. You maybe try to kill me. <laughs> all right, Joseph. It's you and me versus the entirety of marine life. Ooh. I yell out to the ocean. You're all spineless invertebrates. I had lobster last week and I can't wait to eat more of you. My life goal is to punch as many fish as I can before I die. Okay, I like that one. That one's good. <laughs> you tell him, Alan. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Alan, welcome to the ocean. I look out into the vast expanse of ocean blueness. Yep, that's the ocean. Suddenly struck with an overwhelming sense of claustrophobia, despite being in an open, wide space. I'm on a boat with a handsome man, a handsome married man, and there are whales beneath us. Nothing should be that big. Oh. <laughs> it's a little daunting, isn't it? Do you trust the whales? <laughs> he really is into the whole fucking whale thing. We NTR. I don't think we're going to in this room. I'm personally not feeling it. You know, there are more dangerous things in the ocean than whales, right? Like tuna. The tuna is an apex predator. What about sharks? Mm. Sharks are tight. <laughs> it's the tuna you gotta watch out for. And the whales. Hey, wanna look out wistfully over the sea with me? Okay, <laughs> that's... Okay. Joseph and I head to the bow of the ship and do some quiet contemplation. You know, I... Shh. Quiet. Contemplation. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm alone with my thoughts. Cool. Right. I look out to the sea for a bit, then over to Joseph. He looks so commanding as he surveys the ocean. It looks like he really is at home on the water. What Mary said to me at the bar. Can't stop thinking about it. Is she right? But she's terrible to him. He's unhappy. He deserves better. I don't know what to think about this, but I feel so drawn to Joseph. Hmm. I should say something. So, uh, about Mary. <laughs> Joseph continues to stare off into the distance. It's, um, well, if you really want to know. Oh. Suddenly I hear a sputter coming from the engine room. Joseph runs over to the boat controls and taps on some dials. I guess we can talk about Mary later. Oh, okay. So, we might have a small problem. What small problem? Yeah. We are out of gas. How the fuck did you go this far out without realizing you had barely any gas? The whales are gonna get us. The whales siphoned our gas. Did he do this on purpose? Did he want to just run away from everything? That's not a small problem. Yeah, I think he did check it. 
I don't think it wasn't checked. I think he was just like, no, I'm done. I just want you. I want Margarita Phil forever. Just me and you on a boat. Nothing else. Oh, God. It's okay. I can just call one of my boat buddies to come tow us back in. That makes a lot more... Si well, are we going to have any signal out here? <laughs> Joseph pulls out his phone. Just kidding. I can't do that because there's no service. <laughs> I check my phone. I don't have service either. Hmm. Should we just submit ourselves to the whales? Well, I do have an old radio in the office, but it's broken. Do you have any with tools? I am a dad. If the radio is anything like frantically putting together a bike on Christmas Eve, it should be no problem. <laughs> it's not going to be anywhere near the same, bro. Let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. Joseph directs me towards the radio and show showcases its insides. Hmm. I don't know how radios work. I think there's just some frayed wires in here. We can reattach them. We should have a working radio in no time. We stare at the interior of the radio. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at. I don't think Joseph knows either. Uh. You know what? Let's just throw some stuff around in there and see what works. This is a mini game? MacGyver, that radio. MacGyver, the radio? Um. 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 Paperclip. Red wire. Connect. No, connect. C connect. Huh. B -b Black wire. Connect. Hmm. Hmm. I just throw a bunch of metal in there. Eventually. Something's gonna work. Come on. At least we have a condom in case we need it. There, we'll charge the radio with the charger. So dumb. What the fuck? I don't think I'm supposed to be able to win this, am I? I think you're missing something. The rubber ducky? You're right. You are so right, Joseph. I'm missing the rubber ducky. And the gum. And the condom. And all of this shit. Whatever this is, let's add it. Is this a lemon? I don't know what that is, but it's noisy. Sure. Am I... Jesus? I think I might... be God. Hey, it works. Kinda. Um, the radio springs to life. Whoa, we did it. <laughs> Joseph speaks into the receiver. Huh. Hello, hello? Can anyone hear me? Come in. Do you read me? <laughs> the coconut was the key? Who knew? Who knew? Hmm. He tries a few other channels. Nobody responds. <laughs> it might be a little far out. I don't think there's anyone in range. How big's the range, bruh? Well, this radio came with the boat when my dad bought it in the 60s, so... Not great. <laughs> That's reassuring. Now what do we do, dude? <laughs> There's worse places to get started on than a yacht. Wine? <laughs> wine. Wine. Wine! Sure, I'll give you some wine. Oh. <laughs> my fucking god. Oh, yo, Kyo. What's up, Kyo means? I hope you're having a good day. We are just playing Dream Daddy. We're at the final end of the route with Joseph. And he seems to have trapped us on a boat, Yandere style. Uh, if you don't want to get spoiled for this route, feel free to leave. I know Kyo already played this game quite a while ago. We're doing a different route, but this is... This is interesting. We planned on cocking Mary, and instead I think we've been kidnapped, which is... Hmm. 
quite an experience. <laughs> I keep a couple emergency bottles below deck. I'm gonna go grab some while I fiddle with this radio some more. I'm gonna break the radio when we're gone. <laughs> Let's see. Wine, wine. Gotta be around here somewhere. Huh. Examine the cabinet. It's a sturdy cabinet. A little dusty, but I bet there's some treasures in here. Examine the drawer. Hey, it's wine. A whole drawer full of wine. It's a Yacht Club miracle. Twilight Rouge, huh? Come to daddy. I just need to find some glasses. Okay. What about the flashlights? This is a solution to a different problem. Maybe if we're stranding out here for days and run out of electricity, we'll need these. The chief concern now is wine. Okay. Fire extinguisher? Look, you can tell a lot about a man by how he takes his fire safety. Nice, Joseph. Nice. Okay. Let's check the shelf. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Photos, books, knickknacks. What about the photos? There's a few photos on the wall here. Looks like a photo from Joseph and Mary's wedding day. Nice grandpa glasses. Looking real slick there, Joe. Another picture of Mary Joseph on this very yacht. Quality 90s fashion right here. Mary still has her patterned stink face, but at least Joseph seems happy on the water. Hey, it's all the dads. Looks like it's from a couple years ago. Gang's all here. Brian, Matt, Hugo, Craig, Damien, Robert. Wow, Robert's actually smiling and wearing a sweater. That's... I know that sweater. And there's one guy at the end that I don't recognize. Hugo's ex, maybe? Hey, here's Joseph go-karting with the kids. That's fun. Is Robert wearing his sweater? Did they actually have a relationship for a while? Wait. <laughs> I take a look at everything on the shelf. Um, books, please. It's like a bunch of different Bibles on brand. A couple of old vet magazines. I guess those might be Mary's. Wait a minute. Is this? Wow, wow. Now the hot body shoe is on the other hot body foot. Take a look at everything on the shelf. What was that? I don't even get that. <laughs> There's one thing Joseph does right. It's the odd stuff he puts on the shelves. I take a moment to closely examine what I think is an old submarine clock. Ah, and there's the crosses again. Boy knows his crosses. Really cool design, too. Okay, that's it for the shelf. Hold on. I think it was a lewd magazine. That could be. Did he sleep with all of them? Imagine if this is his harem ending. Oh my god. Yeah, imagine if he's actually been with all of the dads one by one. And he's the one who actually got the harem ending in this game. God damn. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Wood panels on everything, leather couches. Like an old Playboy photo shoot in here. Uh, let's check the bed. Oh, a California king. Swanky. It's unmade and a little messy. Less swanky. Uh, floor, please. There are some clothes strewn on the floor by the bed. Socks, slacks. Yep, a pink polo shirt. I guess I know if Joseph prefers boxes or briefs. This place seems a little lived in. Hmm. We're in trouble, aren't we? <laughs> ah, here are some wine glasses. These are perfect vessels for the Twilight Rouge. Finally, time to get back to Joseph. Yeah, I'm just gonna head back up to Joseph now. Even though there's a lot of very worrying signs right about here. This is fine. I bring the wine and glasses up to the deck to find Joseph still hunched over the radio. <laughs> Alan, wine. Good to see you two. Just in time for the sunset. I didn't take you for a drink, huh? Yeah. Haven't you heard? I'm a cool minister. How cool? Oh. I can land half of my kickflips. <gasps> That's pretty cool. What is that, like four? <laughs> Five on a good day. Poor me. Um, power pour! Oh, he liked it. Good. I thought I was going to end up fucking shit up. But this is okay. <laughs> Robert is right. Yeah, this has been nothing but red flags ever since I snuck onto this boat, man. <laughs> ah, this is fine. We like danger. Danger's fine. My favorite color's red. Whoa. Okay, time to party. We clink our glasses and drink up. Wine's not bad. There's a hint of... Am I tasting grapes? <laughs> you have a discerning palate. It might be grapes. 
Joseph and I lounge on the deck with our yacht wine, taking in the ocean air. The sun starts to dip below the horizon. We could be stranded out here forever. I can't think of anyone I'd rather be stranded with. It's just you, me, and all those whales. So many whales. Why is he trying to mess with me with the whales? <laughs> You're killing the vibe, bro. Revive the vibe, Alvin. Alan? I said Alvin. <laughs> oh my god. Generally, it takes three days and a gigantic stone door rolled in front of a tomb, but I think we can save it. Damn, he made a Jesus joke. Uh, this view, though. Do you like your mysteries, hot-bodied? Oh, that was it. He's the one who's been reading the dirty, sexy novels. It wasn't Mary. <laughs> I bet we'll have a whale of a time. Okay, yeah, let's drop that one in. That's funny. Oh, Cracker Barrels. Oh, Cracker Barrels. Oh, Cracker Barrels. It's a really rewarding series, Alan. Uh-huh. <laughs> Look, you have fun with your word jumbles. I'll enjoy the well-crafted narrative excellence of a highly regarded serial. Sex books. Oh. Detective novels. Sexy detective books featuring a hard-boiled gumshoe who can't be held down by the law or by love, or by the mystery of the Spanish lover. Oh, you read them too. <laughs> oh, apparently I read them too. Okay. I read my PWP too. We're just gonna bond over this now. <laughs> the author really hit her stride around book 17? I bet we'll have a whale of a time this view though. What's it like owning a yacht? You like dumping dead bodies off of here? Yeah. I imagine it would help me quite a bit. All the acid I have to buy to melt the flesh off of the bones and then breaking the bones, it's a pain in the ass. Fuel prices are on the rise. Yearly maintenance is a bit of a strain on the finances. Can't really take it out in the winter months. Oh. But also, sometimes you can have a party on your yard and everyone thinks you're cool. So, it evens out. Ooh. Alan, if you had a yacht, what would you name it? Bodie McBoatface. I can't actually think of a good idea for one. I don't know. I have no idea. The Salty Swallow. <laughs> Long, hard, and full of semen? Come on, dude! Fuck you, Wells. We'll go with that one. That's the only safe one. Come on, man. I make these jokes. Not you, game. This is a really weird route. I'm keeping on brand here. Oh. Riding on the side of the boat like that is basically asking them to attack. That's the goal. I'd be ready. You know where to find me, you cowards. Oh, hell yeah. Call me Ishmael, bitch. I go to take another sip of wine. But I stop myself. Is wine an acceptable beverage in Margarita Zone? Oh. But it is, Alan. All beverages of leisure are welcome in the Margarita Zone. This is almost what we wanted, right? I mean, yeah, we're stuck in Margaritaville forever. Margaritaville is the end of this game. <laughs> no responsibilities, no worries. Other than possibly dying out here. And the whales. But yeah. I'd say we're in the zone. Joseph and I clink our wine glasses again. To the margarita zone. Nice. Wasted away again. If you have any salt shakers, we could arrange them into a pentagram to summon Jimmy Buffett. Maybe he can save us. Hmm. As a youth minister, I make packs with neither the devil nor island jammers. If we're to get off this boat, it'll be by the grace of God. <laughs> or Steely Dan. Uh, uh. Amen. Do you think... Do you think he did this on purpose, but he actually has, like, a bunch of boat fuel somewhere? Like, a secret reserve of boat fuel? Maybe this is what he does with the dads. He makes them think they're gonna die. So that they, like, you know, have the panic, have the flush, and then they'll do pretty much anything with him? Maybe he's repeated this multiple times with all the other dads. Our laughter dies down. We're both silent for a moment, looking into each other's eyes. Joseph leans in closer. I feel myself doing the same. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I can't help but feeling like, like doing this will only end up hurting someone else. But his face is real close to my face. Hey. Alan, I have to tell you something. Hmm. Mary and I are done. I pull back. I think about the clothes strewn around the lunge. The undone bed. Are you 
living on this boat? Yeah. Oh, that's what happened. He got thrown out. Awesome. <laughs> I... I didn't want to mention it, but... He sighs, strolling back to the controls of the boat. I lean on the console next to him. Hmm. Why is romantic music playing? <laughs> We're gonna die out at sea, and they're having the romantic music play, because it's like, oh, but he got away from his wife. That's good. He abandoned his children. Um, we had a very long talk, and it's unsalvageable. I'm staying here until everything's sorted out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, actually. Uh. It was a long time coming. For the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a path to happiness. And now I could focus on myself and... Stop trying to deny the things that make me happy. Oh. I need someone who will be there. Someone kind and honest. And you deserve that, Joseph. Really do. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, I've been having this crazy feeling. There's someone who I could get in the habit of hanging around. Someone very close to here. Oh? The whales? It's got to be... The yeah! <laughs> Is it whales? Did you bring me out here to feed me to the whales? You son of a bitch. I knew it. You were on their side all along. Should have known as soon as you tried to bring me out to the ocean. It's where they live. Mm. I mean you. Aww. That would be cute if this wasn't the creepiest fucking route ever, and I really don't like it. <laughs> Super uncomfy. <laughs> oh. oh. I was trying to be subtle. I think I'm picking up what Joseph's putting down. I lean forward, closing the gap between us when... Joseph grabs the receiver. Oh. Come in. Come in. Do you read me? <laughs> uh, no? Over? <laughs> We're stranded out on open waters. We've been out here for hours. Please send help. Over. Wait, are you guys gonna kiss? Have they been fucking listening to us? What? I mean, what are your coordinates, over? Hmm. Alan, have you been leaning on the talk button this whole time? <laughs> what? What the fuck is this route? I don't even know what's going on anymore. I look down. Oh. Oh, I definitely have been leaning on the talk button. Trade by my own butt, yet again. Cybussy has a mind of its own. I didn't lean on it. You leaned on it. Neither of you were leaning on the talk button. We didn't hear anything, over. <laughs> hey, were you listening to us? So, we were at the Coast Guard and professionals. We're not doing that. But as professionals, it seems like you deserve happiness. We think it's closer than you think. Hmm. Um, over. Hmm. How soon could you guys be over here to give us a tow? Over. Ah, pick you up in the morning. Sounds like you two have some stuff to hash out. Over and out. Oh. Wait. Ah. Silence. Nobody ever returns our radio hey. course. What? Hey. Huh? You can't do that. They don't know. What? What if we drift further out to sea? <laughs> the Coast Guard can't do that. <laughs> I think they left. We stare at each other for a second. Yeah. Well... Joseph carefully places the receiver on the table, making sure the talk button isn't pressed in. Maybe we want the talk button pressed in. Maybe now that I know they were enjoying it, I want them to continue to listen. Maybe they should share in our happiness. Well... Okay. Joseph grabs me by the shirt and pulls me into a kiss. His lips are soft and sweet from the wine, and his skin is still warm from the sun. I reach out, reach for his belt and pull him even closer, running my free hand under his shirt and up his side. He pushes me against the boat's console, kissing down my neck. Why is this the most explicit route as well? What the fuck? <laughs> Come on. His hands drift to my thighs and he effortlessly picks me up? Wow. Joseph carries me below deck. I believe they call that the poop deck. 
I'd be lying if I said I hadn't fantasized about this. I didn't think you'd be so... aggressive. Mm. I've wanted this for so long. He throws me onto the bed? I let out a you yelp? Lots of time to kill, Alan. We better get started. Um, samurai? <laughs> I don't like this route, man. They made it so creepy, and then they played it off as a joke, and now it's aggressive. Okay. Um. Oh, now pitch black. Oh, man. I might have overdone it on the wine last night. Just a few more minutes of sleep would do fine. I swear to God, if we get taken back to the fucking land... And then it turns out he didn't break up with Mary. I'm going to be so fucking angry. Wait. I opened my eyes to find Joseph's face a few inches from mine. An arm slung around my waist. He's sleeping peacefully. His hair is mussed and his lips are still a little red. I think this is what I was talking about when we were discussing Margarita Zone. Finding little perfect moments of joy. With the way the light falls across Joseph's face. Or how he's still holding me tight even in his sleep. I'm very tempted to curl up close to him and keep sleeping, but I know the Coast Guard will probably be here soon. I'd like to be wearing clothes when that happens. I nudge Joseph. He takes a couple of shakes before he blearily opens his eyes. When he notices me hovering over him, he breaks into a huge grin. We should get dressed. Joseph pulls me in for a kiss. Do we have to? Another kiss. Stop trying to tempt me. When did we go from being the temptress to being this? God, we just got swept along in this craziness. Oh, God. I'm fine. Why is he sweating and nervous, bro? You got something you have to hide when we get back home, bro? <laughs> the Coast Guard eventually shows up and tows us back to the bay. They thankfully keep their comments to themselves. Joseph, Joseph and I... Step off the yacht, and he walks me to my car. I had a great time. Me too. No thanks to the whales. Shh. You're on land now. They can't hurt you. Until they learn to walk and breathe air. Then we're fucked. Take care, Joseph. <laughs> you too. He gives me one last kiss on the lips before he turns around and walks back to his boat. Well, I've been gone an entire day. Hopefully Amanda's all right. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a child at home that I just... Ab I let the Coast Guard abandon me for a night when I had a child at home. Oh my God. Amanda, I'm... Dad. She runs up and hugs me. I was genuinely concerned about your well-being, but upon closer inspection, you seem to be okay. What happened? The yacht ran out of gas and we were stuck. It was okay, because I was on a yacht. <laughs> I mean, I was on a yacht, so, you know, I, I really balanced out. <laughs> Aren't you scared? Your father feels no fear. Are you able to take care of yourself for the night? Yeah, just did a ton of drugs, vandalized a few cars, and then embezzled some funds from my school. All in all, pretty low-key night. Yeah, that's pretty good. Where'd you learn that from? I learned it from you, Dad. <laughs> that's a good quote. Well, if you did, you would have funneled those funds through a legitimate cash and carry business, fudging the books over the course of years, so you didn't arouse suspicion from the feds. Rookie mistake, Panda. Now you're going to jail. <laughs> I'm glad you're back in one piece. Did you make good choices? Yeah, maybe. I think I did. But hey, I'm starving. I'm gonna make sandwiches out of whatever we can find in the fridge. More than anything, Pops. Okay. This was a... This was a interesting... Day complete. Ow, it's so loud. Has it ever... Rank B? <laughs> How did we only get a rank B? We literally slept with the... Okay. 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 Did we even have any options? We did, we did every good option. Everything was a happy option. What the fuck is going on? E for basic? I guess so. Does it normally give us a rank for the third day? I can't remember it doing that before. Maybe it did. Okay, we skip forward. This is the surprise party. Yeah, what now? Blah, blah, blah. 
skip out to the barbecue. Yeah, give her a gift. There's all the dads. Fantastic. Okay, this is where it starts changing, possibly. Oh, she's still wearing her wedding ring. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. Mary's here. With everything that's happened between me and Joseph, I should be a good host and say hi to her. But I don't wanna... Come on, Alan. You can do this. I walk up to Mary. Ugh. Hey. Hey. You been... Good? Just peachy. I have to go over there now. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. That went about as well as I could have expected it to. Alan. Ryan, you made it. Hey, I don't pass out on good Mac. What do you think of the party? <laughs> it's not bad. Just not bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Yeah, skip over this. Okay. Don't need anything new with Craig. We've seen this before. Nothing new here. Hey. She hates her teacher. Oh, this is where it gets awkward. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yeah. I don't know. See you later. Fuck. <laughs> wow. So when you two start someone, they just like say nothing to you. Yeah, it's the same as him. Like Damien, every time he comes around nowadays, it's just like, what a splendid party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good take. Thanks for coming by. And then they just leave. Because it's like, oh, you, you took me on two wonderful dates. And then you just left. But at least Damien's actually nice about it. Wait, I didn't even get to do the big goodbye to my daughter this time. It just immediately brings me to Captain America. This route is terrible. <laughs> this route is the worst. They just like, we don't even get given the picture by our daughter. Okay. Oh, okay. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to, Do next to Joseph. Joseph, it's so great to see you again. Oh. Great party. I should have you organize our next group mixer. My dance skills are ready whenever you need them. <laughs> sure. Hey, if you aren't busy this weekend, thinking we can maybe catch a movie or something? No. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like it would be fun. Why did he grumble then? He didn't say a happy noise. He made a... This feels weird. It doesn't feel like it did on the yacht. So... Uh, I guess things are still friendly with Mary. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. You motherfucker! You did not break up with her! Joseph sighs. We talked. We talked for a long time. And there was some yelling and some crying, but... Ultimately, there was reconciliation. I'm sorry, Alan. I have to make this work with Mary. Oh. Hmm. I know. I shouldn't have. I didn't mean to hurt you, and I'm really sorry you got caught up in all this. I just felt so alone lately, and I'm not even sure I'm doing the right thing here. <laughs> You've come to mean so much to me, and I'll never forget all of those beautiful moments we shared together. But I have to thank you. In a way, this whole thing with you helped me realize that I still love my wife very much. Oh. That's... Great. I know this probably isn't what you wanted to hear. I'm sorry if you were hoping for something different. This is where my life is, and I need to be right. I need to do right by my family. But hey, Joseph squeezes my hand. Nice. We'll always have margaritas on. You piece of shit. Joseph stands up. Hi. Take care, Alan. You too, Joseph. Joseph walks off. Did he do the same thing to Robert? Did he lead Robert on? Make him think that he wanted to actually leave Mary? Take him out on the yacht? 
pretend he was going to break up with her and then just go back? Maybe he does this continuously. Ah, oh, Mary did say the whole, like, you're not his normal type. You're not his type. So, yeah, maybe he's done this with multiple people. Oh, fuck me. I... Man, I do something wrong. Was there some other way this could have ended if I did things differently? I walk over to the half-melted remains of the ice cream cake and shove a forkful into my mouth. This ice cream cake is my new boyfriend. The last guests begin to make their way out of the party. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot. Okay. So this is her. It's the exact same thing. Giving the picture. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny wrapped package. I tear a framed picture of me and Amanda. So in this route, we're like, well, fuck Joseph then. At least I have my baby girl. Okay. That's fine. This is only the beginning. She's going to college. Aw, we're sitting together. I'm glad you made some friends. Yeah. I know that's maybe not what you were looking for, but these people care about you. I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. You're right. It's going to be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story. I'd be nervous about it, but I know that you're always going to be looking out for me the same way I always look out for you. Team Bank? Team Bank. And I'm going to eat Robert. Not Robert. <laughs> I'm going to eat Joseph. What the fuck? Okay, so there's one way to find out if this is the true ending. If this isn't the true ending, we won't get the picture, right? So we need to skip ahead and see if there's a picture at the end of this. Or is it just this? You actually get the picture. Greetings from Margarita Zone. This is the true ending? This is the only way you end it with this man? This piece of shit. He's got the handsome Squidward face on. Wish you were here. He's got the salt. Oh my. <laughs> you know what? I'm proud of the game for that. I came into this route wholeheartedly planning to destroy a marriage and be like an incubus and ruin people's happiness and be a dick. Instead, I got used and abused and thrown away. A married man had his way with me, continues to go on to have the happy married family and continue to be seen as a pillar of the community. And I am nothing. Oh my God. I'm glad we did that route. That was fun. Even better immediately after doing Robert, who then warned us. Don't go with him. It's a bad idea. You know what? Fuck it. You're both terrible. Oh, man. Dream Daddy. <laughs> Dream Daddy. Okay. Damien put a ring on him. Oh, wait. Actually, he's not lit up in the opening. Is he? He's not appearing right now. You say it's fun. I, I liked it. No, I didn't. Like, I didn't like the room. <laughs> he doesn't even appear in the opening right now. What the fuck? Like, genuinely, let me go back to this. <laughs> He's not even in the opening anymore. <laughs> Unless that's going to be him. He was just late. Oh, it is. So yeah, no, he's got a colored picture now. That was the true ending. Damien truly was the best, best option. Oh God, why is this a thing? Why did I do Damien first? And I had to live through all of these other... Oh. So yeah, 
I didn't enjoy that storyline, but I enjoyed like the drama of it. How wild that was. That I thought it was going to be a silly little game where it was like, yeah, you could steal away the ministers. You could steal away the minister from his wife. It won't be a big deal. And instead they remind you how shitty it is. <laughs> and then they show you that actually he's a piece of shit too. And he's done this to other people. It was a nice twist. That was a nice twist. I tried to fuck around. And I found out. Was Robert bad? Didn't get to watch it. Um, I'll say without spoiling in case you want to watch the VOD later. He, he wasn't bad. In fact, he was a very emotionally invested character. It was an interesting route. Definitely Damien was the best route we did. I, I bet Craig has a nice route too. Everybody seems to do the Craig route. <laughs> Maybe I should have just done the Craig route, man. <laughs> but we didn't. We're done. We're done. Ah. Oh. Dream Daddy's an interesting game. There are moments that make me want to rip out my hair. It's certainly not like the visual novels I tend to read. I tend to read visual novels where if there's drama, it's like explosive, painful, fucked up drama. Rather than this where it was just like realistic, but not in a fun way. <laughs> the Damien route was great. The Robert route was pretty damn good. I liked it. I give that one like a solid like 7 out of 10. I really liked the ending of the Robert route. Like the un ending of the Robert route really sold it for me. The Joseph route, like I need more into that story. That's the problem. Like it was so fucked up, but at the same time, I needed it to either be more fucked up and like cartoonish level villainy or I don't know. I want like a big deep explanation. I want Mary to really like spell out the evidence to me. I wanted to be like, yeah, he's had every other dad in this cul-de-sac too. This is literally his cul-de-sac. <laughs> oh man. It's fine. It's fine. Still had a fun time going through it all. If you want to know, I'm probably, yeah, going to Google it out later. <laughs> There's a Halloween Easter egg type thing. Tell me about this. There's a secret ending for Joseph's ending, but I hated the last route. Oh. Did you get the info about Damien? What info about Damien? There is a cult route! It's a fucking cult. Oh, it was never implemented? Oh, they didn't actually make it. Oh. There's an unused sprite where he's a cult leader. Oh. Holy crap. At least you can listen to the fan song now. There's a fan song. You do it, but you need to do specific things. Oh, it is an Easter egg now. It got added back. You need to Google to get it. Hmm. How long is it? Let me see this. Dream Daddy Cult. Ah. <laughs> Conceptually messy. And totally non-canonical. Canonical. We made it intentionally impossible to get unless you're actively seeking it out. Ah. Oh. oh, yeah. We can't do that. You have to get back to the third date, but you also have to start with very specific... Oh. You have to start with very specific things when you create your dad. So we'd have to go through all three dates again. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to read about that later then. The fact that they took it out, but people managed to find it in the data code. And so they put it back in as an Easter egg. That's funny. So yeah, you have to build your dad in a specific way and then get your way to the third ending. Uh, the third date. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Futsan, can I bonk you? You can try. They actually immediately play it. They now jump you to the secret ending as long as you have the right outfit. <laughs> oh, do I do it? Mm, no, no, no. I'll just watch it by myself. You guys could just watch it by yourselves too. That's fine. We're not going to do it. We've done enough of a stream today. <laughs> That'll be interesting, but I'll look it up on my own time. <laughs> So before we move into anything, we are going to end up reading Super Chats and Streamlabs today because we didn't do the Streamlabs yesterday. Oh, I was very close to choosing to do it, but that's fine. <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about it real hard. Um, but before we do that, let me post this on Twitter. 
and then I will share it with you. This is a pretty intense week. So here, copy link to tweet, is my schedule for the week. Schedule for the week. Bum, 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 bum. Pin! Do, 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 do. What is this? Ah. Aha. It actually works. <laughs> I forgot I named them all the same thing, so it works. So yeah, I could just bring this up like this. Okay. The schedule for the week. The new beautiful artwork with dog looking absolutely pristine. I was shocked by that. Looks exactly like dog. Um, tomorrow we're doing a drinking zatsu at 6 p.m. EST. At 11 p.m. GMT and 8 a.m. JST. I'm just going to have some drinks and talk about things. It's basically going to be our uh, New Year stream. Because we're also going to go about like some New Year stuffs. Uh, Monday, we're going to play The Last of Us. Just more of The Last of Us. Basically part two of the playthrough. Tuesday, Valorant with Nox, Shu, Reimu, and Petra. Um, in the morning at 8 a.m. EST. Nox. Nox is a liver from Virtual Real. Um, the Chinese branch. So yeah. That'll be cool. And then Shu, Reimu, and Petra. So it'll be fun. It's going to be an interesting group of people. Reimu's tried Valorant before. Nox wanted to play Valorant with us specifically, which is great. She was incredible at it. I'm not sure if Petra's ever played it before. <laughs> so that's going to be an interesting collab. And then a game called Unfortunate Spaceman with a bunch of Niji and members. It's apparently basically Among Us, but 3D and with guns. I have no idea how that's going to happen. Dopio's name is... Oh, I forgot the second P. I, I wrote Pio-chan originally. <laughs> and then I decided to make it Dopio because I was like, ah, oh, nobody else has a nickname there. I shouldn't. Anyway, <laughs> Wednesday, Danganronpa, Chapter 4, Deadly Life. We'll finish off Chapter 4. Um, and then in the evening, a collab with Noctix. All of Noctix are going to be together for Left 4 Dead 2 at 8 p.m. EST. I've been wanting to play that game for ages. And now it's very easy to, like get together for four player games it should be fun god i love left for dead too so hopefully that'll be fun again we haven't seen that in ages uh thursday zatsudan with my dog and happy new year on billy billy because that is when i had time to do it <laughs> so we're going to be over on billy billy and we're going to do it like a zatsudan kind of thing and just yeah chatting about happy new year there's going to be some questions that i'm going to deliver to people as well and then in the evening monster ca monster camp with alira scala and dopio yeah a continuation of monster prom the second game monster camp we're going to play it with the same people it'll be so good friday i finally have a day off i can sleep and then saturday we're back with fire emblem engage i'm going to be continuing the story on hard mode as within that time i am going to have made sure that i get up to where we were on the same game but on hard mode that's our schedule for the week lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff <laughs> Uh, yeah, when I posted on Twitter, I called it the Power of Friendship Week. Because, yeah, it's 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 a pretty heavily collab-based week. Let me pin that, and then I'll rejoin you guys. Okay. Goodbye, schedule. You're going to redo, but you're already busy. Yeah, I'll have time. Don't worry about it. Lots of streams next week? Hell yeah. Ever new Monster Prom had a sequel? Yeah, it has two sequels. It has Monster Camp, which is the first sequel. And it had one that came out about three months ago called Monster Road Trip. So we're going to play that one eventually, too. We're going to have these people together for a while. But yeah, it'll be a good time. We've got a lot coming, but this week is going to be pretty intense. Ray 2. Oh, that didn't work. There we go. Joseph was my first route in the game. And I loved it now the same way I did back then. Sometimes heartbreak just feels so good. Part of my red flag collection. Again, so happy you played this game. That's the thing. I normally like red flags. That one was just like a less fun one. <laughs> we'll see, though. We'll see. Thank you for donating the food funds. It should be a good time. Yeah, he'll be in Wrestle Sanji. Yeah, I'm going to be in Wrestle Sanji tonight. And we'll see if tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if tomorrow I make it into the finals. But yeah, either way. That's why I've set up the Drunk Zatsu tomorrow to start at 6 p.m. As the longest it's got to go is for three hours. And then we'll raid into Wrestle Sanji whether I'm doing the finals or not. Either way will work out. It was a realistic red flag. Yeah, I prefer my red flags unrealistic and ridiculous. That one made me re made me think about reality too much. 
I like my escapism red flags. <laughs> you want orchard, bone orchard. If you sleep with Robert the first time, you can't complete his route, probably because of the yacht law. Also, his hand tattoo is connected to Joseph. Oh, shit. That's deep. Even the tattoo is connected to Joseph. Poor dude. So he was way more connected than we thought he was. Damn. Thank you for donating the food funds, and thank you for letting me know that. Poor dude. I, I figured there was something, because the fact that you got a chance to sleep with someone on the first night, I figured that if I did that, I actually thought it would, like, ruin my roots for everyone. I thought it would be, like, a bad end kind of thing, where, like, I went home with him, we slept together, and then he basically told me to fuck off, but, like, nobody wanted anything to do with me after that. Like, nobody trusted me. I didn't realize it was just that simple. Hmm. Uh, thank you for donating the food funds, though. Rogue, hey, Futchan. Thank you for playing Three Roots of DD. Make sure you watch the code ending. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Have a good time zone. Good time zones, Rogue. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. I want to see how wild it gets. Should be a fun time. Thank you for donating the food funds and have a good evening. Apple Spider, supering again because I'm swapping my flights around to see you guys play Left 4 Dead. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so excited for that, too. I love Left 4 Dead. It's such a good game. I'm glad we're going to get Noctics together again. Um, so soon as well. It's only two weeks after the last one. Hopefully, we'll get to do that one more time in the next two to three weeks. Um, before, like, my one-week break, I mean. Um, which may turn into a two-week break. We'll see. <laughs> That's how it normally works for me. I feel like I normally take a one-week break, and then the first week is, like, all catching up on offline work, and then I'm like, you know what? I'll take, like, three, four, five days. <laughs> but, yeah. There's going to be a lot of good collabs this week. I'm very excited to collab with Nox as well. Nox has been trying to get this Valorant stream together. <laughs> For literally two months now. Before Christmas, Nox was trying to get this specific group together. But this specific group has such bad time zones for each other. So I felt really bad. Like, I'm the one who actually forced it through to make sure it happened this week. Uh, I finally, like, posted, like, all of my available times. and was like, guys, pick one, for the love of God. This has been going on for two months. <laughs> so I'm glad we're finally going to get to do it. I like Valorant. I've wanted to hang out with Nox for a while. This should be good. <laughs> you may hire. Thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I hope you enjoyed the stream today. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much. Yesenia. Thanks for the fun stream. I lost so much. Joseph Root ending sucked. Honestly, I liked it. Not only homewrecking is a shit thing to do. And it isn't good for anyone involved. Good on the devs for being honest. Yeah. I don't necessarily need honesty in my fiction, but I'm glad they did. That's what I mean. Like, that's why I was like, oh, I hated that. But I also really liked it. Like, I love when fiction does that, where it's just like, you think you're going to get one thing. And then they're like, you know what? No, let's let's pull this out. Let's pull the rug out from under you and like really make you feel like shit. Really make you feel the weight of this. Like, I love it when fiction does that to you. It makes you see things from a different way. So, yeah, I liked that even though I hated it. It made me feel like shit, but it was supposed to make me feel like shit. <laughs> Tsukishiro, forgot to say, I buy you on my other super. Thank you for donating the food funds. That's so sweet of you. I hope you have a wonderful evening, Tsukishiro. And I'll be catching up to the old supers in a while. That's how I felt reading Urha. Oh, I feel that. So much pain, but such good pain. See, that's very unrealistic pain where it's like, this hurts. And I feel good about it. <laughs> like when it's super natural or like unrealistic or over the top, then I'm like, God, it hurts so good. Or yeah, when it's real, it's like, oh, that hurts so bad. <laughs> Interesting is the bad ending for him is you two can... No way! That shit sucks. I'm glad I didn't get that ending. <laughs> Jules, Otsufu-chan. It's been a while since I've seen these roots, so it was fun. I remember not really liking Robert at first, but his route was my favorite by the end. Have a wonderful rest of your work. Rest of your week. Yeah, I like Robert. Like, I, I had that kind of thing with him as well, where I was like, during the dates, it was like, oh, dude, you need to grow up. You need to deal with your shit. And then the ending for that route actually made it, like, all come together. And maybe, yeah. It's a similar thing to the Joseph route, where with the Joseph route, it's like, this is silly, but he's cute. But this has got to have a really bad end. And then they actually give it the bad end. <laughs> with the Robert route, it was like, this is stupid. He needs to grow up. He needs to deal with his shit. And then the game was like, yeah, he needs to deal with his shit. <laughs> it was good. It was great. How do Mary and Joseph work, though? 
very bad way. The sad thing is there are a lot of couples like that in the world where it's basically they look the other way at what, if he, what each other are doing. <laughs> They're vaguely taking... <laughs> Joseph is a really good father most of the time. <laughs> and Mary... I don't know. She seems to care about her kids when it's just her and her kids. It's just him that she seems to be a real problem with. Like, she had that whole moment at the barbecue where she pretended she basically didn't know where her child was, but when her child actually came running over for, to her away from Joseph, like, her children love her, so she must be good with them when he's not around. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Not anything I ever want to have to deal with. We'll see. But yeah, thank you for donating the food funds, Jules. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, Mitch... I'm going to pronounce that as Mitch. If it's wrong, I'm really sorry. Liked how realistic this game is. Robert's ending was good. I liked Robert's ending. Thank you for the stream. Thank you. And Damien's ending was just really cute all the time. I think that's the thing. You go into this game, you see like the cute artwork. You hear like the silly dream daddy opening. It's full of like dad puns and stuff. You don't expect what's coming. <laughs> and when I played the Damien route, I was like, this is exactly what I expected. He's vampire dad. Sure, it gets some twists in it, but it was mostly just, oh, he's just cute. He's just fun time. The other ones? Oh my God, they go in different directions. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. Have a wonderful evening. Cancelled artist. Joseph's ending left me screaming and cursing out a fictional character. I loved it though. Have a good rest of your day, Futan. Thank you. Yeah, I feel that. It's like, I hate the guy, but at the same time, I see why they put that in. <laughs> it's painful, but it's a thing. Thank you for donating the food funds and have a wonderful evening, cancelled artist. I'm curious about the other routes. I'm curious about the Craig route. Oh my God. See, I, I'm, I'm not going to do those routes, but some of them do interest me. I did not like Hugo. I saw someone mention Hugo. Craig, I've heard it's a pretty cute one. I mean, everybody else seems to have played that one, so you can watch their playthroughs or you can play it yourself. And yeah, just in general, the other well, the, the, the other routes. Who else was there? Oh, Brian. There was Brian and there was the coffee shop dad. There was quite a few we didn't do. Huh. Damn, there were quite a few dads in that. <laughs> he was Hugo again. Hugo was the teacher. Hugo was the one that's very into art and literature. But he got a bit too pretentious for me every time he talked about it. Like he seemed like the type of person that would um actually you while you were just trying to learn something but you know what i mean you first get into like a hobby or you first get into something that you're like dipping your toes into and you're like yeah yeah, yeah i want to try this and yeah you've only like read the first book so they're like um actually i think you'll find this is the true origin of the deity in that novel and it's like yeah that's great i, I said i'd read the first book I didn't say I was a huge fan. I said I was just getting into the series. Why are you shitting on my knowledge when I've admitted I do not have the knowledge yet? I'm just interested in learning. That shit annoys me. <laughs> Don't knock my boy Hugo like this. He just had that feeling to him. It's probable that he actually isn't like that, but yeah, some of my run-ins with him is just annoying. It's just annoying, man. Out of character. Atsufutan! It's the new year and I'm betting with my friend again. So if you fight with Doggo, who's going to win? I bet 10 on Doggo. TY for the stream and happy new year, every bar. Hmm. Here's the thing. He would win because I would never fight him. <laughs> if it was an actual fight, that's the thing as well, though. He wouldn't fight me. I'm pretty sure that if I like... I'm pretty sure that if I set the house on fire and just like sat in it, he would just sit there with me. I, I don't think we can really have a bet on that. But in general, a human can beat a dog, even a 160 pound dog. A human can actually tend to overwhelmingly fight a wolf even with their bare hands. They can manage to fight a wolf off. As long as the wolf doesn't manage to get their jugular. You'd be surprised what a human can do when it's actually fight or flight time and adrenaline is pumping. But yeah, me versus doggo, never gonna happen. Me versus a random unknown 160 pound dog, I'd fuck that dog up. If a dog tried to attack my dog, that dog is fucked up. Yeah, I'd win that fight. I'd win that fight every day. Anyway. <laughs> Interesting question. <laughs> is this? No, oh, that's Twitter. Why do I have that copied? Ah, oh, because I was linking my schedule. 
That's the one I want. There we go. Must protect Doggo. Exactly. I'm always prepared to fight a dog if it attacks mine. Exactly. You don't want to hurt the dog too much if it's actually owned by someone, but at the same time, if something attacks my dog, I am fighting that thing as seriously as possible. Ugh, especially since my dog doesn't know what danger is. <laughs> my dog, if there's another dog barking at it and looking like it wants to actually fight, dog will just still play bow and roll around. <laughs> there's this one Malamu on the same street as me that always barks its head off and like is gunning to attack my dog. And dog will always like walk up to the gate and just like play bow at it and like jump around in front of it and then walk past it as we're going by. He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand he's being like told fuck off or I'll kill you. He's just like, yeah, another dog. Let's play. Oh, I got to go now. Bye. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh my God. Sai, thank you for the huge donation. <clears throat> Hi, Fuchan. Happy New Year. And thank you so much for the fun stream. So glad I was able to watch a full stream for once, and I really love the Robert route for obvious reasons. Yeah. Got lots of Legada's voice, and even crumbs of Alan Bing voice. And the ending was nice. Oyasu Mimir. Oyasu Mimir Sai. And Shin Nien Kwai La. Hope you have a wonderful new year. Thank you so much for being here. Please rest well, and have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds with the huge Akashupa. And yeah, I liked dropping some Alan Bing back in there. It's always a good time. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad you enjoyed the stream today. I had a lot of fun with this one too. I wasn't sure which direction these two routes would go in, but they were interesting. <laughs> they were definitely interesting. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so Mir, get some good rest. Thank you for joining us for another big stream today. Not as big as yesterday. Oh my God, it's only already six hours. Why do I do this? Anyway, <laughs> have a good evening and rest well. Alan Bink dance number I did not expect. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Out of character. Okay, foo. Here, take the steak. What? Oh, you guys were betting each other. Oh, day. <laughs> Thank you so much for donating the food funds out of character. I didn't even give you a full... I mean, I guess I said I would be able to fight another equal dog if they weren't my dog. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds twice out of character. Hope you have a wonderful evening and please do rest well. <laughs> where some doggos are just too pure yeah they just don't understand they're raised in such a soft way that they're like there's no such thing as danger everything's happy <laughs> six hours as usual but it shouldn't be ah <sighs> are you prepared for wwe today hell yeah i'm gonna crush selen selen worked so hard making this event i'm gonna take her out in the first round i'm actually kind of hoping i don't take her out in the first round <laughs> Even if I go out of the first round, like <laughs> everybody's supposed to be all trash talky. So it's going to be interesting. Me being summoned up immediately to be like, Selen, you're one of my closest friends in Niji Sanji. I always respect how much effort you put into these events. And I'm going to crush you <laughs> and knock you out of your own goddamn event immediately. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, but we were summoned to do a job. We were summoned to do a job. <laughs> Tish, I just bought the game and I want to try to get the Joseph cult route, but I'm sure it's going to be different. Cult. Oh, you've already got the dad jokes down, Tish. You are so ready for this. Thank you for donating the food funds and God bless your soul. <laughs> Have fun on the cult route. I'm sure it'll be an interesting, interesting experience. <laughs> okay, let me go back up to the old super chats. Wow, 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 we. Okay. Well, the meow jiao si. Happy New Year, my babe. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Hi, well, the meow jiao si. Thank you for the huge Arca Super. There were four Arca Supers before we even properly started the stream today. Satoshi, thank you so much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Nate, thank you so much for donating the food funds. Just the letter Q. <laughs> We're so close to the end of the alphabet now. It's wild. But don't feel like you have to keep donating. I was shocked you did ABC. I thought C was going to be the end of it. But thank you for donating the food funds. Don't you hit me with the QT, Isa. I'll fight you. <laughs> Camille, thank you for donating the food funds with the huge Arca Super. Happy New Year, Fuchan and every bar. Oh, and it's a sheep with red packets. That's so fucking cute. Let me post this into chat. That's so adorable. I can't copy the red packets. 
shit. It turns out you can't copy emojis at the lip. At least not that one. Well, I tried. Thank you so much for donating to the food funds. I hope you had a wonderful new year and I hope this year is amazing for you. It's just a sheep with zans in the air. It's fine. He's just celebrating. <laughs> Shalor, thanks for the abnormally long streams that somehow add more sanity to my day. Itsumo arigato gozaimasu. Looking forward to next week, I will need the sanity. Yeah, there's going to be a lot. The streams will be a lot shorter next week. Don't worry. We're not planning on doing like two six hour streams a day for three days in a row. <laughs> oh, especially the collab ones. The collab ones, I will have points of view for most of them. Possibly all three. No, not Monster Prom, not Monster Prom. But the other collabs, I will have my POV for them. But yeah, we're going to come in. We're going to do the stream. <laughs> we're going to chat for a little bit. It won't be like six hours. You'll be fine. We're not like tripling up the amount of time we're doing. Don't worry. You're, you'll be safe. You'll be safe. <laughs> but thank you for donating to the food fund, Shadow. I hope you enjoy the streams next week as well. Arigato gozaimasu. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for being here. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the streams next week too. Oh no, I just copied the emoji. Cow emoji. I have to recopy my link. <laughs> Okay, note that and retell yourself that on Fire Emblem Day. Yeah, don't worry. Fire Emblem. It was a good nine hours. But I mean, this is part of the reason. Like, that's why I'm like, oh, don't worry, guys. I'll make sure to catch up my hard route playthrough. It's like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna expend myself like doing a whole bunch of side things on that hard route playthrough as well. Because I just found out you can re-skirmish in the same areas you've already beaten. Train yourself a bit more and get more money and resources and animals and he 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 he. So don't worry offline when i do my hard route i'll be coming back with the hard route of the right area but i'll also probably have played for like another 15 hours and then we'll start doing like three to four hour sessions like with most games <laughs> it'll be fine shimomi thank you for the huge arc super donation happy new year futan kung hei fat choi and then this won't translate properly but i'll do my best to put it in kung hei fat choi um translate do 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 I wish you a new year with a good reputation. The sheep and the... Oh, the sheep are proud. The sheep eyebrows are rabbit-like. Oh. Because it's the year of the rabbit. Thank you so much for donating to the food funds. Uh, be famous triumphantly and feel proud. What a good way to say that, too. Thank you so much again, Shimomi. Kung hoi fat toy. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for being here and please rest well. But you can change the difficulty when you go to bed. It's not that hard. You can make it easier. You can't make it harder. That's the problem. So I have to restart the game just to get it into hard mode. Unless they did like a day two patch. As far as I know, you could only make the game easier. You can't make it harder. Would you say engage is worth the buy? Yeah, it's, it's a much more simple storyline. But, and the characters are a bit simpler so far than like three houses. But the gameplay is really good, really inviting. There's a lot to do. Just nerf yourself, forehead. I tried to. <laughs> I, I went head empty. I ran my characters into danger and they were not dying. They were doing just fine. So that's why I was like, you know what? Okay. I, I'm just going to restart on hard mode. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Probably to avoid people grinding and easy to get harder. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. Because I know it, like, it makes it less likely that you get huge stat boots stat, uh, stat boosts when you level up in different difficulty modes as well like in maddening it just gives you like an average stat boost i think every time because it wants you to not be too under leveled or too over leveled that doggo player <laughs> he couldn't be any more head empty than i was in those final couple of runs I, like i said i was just throwing my guys right in and seeing what happened <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> ibuprofen, thank you for donating the food funds. Happy New Year, but not red. Oh, that's fine. Thank you so... You didn't... They, they wrote, but not red. And it's like, don't worry about it. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. That's so sweet of you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed the New Year celebrations. I hope you rest easy and have a good time. Demonic Kitsune, thank you for donating the food funds. No message, but thank you. And Luthier, thank you for donating the food funds. The message says... <laughs> cake time oh, every time I end up doing the twerking at the beginning of the stream I end up regretting it <laughs> this is fine <laughs> this is fine he is the dragon hell yeah dog is the dragon <laughs> Akuku. 
Ooh, happy new year in Vietnamese. Thank you for another very entertaining Dream Daddy stream. And have fun looking up the other endings. Let me see how to pronounce this. I feel like I might have read this before. Chúc mừng năm mới. Yeah, okay. This is when it was first like um Western Solar New Year, right? A lot of people trans uh sent me uh a happy new year in different languages. Chúc mừng năm mới. Chúc mừng năm mới. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for all the beautiful art you always do. Hakuku. Have a wonderful evening. Please rest well. Take it easy and thank you so much. Um, Luther again. Happy New Year, Fuchan. Great time for dating hot daddies. Oh, yeah. It is a celebration time. <laughs> thank you so much for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well and take it easy. And see bye. Hey, Fuchan. This is a red envelope for Doggo. <laughs> Happy New Year. Remember to kiss Doggo 10 times for me. No, I don't. I don't kiss dog. And then put jerky under doggo's pillow. J -j -j Jerky's way too high salt for dog. <laughs> Hope you have a wonderful new year. I'll buy him some nice treats. Don't worry about it. Um, definitely not gonna kiss him. Uh, nah, I'll, I'll pet him for you. I'll brush him for you. I'm not into that. <laughs> Why not kiss dog with a forehead? Hair in my mouth. I hate it. <laughs> I've said this before. It's like one of my phobias when you get like a loose hair in your food and it like you could feel it in your mouth. At that point, I just immediately spit out whatever it was in my mouth and I am not hungry anymore. I cannot eat for a while. I hate hair in my mouth. It's just a really yuck feeling. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna kiss a dog. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you for donating the food fun see bye. Hope you have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Um, yummy no. Th oh, what a cute name. My, my, yummy no. Thank you for the huge Aka super donation with no message. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Please rest well. Take it easy. I hope you had a wonderful celebration. Lower kiss. <laughs> Why would I do that? I'm not a very emotive person anyway. I can just pet him. He likes being petted. Why would I need to do any of this stuff? Guess that's not a problem if you have a short head, doggo. Hmm. That I don't know about. That I'm not sure about. Hello, Min. Thank you for donating the food fans. Let me see this. Hi, Fujad. Happy New Year. I'm preparing for the ancestral rites. I've been cooking all day and I'm finally watching the stream. It's full of oil and flour. I have to watch it, but I'm so tired. Someone throw me in the bath. <laughs> I hope you feel better soon. That sounds pretty bad. How do you say Happy New Year? Which part of this is Happy New Year? Anyang Hujang. Saihang Bogman. I think that's it then. Sehang. Ah, I cut off the wrong bit. Yes. I know Anyang Fujang. So. Happy New Year. There we go. Sanghe Bogman Ibada. Unless that's the beginning of another sentence. I hope not. <laughs> but Happy New Year. Thank you for donating the food for... Oh, you actually wrote it for me. Okay, it is that part too. Oh God, I'm sorry that I'm butchering that. Anyway, Happy New Year. I hope you feel better soon. Please do have a shower. That sounds very annoying. That's why I never bake anything. Baking is so messy. There's so many wet ingredients. There's so many things that get attached to wet ingredients. I can't with it. <laughs> but thank you for donating the food funds. <laughs> have a good day and rest easy. The rest of the evening. Oh no, it's early for you. Is it? No, no, it's super late for you. Definitely rest easy. Oh my God. Atsu Chen, thank you for donating the food, food funds. Happy New Year. This is, and then I have to translate this bit. Thank you, Atsuchan. Lucky money. Oh, it's traditional to ah, but it's reading in Mandarin. Damn. Thank you for donating the food funds. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I don't know how to actually pronounce that. Damn. I don't know why Google does that, but thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Wet. Why are you baking wet? Everything's wet when you start baking. It's all like dough-based and batter-based. What else do you bake? Oh, 
You mean like actual food that you bake? I was thinking of like pastries and brownies and cookies and all of that stuff. You always make a batter and stuff. It always involves like eggs and milk and flour. Dough isn't wet. Dough isn't wet. Dough is one of the like stickiest, wettest things there is. Depending on how you make it, what kind of dough you have. Either way, when you're mixing up the ingredients to make dough, it is sticky, it is messy. You have to peel that shit off of your fingers and off of all of the baking equipment. You could bake a goose, I guess. You could bake a goose. Is water wet? I'm not getting into that. Water is in fact wet because it's covered in water, which makes the thing wet. What defines wet? Dough can be wet-ish until you need enough. Even once you need enough, everything you've used to make it is covered in that dough. They're asking why you're wet while baking. Uh, that's different. <laughs> sticky is not wet. No, sticky is a different thing. I said sticky and wet. Two different things. Two different terms. Dough is sticky. So No, no, it's wet too. Okay. You guys believe what you want. Believe as you wish. It's a similar sensation. <laughs> also, <laughs> the immediate like chat chat refusing and being like that's not what i asked and refusing the whole like being while you're wet this is fine <laughs> i'm moving on um bad gal yeah yeah tonight is new year's eve and here's the little red packet for futan i wish futan all the best in a very auspicious year of the rabbit thank you so much bad gal yeah yeah that's so sweet of you i hope you have a wonderful new year i hope 2023 is amazing for you happy year of the rabbit um okay. so it is the same thing just in chinese thank you so much for donating the food funds that's so sweet of you i hope you have a wonderful year and thank you so much for being here just because it's me doesn't mean it's sussy chat i'm talking about baking welcome to my world you get known for making silly jokes. People never think you're serious. <laughs> Mary Lively. Atsufutsan. Dream Daddy was so interesting. I loved it. I must confess. I thought the spicy scene would be with Robert and Joseph was the words for sure. Oh, we love Damien. Yeah, Joseph was the worst for sure. <laughs> oh, man. I really thought, yeah, Robert would have more spiciness to it. We were completely flip reversed on that one. God damn. It was a fun time though. <laughs> Thank you so much for donating the food funds. I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. And yeah, Damien was incredible. Damien was just pure love the whole way through. Even the revelations as they came out, it was just like, that's awesome. You love animals. You love dogs in particular. You take care of them. You work as a cute little a tech nerd. Let's fucking go. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, happy new year. I hope you have a great new year. Thank you for the huge Aka Super Tier. That's so sweet of you. Thank you so much. I hope you have a happy new year too. Please have a wonderful time. Thank you for being here and take it easy. Damien became the basis. I know, right? So sweet. I did know about the cult ending. We talked about it earlier. We almost went into it. But then I was like, no. This is already going to be like a six and a half hour stream. Oh, it's already six and a half hours. This is going to be a seven hour stream. Why do I do this to myself? When does WWE start? This is the same as yesterday where I was like, oh no, when does Fish stop? When does WWE? Oh good, it's just Shu making himself in WWE. I froze there for a second. Um, It starts at 8 p.m., right? I think I'm good. Well, I should be good. I'm fine. I'm fine. This will work out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 20, oh, 9 p.m. EST, even better. Got an hour more than I thought we did. <laughs> Perfect. Floose! Happy Happy New Year, Futan! Is a red envelope for you and Doggo? Except it's green. Have a nice day. Wink. Well, thank you so much for donating the food funds. Yeah, a red packet can be any amount. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well. Happy New Year, and I hope 2023 is amazing for you. Um, I just checked your schedule. I thought you would take it easy for a few weeks. No, that's the exact opposite of what I've been saying. I said for the next two weeks, shit's going hard. And then I'm taking like a week or so off. It may be like a week and a few days. But it'll definitely be a week off minimum. It's fine. <laughs> um, Aruna. Arun Arena? Arena. Ah, sorry. It took me a moment to work out that hiragana. Arena. Kung hei fat soi fu chan. The year of the rabbit is coming in. I hope that you will get... 
this and that. I need to translate both of these. <laughs> also, so glad the Noctix half year goods arrived today and we can celebrate the festival together. <gasps> That's awesome. That took a while, but I'm glad they got to you today. Happy New Year. I hope you enjoy them. Raise your eyebrows and be healthy. Ah, oh. I, I don't get the eyebrow thing. Somebody else said something about eyebrows, about the rabbits and the sheep. Oh, man. I need to understand what that reference means at some point. <laughs> but thank you so much for donating the food funds, Arena. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I'm glad you got the half anniversary goods. Same, I got it yesterday. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you guys are getting them. I recently ordered your debut, Stanley. Oh, cool, Diana. Sick. I didn't even know that was still on sale. <laughs> That's good to know, though. I'm glad they still have some of the old things for sale. Man, my half anniversary merch finally got to my city, but they won't arrive until Monday. I didn't realize it took that long. Even I have my half anniversary merch. It took them like almost a full year to send me anything. But yeah, at least I've got like everything now. Damn. But thank you guys so much for buying the merchandise. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Happy New Year. Ningzi from this person. Hi, Fuchan. Today is Chinese New Year. Xin Yin Kai La. Wish we have a happy new year. Translate the name so I can say it properly. Um, thank you so much to Ningzi, who donated for the for Chen Ming. Thank you so much. Chen Ming. Chen Ming. Xie Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Happy New Year. Xin Ning Kai La. Thank you both so much. That's so sweet of you. I hope you have a happy 2023 and a happy year of the rabbit. Thank you. Where is my food puppet? I don't know. A lot of people got those pretty quickly. <laughs> you won't talk about some of the things I've seen happen to the food puppet. But you know what? As long as you guys are happy with it, that's fine. <laughs> um, from Blacken. Happy New Year. Oh, I have to translate all of this. I don't even see Shin Nin Kwai Lua. Let's see what this says. Happy Chinese New Year. May all go well with you. May you be happy and prosperous. Step up. Um, that's a different one. I've never heard that before. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. That's so sweet of you. I've never heard that way of saying Happy New Year before. But thank you so much, Blacken. Happy New Year. I hope you have a wonderful year. Please rest well and take it easy. The Foo Rimba. Oh, God. Skylin, happy new year. Hope you have a wonderful year. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much for the huge Aka Super. That's so sweet of you. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well, Skylin. Take it easy, and I hope you have a wonderful year. Not a wonderful year. <laughs> I just hope your year is incredible and you have a happy year of the rabbit. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ryu, happy new year, Fuchan. Here's your red envelope. By the way, 168 sounds like this. In Mandarin, roads on a... Ah, I can't copy it. What the heck? In Mandarin, it means roads on ahead will be very lucky and wealthy. May the wealth and good fortunes be with you all the way. Oh, thank you so much. Sounds like Yilufa. 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 Which is similar to 168. Yi... Liu ah oh yeah yi liu ba yi liu ah thank you for donating the food funds that's so sweet of you such a nice message to you happy new year thank you so much for being here thank you for the huge aka super i hope you have a wonderful evening and yeah thank you so much for that that's a cute little thing to find out as well of course he always sees everything i see everything unfortunately <laughs> Mew, thank you for donating the food funds again with the huge Aka super. And this one's just delivering a red packet, red packet cowboy to you. Oop, do you see this? No, I don't. I can't say that I do. Damn it, I will find the emoji. There we go. Ah, right, put it at the front. Why oh, you like this, YouTube? Put it here. There we go. This is what it said. Aha. <laughs> Swing it on your fan. Wait. Like, attach the food puppet to your fan? <laughs> That's actually pretty fucking awesome. He also doesn't realize some things. Yeah, I miss a lot of things. I said I see things. I didn't say I understand things. Those are two different things. <laughs> Araina. This means making the coming year one you will be proud of. And changing the character means rabbit. Oh. That's where it comes from. 
Thank you for donating the food funds and explaining that. Let me grab that. Throw that into Google Translate. Exhale and raise eyebrows. Oh, okay. So that's the literal translation. But it actually means making the coming year one you'll be proud of. You change the character to rabbit. Oh, okay. Thank you. Now it makes sense to me. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Oh, man. That <laughs> took me a long while. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like the ceiling fans and watch it fly. Oh, so you don't even attach it. You don't watch it spin in a circle. You just put it on there, turn it on, and watch it get blown the hell away. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> you decided to go to bed now. It's 5 a.m. Don't worry about it. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it was lovely to have you here. But yeah, whenever you guys need to go to bed, feel free. <laughs> just doing Zatsudan now anyway. It's chill. Um, Bad gal Yaya again. From my friend Stella Leem. Hello, happy spring festival. This is lucky money for you. Although you're older than me, lol. <laughs> Wish you the confidence, health, and happiness. Well, thank you so much for donating the food funds. That's so sweet of you. Oh, you did fufu, but in a different way. Fufu. It means apply, apparently. <laughs> From my friend Stella Leem. Hello, fufu. Thank you so much, bad gal. Yeah, yeah. That's so sweet of you. Happy New Year, Shinny and Kyla. Hope you have a wonderful time, and please do take it easy and rest well. With the helicopter sound in the background? Why? <laughs> Poor Foo Puppet. Foo Puppet goes through some journeys. I guess that's good revenge for me always sending you guys to the forest, honestly. And then, thank you for donating the food funds. Happy New Year, Foo. Here, Ang Pao to you and Godot. Does Ang... What does Ang Pao mean? Is that... Hmm... What does that mean? But thank you for donating the food funds, MM. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I just realized I read it as doggo. <laughs> I self-corrected in my mind because it actually says Godo. <laughs> but I'm guessing you meant doggo. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Also, it does mean red packet. I thought so, but I didn't want to assume just to be safe. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful new year. Thank you for the huge arc of super MM. I hope you enjoyed the stream today. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well and take it easy. It's so sweet having you here. Red envelope. I say red envelope. I've always heard red packet, but that may just be a different translation or just full on the wrong translation. But yeah, at least I know what those are. <laughs> Ong Bao in Chinese. So maybe that's Cantonese. Oh, okay. Ong Bao in Mandarin. Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, red envelope. Huh. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> That's all good though. Um, Ant Super, happy new year. Thank you so much, Ant Super. Happy new year. I hope you're having a good one. I hope 2023 is amazing for all of us. Happy year of the rabbit. Thank you so much for being here. Please rest well and have a lovely evening. And DG, the big rabbit will send you good luck. The second rabbit will send you good spirits. The third rabbit will send you red envelopes. The fourth rabbit will send you an always smile. And the fifth rabbit will send you no worries. Isn't Ang Pao for Doggo? Best wishes for a happy new year. Oh, thank you so much, DG. That's so sweet of you. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well and take it easy. And that was such a nice comment to read. Oh. So not Cantonese. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys for letting me know. Now I know. <laughs> Uh, Moonlight Kitty 3. I'm really new here and I've heard about Fuchan for a long time, but I never knew you were so amazing. And that you like Dan May? I have to know, do you like Scumbling's self saving system? <laughs> yes, I do. That was the second Dan May I ever read. And the first one I ever read the whole way through and finished. So it has a special place in my heart. So, so. <laughs> nice and short, so easy to read. And probably one of the most graphic ones in the main storyline I've ever heard. <laughs> That was pretty intense. It was a good time. Thank you for donating me the food funds. Yeah, I like Bing Mei, especially Black Lotus Bing Mei. It's a good time. It's a good time. That's just me, though. Shizun was always funny as well. <laughs> First time watching your stream. Feels so at home. Glad to hear that, Emily. Thank you for dropping in. I hope you enjoy them in the future, too. Welcome, new sheep. Oh, there's so many people saying welcome, new sheep. That's so cute. Um, You finished it? Yeah, that's the first one I ever finished. There aren't many that I've actually finished. Most of them I'm still waiting on, like, the official releases to finish. 
But yeah, with Scum Villain and Self Saving System, they're all out. Except for the bonuses. The bonuses? No, the bonuses are out now too. So yeah, you can read the whole way through it at this point. Cheng Ching Chuo, my spirit animal. Exactly. <laughs> he says what so many of us are thinking. He's such a good com comedic relief character. It was so good. The bonuses were the last book? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, except for the bonuses. Oh, no, wait. The bonuses book did come. I forgot about that. Kami, just to show you my red packet. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds, Kami. I hope you're having a wonderful day. That cow emoji is adorable. <laughs> Yapin, on Lunar New Year's Eve, wish food chat and every bar all the best upcoming year. Yeah. All the best in the upcoming year. I read all the best upcoming year. <laughs> Shin Yin Kwai La. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for being here, Yapin. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well and take it easy. Um, oh, I'm going to have to translate this name. And He Zhu Shao Sheng. Thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening and please rest well. This one's from Eitang Liu Yudan. Thank you again for donating the food funds been around for such a long time i still never know how to read your name as soon as i see the fish in the name because i remember year that, that one's an actual pretty easy character for me to remember but i can never remember the whole of the name <laughs> but thank you for donating the food funds the message says xin yin kuai le thank you so much xie xie. Hey, tang liu yu dan. i hope you're having a happy new year i hope you have a wonderful 2023 and thank you for being here <laughs> liu Tsinga. yeah Leo Burr was always a good dude, too. <laughs> he had a fun time. <laughs> I love Leo. Leo something. You couldn't even remember the name. That's so me. I can never remember the names. But yeah, he was so angsty. He was so aggressive. And at the same time, you could tell he like had feelings, too. He just didn't know how to express them. It was a great time. <laughs> the Uber driver. Exactly. <laughs> the Uber driver and third part of the love triangle that never happened. <laughs> dude, I just don't know how to spell it. Hey, I, I was on your side there. I was saying, for me, I just forget the names and I freely admit that I forget the names. If you just forgot how to spell it, you're doing better than me. <laughs> Sling Blade, thank you so much for donating the food funds with the huge Akasupa red envelope. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of 2023. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Arigatou gozaimasu. Please rest well and have a lovely evening. Yeah, yeah. Happy Spring Festival. Shin Yin Kwai La. Shin Yin Kwai La. Thank you for donating the food funds. Yeah, yeah. Let me change the music up. We haven't heard Legatus 505 in a while. The lo fi mix. Yeah, let's kick that on. But thank you so much for donating the food funds. Yeah, yeah. Have a wonderful evening. And Nixie. Happy New Year of the Rabbit. Fu Chan and every ba. Sun Lin Fai Lok. Happy New Year in Cantonese. Oh, okay. I don't think I've ever heard that one. Sun Lin Fai Lok. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening, Nixie. Please rest well, take it easy, and have a lovely 2023. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Sorry if I completely butchered that. <laughs> um, Apple Spider. Happy New Year. I won't lie. Robert talking about regrets and worrying he's making himself unhappy. It's super close to home. I feel that. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's never too late to change. I'm proud I've come this far. I wish the best for you and all confidants in this new year. Oh, thank you so much, Apple Spider. And yeah, I've definitely hit that kind of feeling before as well, where it's like, am I ever going to be happy? I'm just going in a cycle. Like, is there anything I can actually do about this? You get to that kind of feeling. Yeah. So I'm glad Robert was able to snap out of that at the end and realize... Even if it, like, did change things between us, at least he's on a better journey for himself. And I'm glad you were able to break free of that, too. So, yeah. Happy New Year, Apple Spider. Happy Year of the Rabbit. I hope everything goes well for you in this year. And, yeah. Happy New Year to all the confidants as well. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum. Ah. Min. Happy New Day. Happy... Oh, ah. Happy New Year Day. Oh, the translator got weird on that one. <laughs> Happy New Year in Korea. If you put on a New Year's hanbok and bow to an elder, you get snacks and pocket money in your lucky bag. Send me the emoji you post. Which emoji? I don't know which emoji you mean. God, that hand looks really realistic. 
that's kind of wild. <laughs> I am definitely not sure what you mean. <laughs> but thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you have a wonderful evening, man. <laughs> Happy New Year. Rest well and have a good evening. Ticket CYL. Atsufu. Happy New Year. Right. Oh, thank you so much for the red envelope. That's so sweet of you. Happy New Year. I hope you have a wonderful celebration. And good luck for everything in 2023. Good night, Fu. I've completed my homework. Good. <laughs> good. Congratulations on the homework. Have a wonderful night. And thank you for joining us. Happy nude. I definitely didn't mean to say that. I may have frozen in the middle of happy new and yeah. That's on me. I I deserve this pain. Oh, I just realized this isn't the looping version. This is the looping version. There we go. Now we won't have a weird end at the end of each one. It's supposed to be a bowing emoji. Oh yeah, no, I can tell that. It looks pretty good. Um ba -ba -ba -boopy -dup. This one. I think you kind of have to like layer it, right? Unless I'm wrong. Because I see the arms, the body, and the head. Yeah. I, I think it's just turned sideways. But thank you for donating the food funds, Minna. Long stream two days in a row. Yeah. It's okay. We've got double streams for like the next, wow, three days in a row this week. It's fine. We're going to be fine. Dude, you're a legend. Had fun with Dream Daddies? I did. We cried a little bit. No, we didn't actually cry. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun in our original route. This route was more suffering, but also, yeah, entertainment at least. <laughs> this is fine. Uh, Maple, Xin Yin Kai Le. Happy New Year, Fufu. Thank you so much, Maple. Yeah. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for donating the food funds. Please rest well and have a lovely evening. And Ming Ming. Oh, my bad. Happy New Year, Fuchan and Confidence. Thank you so much, Ming Ming. Happy New Year. Hope you have a wonderful evening and please rest well. Damien Root had dogs, so it's the best. But Damien's Root had even more dogs. And then Fuchan, I fell asleep after the butt scene with questions haunting me in my sleep. One butt or two butts? What? The butt scene. I need to remember what this was. One butt or two butts. We meant we we mentioned butts multiple times in a row when we were being asked questions about art. I'm gonna say two butts. There were actually three butts that got mentioned because eventually then we got to the point where he also decided he would paint butts. It was a good moment. <laughs> it's one butt. Are you sure it's one butt? I think it might be two butts. But thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you didn't have a strange dream based on that. But <laughs> have a good time. Oh my god. Do we have one butts or two butts? Oh, wait, what? I think it was a question of like, how many butts did you see in the painting? I think that's what it was. I'm gonna go with two butts. <laughs> Masato. Ba Fuchan. Sunin Fai Lok. Sorry if I'm reading that very wrong. It doesn't have a pronunciation guide. Happy New Year in Cantonese. Wish you happy and fruitful every day. Please accept the Fu Fund and buy you. Thank you so much, Masato. Sin Nin Fai Luck. Happy New Year. I hope you have a wonderful 2023. Happy Year of the Rabbit and please rest well. And Jean. Um, Sin Nin Kwai La. Fu Chan. Good night. Good night, Jean. Have a wonderful evening, one on. Thank you so much for joining us here. Rest well and take it easy. No, Sauce, you do not want to know. You do not want to know. <laughs> Stella, happy new year. Wishing you a joyful year of the rabbit. Thank you so much. Happy new year. I hope you have a wonderful 2023 too. And thank you so much for donating the food funds. Dark Moon, WGC. Happy new year, Shin Yin Koila. Time to sleep. Hope you have a good day. All the characters look interesting. Good night. Yeah, it was a fun time with the Dream Daddies. <laughs> Oh, I'm never looking at Joseph the same way again, though, man. He just looked like Captain America. I thought he'd be a good guy. We were wrong. <laughs> but thank you so much for donating the food funds. Shin Yin Kwaila, have a wonderful evening. Happy New Year, and thank you for being here. Ooh. That's a really nice comment. I think this is... If I remember correctly, this is... Cool air. I think the first bit is cool air. Let's see. 
Yeah, Kua Chanji. Queer orange juice. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. I'm remembering the first part of that now. I'm remembering the ku and the ar. Today I learned a beautiful word. Apricity, which means the warmth of the sun in winter. You are my apricity. Is that a real word? It's a beautiful word if that's true. Apricity. Other rare words. Art in the sand warm sun. The warmth of the sun in winter. Ah. Oh. So it's specifically the warmth of the sun during winter. That's so beautiful. I actually really like that feeling, you know. Like, well, yeah, when you're inside, you've got like a window. It's freezing outside, but the sun is coming through the window anyway, so it feels warm. It feels like springtime sunshine because the sun's still kind of weak. You can feel the warmth from it. That's beautiful. Thank you for donating the food funds. That's really sweet of you. Thank you so much, Kua Changjie. Have a wonderful evening. Rest well. Thank you so much. Oh, damn, that was poetic. Sweet and descriptive. Yeah, it is. It's really nice. Noween. Good night or good morning. <laughs> oh, God. Good night and good morning. <laughs> Thank you for donating the food funds. Whichever one it is for you, I hope you have a wonderful... Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night, wherever you are. There we go. Rest well, take it easy, and happy new year, if you celebrate it. And then, um, another thing I read somewhere that has been haunting me. If what? If teeth come out of your butt when you poop, do you see a dentist or a surgeon? I think maybe an exorcist. I <laughs> figure I, I don't know. It depends. Did you eat something? Are they falling out of your mouth? I don't. I think if they're not in your mouth, you don't see a dentist. But maybe an exorcist. <laughs> that feels like a haunting kind of thing. That feels like you've angered a very, very vengeful spirit. <laughs> but that might just be me. That might just be me. <laughs> that was an interesting question. I literally did a double take on that one. Bruh. I think perhaps you're dying. Might be proctologist i think you would have to see a proctologist and then you'd have to explain they were teeth specifically god damn um uh... <laughs> hello foo i believe captain america made you worse i know right i tried to make him worse but he got me instead thank you for playing dream daddy i've enjoyed the streams thank you so much i'm so glad you enjoyed them say have a wonderful evening thank you for being here please rest well and take it easy have a lovely night. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. I just remember what color is purple again. We're forgetting about that. That was a very confusing moment in chat. I was so confused. <laughs> Hato, thank you for donating the food funds. Rabbit year. Oh, happy rabbit year. Happy year of the rabbit. Thank you for donating the food funds. And Hato, I saw it earlier. Thank you so much for all of the gifted membership as well. That was so sweet of you. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well. Take it easy. And thank you so much for donating the food funds. Exe. Happy New Year, Fucha, and my lovely fellow confidants. Knowing you guys is one of the best things of 2022. Thank you. Purple is blue and red. It's a mix of blue and red. Yeah, that's how you make purple out of primary colors, but it's just a very confusing question. <laughs> what color is purple? It's purple. However you see purple, that's how you see it. The rest of the world may not see it that way. Here's a good theory that I like. What if every human on the earth actually has the same exact favorite color, but we all just see colors a different way? And we all perceive colors a different way. So even though I say my favorite colors are like red and black and green, I like those ones and I look at them a certain way. But when you see colors, you all see them the exact same way. But you just don't see them in the same way in your brain. What I see as red, you see as blue. And what I see is blue, you see is green. How weird is that? We all figure out the words for different things. We're all colorblind after all. I mean, it's just like the way our brains work. Different people's brains work in different ways. You never know. It was about to make me overthink. Have fun with that. Have fun with that. <laughs> anyway, now that I've dropped that. And PL, thank you for the huge rainbow super. There wasn't a single message throughout the entire rainbow super. And you also dropped, I think, 20 memberships at the same time. And PL, thank you so much for the huge bunch of donations. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. It's so sweet of you. Rest well. Have a wonderful evening. And thank you for being such a supportive part of the community. Thank you so much. My teacher says colors don't exist. 
I mean, it's just the different, like, wavelengths that light reflects off of things and then reflects into your eyes. So, yeah, technically colors don't exist. It's more how we perceive colors than anything. <laughs> this is a fact. This is a fact. Oh, my God. Mio Akride Atsufutan. Love to see you get to the Robert and Joseph ending. Jin. Jin. And then I'm going to have to translate. <laughs> I gave that immediately. <laughs> Cantonese called Lacy means red. Oh, it's Lacy. Lacy in Cantonese. Thank you for donating the food funds. And if it's Cantonese, then I already read it wrong with Jintian. Today is the first day of the Lunar New Year. Happy New Year to you and the sheep and the goats. Happy New Year. I wish you all smiles, good health, and happiness. Give Fu a little. Oh, there we go. Lacy. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. That's so sweet of you. Happy New Year. I'm sorry I can't read this properly. Sorry I immediately went into Mandarin for the first two words. I hope you have a wonderful evening, Mio Rock Ride. Please rest well. Have a lovely evening. Happy New Year. And I hope 2023 is amazing for you. The first Lacey is correct. Oh, so it's Lacey. Okay. Sounds the same in Vietnamese. Lacey. Oh, okay. Thank you. And Luthier, thank you so much for the five gifted membership. Oh, there was another one. And Mio Arkwright, thank you so much for the ten gifted membership. That's so sweet of you. Happy New Year. I hope everything goes awesome for you in 2023. Thank you again, everyone who is here currently for being part of the community. So lovely to see so many people so happy today. We are Changzi again. Folger, let me send a happy event. After working for five years, I finally got appreciated. I've done something in my own field. I feel so happy and confident. Confident. <laughs> I hope all confidants can find a place to realize their self-worth. That's freaking awesome. That's such a nice way to put that as well. I'm glad to hear that. So you did something that actually got like appreciated, like an achievement in your own field of work. Let's go to our Jansu. Congratulations on everything. Happy New Year. And let's hope we continue that energy into 2023. That's so sweet. I hope you keep getting recognized for all the hard work you put into it. And yeah, it's really nice when you find a field that you actually enjoy doing. So I hope everyone does find a field that they love and gets to enjoy it in the future. Thank you so much for donating to the food funds. Have a wonderful evening and please rest well. Nia, doggos took my account. <laughs> Happy New Year, Futsan and Confidants. Thank you so much. Thank you for the huge Akasupa. I'm sorry I couldn't grab this one because it was ages ago because I love seeing that image of your two dogs on your avatar. <laughs> Happy New Year, Nia. Have a wonderful evening. Please rest well and take it easy. And Fuyumin, good luck, good health, good cheer. Happy year of the rabbit. Thank you so much, Fuyumin. That's so sweet of you. Thank you for the Yaku Super. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please rest well. Take it easy and have a lovely time. Oh, apparently that's all of them. I caught up on them. But I'm pretty sure I missed one. No, that's definitely where I started reading the Super Chats. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. I think one disappeared. There was one I remember. Oh, oh, I already read it. It was from Shimomi. Oh, thank you so much. Sorry. I read that one late. <laughs> but now I see why. It's okay. Okay. I'm not losing my mind completely. <laughs> I feel that you enjoy doing me when I know, right? Phrasing also. But I know what you actually mean. The fact that, yeah, it's hard to actually find what you enjoy doing in life. It takes a while. It takes a while. Sometimes you don't find it until you're like 30, 40, 50. You never know when it's going to happen. We all have to do what we can to survive in general as well, but we get there. We will get there eventually. You'll definitely get there someday too. There are so many Streamlabs donations to do. Um, I'm sorry to say that I'll probably leave these till tomorrow. <laughs> I already have another day worth of Streamlabs to do. There was so many today and I'm so thankful. I'm definitely going to read them, but I'm going to read them tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing just a Zatsudan, so that would be perfect. It's so sweet of you guys. So thank you so much for donating there. It's so sweet, but yeah, I'm kind of out of energy now. I don't want to keep going and like keep you guys here for another hour. If I'm going to be like low energy as well, I want to respond to them appropriately. So thank you all so much for being here today. I had so much fun. Dream Daddy was fun. I'm glad we got to finish all the routes we actually wanted to do. It was a lot more wild than I expected. <laughs> and yeah, tomorrow we'll be back for Azatsudan. I'll be back in a few hours for at least one round of WrestleMania. 
we'll see how far we get <laughs> but that's gonna be a good time selen has worked on the events for so long selen and pomo are going to be hosting it we've got a whole bunch of different people that we'll be doing announcing and shout casting it's going to be a good time and in general everybody's going to be coming on and like roasting each other trash talking each other doing their best to make it feel like a real wwe event so if you guys are interested i'll see you all there if not no worries but thank you so much for joining me today i had so much fun and the final one edzu xiaosheng i just woke up with your voice i slept very well ty for the stream and happy spring festival again thank you so much for donating the food funds hezu xiaosheng i hope you have a wonderful evening i hope you had a wonderful nap I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day if you just woke up. <laughs> Happy New Year, Gong Si Fai Tsai. I love you so much in the New Year. Thank you so much. Happy 2023. I hope everybody has a wonderful year of the rabbit. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to read memberships on the way out. So as usual, do not be led astray in my confidence. And I will catch you guys next time. I pressed that button too early. That was about to be really a dramatic ending, but I fucked it up. Okay, <laughs> so as usual, thank you all for joining me for the stream. <laughs> as usual on the way out, I want to say a special thank you to all of the members who have joined the membership today. Everybody who has joined for the first time, everybody who has rejoined, and everybody who has donated memberships to the sheep pile, including Shidarin, False, Miss You 3 Luthier, thank you so much for the five gifted membership. Mio Artcride, thank you so much for the ten gifted membership. Why? Ting Yu. Ashley Bear. Ellen Yar, thank you so much for the five gifted membership. Sybil. Luthier, thank you so much for five more gifted membership. Broccoli Sheep. Grey Wall. Nyan Miki. Erin. Camille, thank you so much for the 10 gifted membership. Jingle H, oh my god, thank you so much for the 20 gifted membership. Cakes, thank you so much for the 5 gifted membership. And Nate, thank you so much for the 50 gifted membership. On top of all of the Arca Super Chats, thank you so much, Nate. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful 2023. And actually, before we continue this, I do want to say, because I saw somebody say, Otsu Food Channel, Otsu Mods. Thank you to the mods for the amazing work today. We got a weird amount of trolls today. <laughs> but thank you for dealing with that so well. I hope you all have a wonderful evening as well. Sorry for the two long streams in a row. Kukudu. Welcome back to the membership. Crescent Moon Princess. Reese Moore. Thank you so much for the five gifted membership. Tsukumi. Amgirl. Ako. Snatchy. Tiffany Ho. Scarachu, J Stray Dogs, Haruka, Haruka, Picha PCH, Peachy Peach, Sana, Saint Chumi Mean, Sei Subaru, Fish, <laughs> Rilliz F, Moon Pearl, thank you so much for the five gifted membership, KK. Chen Yaya, Mesa, Catherine Petra, Ihara, Zuo, Isaac S, Pika Pico P, Pika Pico P, <laughs> Wenmo, Itsuigo, Kyosha, KM, Ka Sakuma, Ana Yakuhana, Lin Lilith, Ling Jin, oh, Ling Lin Ling, Amao, Lily Lin, Jean, Tui Mei Mai, Suki, Lily Tzu, Shi, Stella, Sienna Lei, Ufu Daisuke, Sanika, and Piel, thank you so much for the 20 gifted membership. Nia, thank you so much for the 10 gifted membership. Shiru. Kaysenia, thank you so much for the 10 gifted membership. Kui Tang Chan. 
แอปพาวอัมฮาเดโอฮาเด The name was something hair, and now I realize it's pronounced hare, because it's just hare in Hiragana and then hare in English. Thank you, Tu Mao. Thank you so much for the five gifted membership. Muse, welcome back to the membership pile. Shu Ye, Miss Mercurial, Spring Lee. Izuma, Squid, Peachy Kimchi, Foo Foo Kiki, June Cat, Mio Art Cried. Thank you so much for gifting the ten gifted membership. Oh, and that's everyone. Oh, <laughs> thank you all for joining the membership. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Let me see. Boop a doop. And I will be sending you all to oh, this is tough. Chu Yamino. I never get to send you guys to Chu. He never streams anywhere near my time. So you can go watch Chu Yamino create his own custom WWE character, which he'll be fighting later in the day. I think Chu is ending. Well, then he can send you guys on. I get to catch him right before he ends. This is fine. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Do not be led astray, my confidants. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. I've been asking 